It's Good Morning Bora Bella to our two match umpires, Rob Bailey and Neil Bainton. It's Borodal, good morning as well to the Glamorgan side, led into the field by Captain Sam Northeast. And good morning, Borodal, as well to the two not out batters from Derbyshire, Harry Kane and Captain David Lord. Good morning from your BBC Sport commentary team here at Sophia Gardens. Where Derbyshire are resuming at 46 for 1 in reply to Glamorgan's rather below par 237 all out. You felt they needed at least an extra 50 runs or so despite the, the difficulties of the wicket and expected difficulties on day one which provided a good deal of turn and a career best for Alex Thompson, the Derbyshire spinner, who took 7 for 65. Derbyshire, in reply, lost Lewis Rees, bowled by James Harris without scoring, but Harry Kane survived on 11 not out, and David Lloyd launched something of an evening assault to reach 35 not out in very quick time. 34 balls he's faced and seven fours. So it will be Mir Hamza to open up. We saw double spin very quickly last night after the initial few overs from uh, Hamza and Harris. And Hamza, the Pakistani test player, making his home debut. Is uh, just doing some warm-up exercises. He bowled five overs, not for 13. James Harris, five overs, one for four. It's came on strike, and Hamza running away from us at the Cathedral Road end and beats him with the first delivery. Good start from Hamza, the 31-year-old from Karachi, bowling left arm, fast medium over the wicket. Not at express pace. Described by coach Grant Bradburn as a skillful bowler rather than out and out paceman for Glamorgan supporters who uh, remember Waka Yunus, who tended to pit take the pitch out of the equation by bowling very full and fast. Here comes Hamza, bowls, and that's driven back past him, and that will be the first runs of the morning. Make that singular as James Harris has got across fairly smartly from mid on and fielded behind the bowler. Kane moves up to 12 and David Lloyd, the former Glamorgan captain, playing against them for the first time and now leading Derbyshire out and leading from the front yesterday with the bat. 35 off 34 deliveries so far and uh, to acknowledge his aggression Dan Douthwaite's dispatched the square leg boundary as Hamza is in to bowl and Lloyd is on the defensive here playing back to Hamza and there is no run quite dark skies at the moment particularly away to our left up towards uh, Kefili Mountain the skies are very murky indeed the light is okay at the moment we played until gone 7 o'clock uh, last night, despite the lack of uh, floodlights being available for championship games here in Cardiff, unfortunately. As uh, Hamza is in to bowl to Lloyd, who shoulders arms and allows it to go through to Chris Cook. There is one fewer floodlight than normal at the moment. Work is uh, going to go on on replacing it. Um, starting after this game and uh, it should be an action for the T20 international here uh, between England and uh, Pakistan uh, towards the end of May you uh, help him put it back up Nick well 
No, you're freelance. I'll, I'll, I'll All give work my daily rate. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be desperate if they needed me to work on it, that's for sure. Mia Hamza is in to bowl, and David Lloyd gets his first run of the morning, nudging down towards backward square. Dan Dowthwaite gets there ahead of the man from uh, Fine Leg. That's on uh, Tuesday, the 28th of May, here at Sapphire Gardens. It's a floodlit affair in the evening. At least it will be if they get the fifth floodlight back up. I'm sure they will. 48 for one, Derbyshire. Trail by 189. Glamorgan's over eight is plus two on the strength of uh, three overs each from the spinners last night. It's like some good going. There's that one is allowed to go through by Kame outside off stump. So we've just seen a, a couple of uh, singles in the first over of the morning. Commentary team today will be joined later by Dave Pritchard, but uh, Dave Fletcher of BBC Radio Derby, as always, is uh, representing the visiting county. As, as always. Yeah, morning, everybody. What are you doing every day of the season, I presume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, God willing. Um... <laughs> Well, one of Mickey Arthur's favourite grounds, of course, the Derbyshire coach. He was uh, in charge of Pakistan when they won the uh, Champions Trophy here, I think. They, they beat India here, didn't they? Was that here? I can't remember. Now. They beat, well, they, they may well have done. They beat they, England, Pakistan, Pakistan beat England here, I yeah. can uh, remember. Perhaps it was that. Perhaps it was that. And you may well, uh, if you've got your ticket yet, and if you haven't, why not, be able to see Mohammed Amir make his uh, international come back for Pakistan, which was a bit of a shock to everybody at Derbyshire because he was signed to play for them in the first half of the season. Mm. Disappointing that he isn't here. James Harris from the River Taff end, bowling to David Lloyd, who goes after him. First ball rocks back and attempts a cut that uh, went too far in front of square to be any good. Unfortunately for him, uh, Zayn Al Hassan did the fielding. And he got no run on that occasion. He made his intentions pretty clear last night with virtually a run of all 35. He's moved on to 36 from 38 deliveries. As Harris is in and bowls to the new Derbyshire captain, turns it into the leg side and they scamper through for a quick single as Dan Douthwaite goes round from square leg to do the fielding. And Derbyshire move on to 49 for one the first 50 runs scored by Glamorgan yesterday came after 14.1 overs, so they were quicker than Derbyshire. We're in the 18th over here. Derbyshire slightly hampered last night by the fact that well, Harry Kane certainly was playing for the close. I'm not sure whether David Lloyd was. <laughs> <laughs> he was dropped as well by uh, uh, Mia Hamza at sort of backward square leg deep leg gully, that kind of area. Straight in, straight out. Came's back on strike now. Harris balls to him, left alone outside the off stump. Take it by Cook. And there's no run. Yes, one doesn't like to uh, point fingers, but uh, let's say it's the sort of chance that Hamza would have expected to take. Yeah, I think so. On the vast majority of occasions. In his defence, um, it was gloomy by that mm. stage. Um, it's probably gloomier than it is now. It, it did suddenly go very... Or dark would be over egging it, but it did go a lot darker than it had been. Sun out for most of yesterday, no evidence of it so far this morning as Harris bowls to Cape and he leaves that one alone outside the off stump to go through to Chris Cook once again. But yeah, it's a bit disappointing, the clouds, but uh, not necessarily surprising given the uh, winter and spring that we've had. Indeed, we're expecting a reasonably full day's play, though. Yeah. Just a um, chance of a, a shower, maybe mid-afternoon. Dark blue seats and trees don't help, as this next delivery is defended by Harry Kane up towards uh, mid-off, and there's no run. I'm not criticising the club for the choice of the colour of the seats, but I don't think they help. If, you, if these seats were all white, yeah. and there, was, there were no trees, which would be a real shame, then everywhere would look brighter. If that makes any sense, I don't know, I'm not making any much sense really for a change. 
So you're you're calling for uh, trees that have graced the uh, the city of Cardiff for hundreds of years to be axed. I'm not calling for them to be chopped down. No, I'm not. I'm not. I think the trees are really nice. What I'm saying is, here comes Harris. Uh, Bolster, Bolster, Harry came. That one looked like it might have just come back a little bit. Didn't bounce particularly high as well as it went past the off stump, but it did go past the off stump. So came's okay. Looking at a replay, it might just be a figment of my imagination. How far away from the off stump was it? Well, it came back a little bit, but it wasn't very close to the off stump. And it went through to Chris Cook, end of the over 49 for one. BBC man in tree axe controversy. I, I can see it now. <laughs> the Daily Mail's going to have a field day, aren't they? Yeah. Dave Fletcher, not only is he useless, but he wants all the trees chopping down as well. Uh, I, I don't. I was actually quoted in the Daily Mail Were once you? myself no. uh, when they picked up on a... Uh, Rather critical letter I wrote to the, the staff in-house magazine, Ariel. Yes. Uh, and that's got published in the Daily Mail as well. They love anything like that, though, don't they? Oh, yes. Uh, I didn't actually speak to the Daily Mail. Uh, good, good morning to Richard Gibson, if he's listening. I know he does listen into the county coverage, uh, <laughs> the cricket man. 49 for one, Derbyshire. After adding three runs in the space of two overs. Hamza to Lloyd, two slips and a short mid-wicket, the close fielders, as Lloyd shoulders arms to that one, goes through outside off stump, and Lloyd goes down the pitch for a wonder and a prod, as batters are so wants to do. You've seen it plenty before, David. 22 yeah. yards long, yeah. three bits of wood at either end. <laughs> But unexpected spin. He won't have uh, seen that in his time at Glamorgan, David Lloyd, even though he's uh, had a dozen or so years at the county. As Hamza bowls and Lloyd works on the leg side, straight to short mid-wicket. Got very excited there, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> it happened uh, several times uh, at Lord's where Hamza ends his run with both arms in the air. Um, as if he thought he was within a fraction of taking a wicket, whereas, in fact, Lloyd played it perfectly competently off the middle of the bat. Maybe a fraction late, but uh, he got there. I believe it's McElroy who's off the field and uh, Gorvin is on, which is somewhat concerning. As Hamza bowls, and it's forced through the offside. Root is in pursuit, it'll be a couple of runs at least for David Lloyd. They turn, look at the possibility of a third, but uh, Root has made a scrambling stop close to the extra cover boundary. And uh, they settle for two, and that brings up the Derbyshire 50 in the 19th over. So slightly more slowly than Glamorgan's. Well, five overs slower. Despite the efforts of David Lloyd. So came, and before him, Reese were cautious. So Hams are bold, and Lloyd chops down on it, and it trickles out towards point. There is no run. Moving to Gary Charles with uh, yesterday. No wickets fell during your commentaries. Please don't take a break today during our innings, pal. <laughs> Absolutely. I picked up two at the end, but unfortunately one of them was Lewis Reese. I think I got the last two yesterday. <laughs> Waited a long time. Hamza then is running away from us and bowling to Lloyd, who plays defensively on the offside. The ball trickling up to Carlson at uh, mid off, and Carlson has remained at uh, mid off this season despite not having the, the captain seat with. Northeast preferring to lurk at slip, so Carlson as the de facto vice captain, if not de jure, is next to the bowler. Hamza in bowls, and that's taken a thick edge. It's safe enough from Lloyd, it's flown past the slips. Crane is chasing it down towards the third man boundary and this time they will come back for a third run because it's a long chase for Mason Crane. And Derbyshire move on to 54 for one. 
not maybe where Lloyd was intending it to go, but uh, perfectly safe. And uh, he moves on to 42 not out, a mere 212, <laughs> uh, no, no, 272 to beat uh, the ground record. Yes. Well, if he did that, then D David Griffin will be scrambling because uh, no Derbyshire bat has ever got a triple century. Uh, so that would be something. If he carries on like this, it won't take him that long. At 42 off 45, <laughs> going along nicely. Uh, you can get in touch with us in a variety of ways, including email. I've got one here from uh, Ian Crooks. As uh, James Harris begins a new over and bowls to David Lloyd, pushes it out into the offside, and there's no run. Um, he was uh, he was pleased to see Darbyshire have the better of day one. He said, although Thompson was the star of the show, it sounded like Ticknell bowled well in the early stages. He absolutely did. Looks very exciting and really quick. Uh, looking forward to seeing how this new look Derbyshire team develops. Um, and then he hopes that, uh, that Derby and Burton can pick up wins this afternoon. Uh, uh, and his PS is my favourite though. It says, looks like tough batting conditions at Edgebaston. Here's Harris bowls to Lloyd and pushes it out into the offside. <laughs> and, and there's no runners saying all the sun does the fielding once again yes uh, if you didn't see it it was a, a chastening day for Durham's bowlers the much vaunted Durham bowling attack and we look, we had a look at it again in the press room earlier on this morning a couple of us and it is a very decent bowling attack with pots mm. and uh, Bolland making his, uh, his D Durham yeah. debut and Brent Bryden Cass Callum Parkinson is Harris in and bowls and Lloyd pushes it up to mid off. He, he that sounded like a yes, well, perhaps not. As the ball went straight to the man at uh, Mason Crane. No, it isn't Mason Crane at all. It's uh, who is that? It's mid off Karen, Carlson. Karen Carlson. Yeah, um, went straight to him and they decided against taking the single. Uh, he's one of the swifter Glamorgan fielders, anyway. He's definitely got a couple of hand warmers in his pocket, so I would suggest. <laughs> So Jim, by the way, he's, uh, he's waddling. As Harris comes in again, bowling from the River Taff and strikes the pad of David Lloyd. It was a, a very muted appeal from Harris. Um, did he get a little inside edge? Was it going down leg side? One or the other. Leg side ish yeah. on the uh, initial. Yeah. Uh, thought so. as we see a replay on the video screen available on the county websites with BBC commentary it was going miles down leg side. Down leg side it did yeah. move a bit, yeah, but unfortunately the wrong way. If it had been straight, um, then he might have been in with a sh shout had Lloyd still missed it. But had it been straight, Lloyd might not have missed it. We'll never know. Here is Harris, past the umpire and balls is driven, but straight to Carlson. If you want to uh, email me, uh, nickweb2017 at gmail.com. Uh, same sort of handle as my Twitter account, nickweb2017, and may give me something more interesting than uh, the emails that have landed in that uh, already today, which tell me from a well-known florist that it's uh, a National Plant Appreciation Day. Oh, lovely. And from a Spanish uh, hotel chain that uh, there are spring offers available. <laughs> In comes Harris and Bowles. That's whipped into the leg side by Ooh. Lloyd. That's a very fine piece of fielding. Go on, I'm going to guess from here that it's Billy Root. Yep. He uh, picked it up and threw the ball towards the stumps in one movement and uh, actually dislodged the bales, which unfortunately you only ever see when the batsman's in. Yes, this is a trouble. It, Morgan it's had, weird, isn't it? had run out chances at, uh, at Lord. So in... Uh, Afterwards, Grant Bradburn, the coach, said, oh, we had half a dozen opportunities that we might have taken in the, the Middlesex innings. Well, we weren't reflecting really on any drop catches for Glamorgan. There might have been a couple that were uh, visible only to the highly trained professional uh, dressing room eye, but uh, certainly we weren't talking about drop chances. But run-out opportunities, uh, there were a couple, and one which would certainly have been out had it hit early on in uh, Stoneman's innings, but that only cost them about 30 out of the 655 <laughs> that Middlesex. Well, we, we were reflecting yesterday over a glass of lemonade that uh, Derbyshire didn't miss an opportunity. Didn't, mm. didn't, there were no dropped catches. There weren't a huge number of catches, but there were no dropped catches yesterday from Derbyshire. 
Here we go then with Mia Hamza continuing from the Cathedral Road End and bowling to Kame, who shoulders arms to a ball that goes uh, across him as the left arm is wont to do. But um, Jamie McElroy's absence from the field means that Morgan do not have another left arm option at the moment. He didn't bowl yesterday, did he? No, I don't think he would have necessarily no. have expected to with uh, um, with the spinners coming on early. Hamza bowls, grunt of effort in the delivery, but came is behind it and pushing it to mid on. I did see him in the, the lift. There was nothing visibly wrong with him last night, but uh, obviously uh, some sort of muscle strain wouldn't have been visible. We don't necessarily want a specialist number 11 batsman, though. That's not an ideal in your, in your lineup, is it? No. Play at Pompey us if they're filming one man and it looks sparse, sadly. As that's through outside off stump, and Chris Cook can't take a ball that uh, bounces, I think, a second time just as it reached him, and that's uh, a rare bye notched up. To the debit of Chris Cook, 55 for one. Good crowd yesterday. Wasn't bad. Um, I think Saturday's tricky. We, we, we talked about it earlier, weren't we? Quite often we'll bang on about, uh, oh, they should play more games on a weekend and that would enable people to come, but there, is far more, there are far, far more many things to do on a weekend, so therefore it perhaps isn't the best time to play. Here is Hamza to bowl to... Lloyd, who slashes that one high over Dave, over Billy Root at point, or gully, and that has uh, raced away to the third man boundary as uh, Lloyd threw the proverbial kitchen sink at that one. It was a bit wide. Root leapt, but couldn't get a hand on it. It uh, had gone high, wide and handsome to the boundary for four. Colin Ingram give, give Ingram giving a helping hand, and I use the uh, phrase advisedly, by uh, David Griffin and Paul Hand, who are both sitting very close to where the ball crossed the boundary. I don't think they were much used, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised if they had been. Derbyshire 59 for one. David Griffin, of course, provides all things of uh, Derbyshire's uh, history. And stats, as Lloyd plays no shot to the next delivery. Plus, a, uh, is he still doing a, a daily uh, opinion piece on Twitter? Oh, yes, yes. Very much one of the most vociferous defenders of county cricket. D. Griffin, D. Griffin picks, is it? Yeah, yeah. Should you wish to uh, follow his impassioned pleas. But he was silent yesterday. National Day of Silence. <laughs> that, was one of, that was a brilliant video. 45 seconds of silence. As... Hamza's in and bowled to Lloyd, who leaves it to go through outside off stump. No shot offered. Lloyd has 46. Derbyshire 59 for one with Kame on 12. And we've had 21 overs of the innings. And therefore the scoring rate, as our screen tells us, is 2.81 runs per over. Yeah, that isn't quite what we were told would be happening this season necessarily. But I suppose once you get past the first 30 to 40 overs of this ball, you can almost rely on it not doing too much except obviously on this pitch turn so it'll be interesting to see how they do pick up the scoring rate not that David Lloyd necessarily has to pick up the scoring rate because the uh, Derbyshire skipper's got 46 off at 54 Harry came 12 off 60 he's on strike now as James Harris begins a new over from the River Taff end and he pushes that up to mid on and there is no run that was Andy Corbin who did the fielding there the substitute fielder you mentioned Warwickshire against Durham. Warwickshire 520 for one now, and we're still in uh, within the first 110 overs, but Warwickshire have got the um, five points. Mid-afternoon, I, I saw from a video that they wrapped up their uh, full batting bonus points. <laughs> Harris Bowles turned into the leg side by Cam. He thinks about a single, but... Despite the fact it beat the man close in at mid-wicket, who was Billy Root, it was uh, straight to Dan Douthwaite behind him on near enough straight to him. And therefore, there was no run available. But it's strange because you would think that is a decent bowling attack. Potts played mm. for England, Boland the overseas. 
Rain has been uh, among the most dependable county pros for some years, and, and Cars has had England opportunities as well. Yes, what's gone wrong? This one is driven by uh, Harry Kaye up to mid-off where it's fielded by Kieran Carlson and there's no room. The only wicket taker so far, Colin Ackerman, who is the sixth bowler and second spinner used. <laughs> yes. You shouldn't laugh. Nobody out there should be laughing. I just want to make that perfectly clear at this early stage. Although it is quite amusing. Here is Harris in to bowl to Kane. That's down the leg side, and it's nicely taken by Chris Cook. He was almost at full stretch on the floor as he collected that one. Yeah, so let's have a look at the Chris Cook uh, benefit ties. They're um, striking. Well, you're, you're tempted, aren't you? <laughs> what, I'm trying to wait, is, that's like a, is that like a Celtic kind of design, or is it just a design? It's just a design from a, uh, a well-known high street retailer. Okay. It's an interesting tie. I'm fascinated by many ties, actually, because I do have some, but I can't remember the last time I wore one. Well, if you forget your belt. <laughs> I'm sure a tie would go all the way around. In comes Harris and Bowles to Kane. It pushes this one out to uh, cover. Oh, Hassan does the fielding. There is no run. Elsewhere in Division 2, Gloucestershire struggling on 35 for 3 over the water at Bristol in reply to the Yorkies. Masood inspired 3 2 6 all out. Leicestershire made 338 all out at Grace Road. Sussex 0 for 1. Tom Clark gone. Harris in again, balls to Cape and goes back initially and then just pushes the ball down into the ground. Root does the fielding. And it's the end of the over. Uh, 59 for one. Derbyshire in their first innings. That was a maiden, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, Harris has been uh, economical in the extreme. Uh, eight overs, five maidens, one for five. Hams are not for 24. Carlson got a bit of tap last night from uh, his former colleague David Lloyd. And Crane, three overs, not for five in his first First team appearance for Glamorgan. Uh, at Northampton, Northants batting on 326 for four. Emilio Gay, 171 not out. The young opener. Right, Hamza is going to try his luck from around the wicket. When David Lloyd is ready, David Lloyd is watching where the fielders are being stationed deep on the leg side at uh, fine leg and square leg. And Hamza's into bowl, a full length ball on off stump that Lloyd drives back to him. Division 1, uh, Essex 436 for 6 against uh, Kent. Sentry there for Matt Critchley to join Elgar. At Southampton, Hampshire 325 for 7 against uh, Lancashire. Liam Dawson 76 not out. Hamza is in. Balls and Lloyd works it off his legs. There'll be runs here. Will it go for 4? No, it won't. A sprawling stop on the boundary by Gorvin. And uh, they'll come back for 2. So David Lloyd has to wait for his first Derbyshire half century. Uh, the Oval, Surrey, 78 for Norton, reply to Somerset's 285 all out. And that is you up to date with the uh, with the county scene as it stands at the moment in round two of the county championship here on BBC Sport Online. Hamza into Lloyd on 48 not out. And he's beaten by that one. Bit of uh, extra vim and vigour in that delivery from Hamza. And Lloyd wanders down and has a prod. So a few times from this end yesterday morning, didn't we, with uh, Zach Chapel in his first spell and then Blair Tickner obviously in his first spell for Derbyshire. He got the move, they both got the ball to move a little bit. I'm not sure how much that one moved. Didn't beat the off stump by much. No, it didn't. It's one of those very strange looking shots where you, you look like you're playing it and you play inside it. Hamza in to bowl 
to Lloyd, who drives in the offside, but uh, doesn't beat Carlson at mid-off. And there's no run. So came definitely playing the support role. Happy to sit on his bat or st lean on his bat as he is at the moment at the uh, the non-striker's end and watch his new captain bludgeon his former team. 61 for one. Hamza into ball. Turned off his leg strongly by Lloyd but uh, frustrated by finding Harris at wide mid on on this occasion. Lloyd's hit a couple firmly off the, the meat of the bat, but uh, they have been intercepted by the two Welsh-born players in this Glamorgan eleven, Carlson and Harris. This is ideal for Harry Kane, who, whose powers of concentration have definitely improved as he's uh, got more experienced. Last ball of the Hamza over then to David Lloyd on 48 not out and uh, remains thus as he plays it gently to cover. And there's no run. 61 for one Derbyshire through 23 overs here on BBC Sport Online. And he's almost got the best the, the, the best batting around him, if you like. And David Lloyd wants to get on with it. Lewis Reese is a player who really does like to get on with it. Wayne Madsen's next. And Iron Donald to come as well. So uh, Harry came... Yes, he's on 12, and as long as it doesn't bother him, and it never has seemed to bother him, 12 off 66 deliveries, and then he's the perfect foil for those batsmen who want to throw the bat out the ball. Here's James Harris bowling to Harry Kemp, who leaves this one alone outside the off stump, goes through to the keeper. There is no run. I'm going, to, I'm going for the full name in a moment. That's... Uh, Daffid Pritchard joins us now. I've done it. Daff will be with us fairly shortly. There, there we are. He's with us. Morning, Dave. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Yeah, very good. Very good so far. Things can change quickly, though. Here's Harris. Bowls to Kame, who defends that one straight back to the bowler. And there is no run. Yeah, pretty solid start from Derbyshire so far this morning, isn't it? little cloudier overhead than it was yesterday when we did eventually start, albeit half an hour later because uh, the wet outfield yesterday. But uh, these look like seam-friendly conditions overhead, don't they? But as we discussed yesterday, this Kookaburra ball doesn't look to offer quite so much movement in the air. And it's about six or seven degrees cooler as well. There's Harris balls to Ken. That one's turned into the leg side, fielded by Root. At, uh, one of two catching mid-wickets and there's no run. I think that will negate the clouds, if you like, because it is definitely cooler today. So much cooler. I put long trousers on. I'm not sure that was entirely necessary, really, because it's nice and warm in the commentary box. But I felt it yesterday when I went around to, to speak to Alex Thompson post. We had to go outside, and it was it was brisk. As Harris bowls to Kate, pushes it out into the offside this time, no run. That's the thing about this time of year, isn't it? Catches you out. You think spring is finally here, yeah. and then later in the day, a uh, different matter altogether, oh, isn't it? Always looks warm through a window, doesn't it? Always looks warm through a window. Yeah, I was leaving the ground and saw the pub over the road, people sat outside. Very continental picture, but, you know, as soon as the... The sun goes in fully. It's uh, not quite so pleasant this time of year. That was where we went yesterday. I'll, I'll just mention the entertainment in a minute. As Harris is in and bowls a short delivery that uh, Harry Kane ducks out of the way of, and it bounces twice then before it gets through to Chris Cook behind the stumps. So as you go in through what is effectively the front door, but it sort of seems to be at the back, there was a bloke playing jazz guitar, which is possibly not one of my favourite genres, but they also had music playing over loudspeakers from inside the pub, which were coming to the speakers outside the pub. So his guitar and the music that they were playing over the the, the internal PA system was absolutely bizarre. This next delivery is defended by Harry came up to uh, Kieran Carlson at mid-off, and it's the end of another over. 61 for one, it remains. Came has 12. Lloyd has 48. So, yeah, it was it was a bit bizarre. 
Yeah, I wouldn't have had that bar over the road from Savoy Gardens as a, a kind of jazz hotspot. Jazz, <laughs> jazz guitar, though. An acoustic jazz. I mean, mad. Absolutely mad. But met up with uh, some... Uh, uh, some of them were probably former... Well, one of them was probably a former uh, Glamorgan, Hampshire, and now Derbyshire fan. You can probably work out who he is. <laughs> um, and extended or members of the extended family it was a very very pleasant evening and uh, no doubt we will meet up again at some point during the course of the campaign I think they've come up to Derby and Chesterfield Mir Hamza is coming around the wicket to David Lloyd who punches on to the onside for no run yeah, we, and that is part of the joy of watching county cricket as you see a lot of familiar faces and everybody's willing to talk and they've got their opinion they ask you for yours they either agree or disagree and then everybody gets on with it and it's just it's a, just a such a nice atmosphere i just wish there were slightly more people but one day as hamza continues to lloyd who's on the front foot again playing a shot to mid on for no run no, absolutely it's one of the strengths of county cricket isn't it that kind of camaraderie you have across the teams and you see it on the pitch as well don't you the, mm. there's there's a good deal of fight on the pitch as ever as you'd expect from professional sport but always always some respect and uh, collegiate spirit as well isn't there I think it goes down into the club club game as well you don't tend to see it in football certainly the football that I watch at very modest level but you do at cricket here's Hamza once more Slightly shorter this time, and Lloyd once again defends. And before my son complains, when I say modest level, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it's true, though, isn't it? You know, with, with cricket, whether you're a club cricketer, a pro cricketer, there's a connection yeah. at all levels, isn't there? Yeah. Well, it's quite, it's, for the amateurs, it's a huge commitment, isn't it? Weekend cricket throughout the summer is a massive commitment it's like a second job in, in some respects mm. isn't it when you put in the selection evenings training the matches themselves take up a whole day as Hamza charges in once more and Lloyd fends that slightly uppishly short mid wicket was interested for a moment but it falls safe I don't know what it's like down here either of you might know um, in Derbyshire, they've already postponed the first round of matches and moved them to later in the season. In the North West, where um, the, club, the club that I go and watch, they've postponed the first two rounds of matches already and have moved them later in the season because it, they just have, nobody's been able to get out onto the grounds to do any work effectively. Similar story in North Wales. Yeah, they've postponed the first two rounds, haven't they, Nick? Mm. And I uh, don't know about South Wales yet, but certainly in North, the weather's impacted as Hamza bowls a fuller ball this time and Lloyd drives well past point. There'll be a race on for the fielder to get there, and the ball wins. So a boundary to Lloyd, and a fine way for the Derbyshire skipper to bring up his 50. An excellent return to Glamorgan for the former skipper of the Welsh county. David Lloyd moves on to 52, bringing up his half-century in 65 balls. Yeah, with his ninth four, and uh, it's a good way to start, isn't it? Brought in as captain. Making his debut capped last week during that uh, completely washed out match. And now a first half century back in his old hunting ground. Here comes Hamza, final ball of the over to Lloyd, who's on the back foot this time, whipping it off his hip down to wide fine leg for a single. That takes him on to 53 and Derbyshire are 66 for one at the end of the 25th over. It's the uh, 29th time David Lloyd has got to 50 in first class cricket, I believe. Uh, he's gone on to make six centuries and of course he went on to make one uh, very large century, 313 not out. A couple of years ago here against Derbyshire. Yeah, and he tends to score his runs at a brisk rate as he's done on this occasion and he'll be enjoying getting one over his former teammates as he gets ready to face a, a very familiar face in James Harris who's on his way in 
to bowl to Lloyd from the River Tower fan, and uh, Lloyd clips that into the leg side, straight to the field of the uh, mid-wicket, Billy Root. I've just had a text. It's got nothing to do with cricket. But I've, it's like a public service, I think. I've just had a text from a number that clearly I don't recognise. Uh, it starts brackets British government subsidy. <laughs> uh, good news, exclamation mark. I've just had it. Uh, the British government has issued subsidies covering entrepreneurship, education, family, etc. And you can receive a subsidy of £900. Here is uh, James Harris, who is <laughs> to Lloyd, who defends it straight back to the bowler. Click now, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, to verify the information and receive it. Let it help you realise with a Z, which is a slight concern, uh, your dreams and improve your life. Don't miss it. <laughs> Would you mind passing it on to me? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I think we should all lump on. <laughs> wow. It's, it's incredible, isn't it, really? They've started sending stuff out on WhatsApp that is becoming annoying. Next delivery is clipped into the leg side by David Lloyd. Tumbling stop by Root, but he can't prevent them from getting through for a single. He was at square leg by the time he affected the stop. Lloyd moves to 54, 67 for one. Could be a great day for David Lloyd. If he can convert this 50 into a 100 and his beloved Wrexham uh, AFC are going for promotion, if yeah. if they win today and other results go their way in League 2, they could secure back-to-back -back promotions. Well, they couldn't beat Tramway the other week, as I reminded him uh, on the media day. He was very pleased to talk about that game. <laughs> as Harris bowls to came, he clips this one to square leg and there is no run. It's a good sport. See, season ticket holder. I said, what happens if they get into the playoffs? I might have to miss them. Because, of course, he'd be playing cricket on the weekends of the playoffs and finals and stuff. But I think they'll be... Uh, Phil Parkinson's a good manager. Yeah, they should. They should get the job done from here. They'll have a couple of bites at the cherry, even if they don't manage it today. And Steve Parkins, even funnier than Phil Parkinson, his assistant, as this one's on leg stump from Harris, clipped down towards long leg where uh, Mir Hamza will do the fielding and they'll get back for a couple of runs. Okay, moves to 14, 69 for one. Yeah, it seems the runs are uh, I was just thinking that. It, just, it felt easily. like it, they just sort of upped it a little bit, didn't they? Even, I mean, what they've got three from this over, but it just feels like they're being a bit more a bit more aggressive. It does, and I suppose they might have just, even on a subconscious level, put the brakes on last night just because it was the a shortened yes. session for them. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Get through the tricky first half hour. There's a hold-up here. Uh, I think they're trying to work out how many balls are left in the over. I don't think there are any, uh, if I'm entirely honest with you. But uh, they are checking with the scorers. <laughs> and the scorers uh, are not no, they're a bit tired of getting back to Rob Bailey but uh, so the two that were scored off that last delivery wasn't off the last delivery at all and here we go James Harris is in and bowls to Harry Kane who defends <laughs> the extra ball anyway if it is an extra ball uh, up towards Garen Carlson at mid off and it remains 67 for one at the end of the... Oh, it's, the scoreboard's gone mad now because they've got to go backwards to go forwards. I think it's 67 for one. Um, uh, no, 69 for one. Look at that. There we go. Everything's all, everything is well again. Yeah, I did wonder when Harris is going back to his mark and the scoreboard was showing that the over was complete. Yes. Those in the room next to us were pointing with one finger in the air, suggesting there was one ball left, and oh, okay. the scorers seem to agree, so that all seems to have been sorted now. And the one ball that he bowled after everybody thought the over had finished, no, nothing was scored off it anyway, so there's nothing controversial to see here. And as you've probably just heard there on the public announcement system, there's going to be a change of bowling at the Cathedral Road end. Dan Douthwaite is going to replace Mir Hamza. So a change of action at this end, right arm over. A few MPH slower than Hamza, but more medium fast here from Douthwaite. Morgan's first bowling change of the day. 
as Douthwaite runs in to David Lloyd, who leaves the first ball of the over outside off stump. Then walks a long way into the offside as if to suggest there's no point in bowling there, son. You're not going to trouble, uh, trouble the stumps. Yeah, he looks to be imposing himself, particularly on the bowlers he knows well. I think with the exception of Hamza, he'll have faced most of these bowlers fairly frequently over the years. He'll know their strengths and weaknesses, as will Douthwaite. Lloyd's as he bowls in, full ball on middle stump, which Lloyd defends. He's got... Uh a couple of tough acts to follow as captain in terms of batting. Shan Masood two years ago almost got a thousand runs before the end of April, uh, which would have been something. Um, last season, Leas Deploy, who took over from Masood, batted really well in Championship cricket and obviously up and left for Middlesex. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to pile any pressure on David Lloyd. I think it, I don't think he would be bothered anyway. As he faces the latest delivery from Douthwaite. Again, fullish on the stumps and Lloyd defends. Yeah, huge axe to follow and the run scoring stakes. I'm sure he just wants to do it for himself, doesn't he? He wants to go to a new county, get that new challenge and the reset button has been hit. And he can uh, almost start again, really. But with years and years of experience behind it, which is a nice place to start as Douthwaite continues over the wicket from the Cathedral Road end the back of a length this time Lloyd looks to cut it but it's fielded no run yeah it sounds like it's been pretty reinvigorating for David Lloyd at this point in his career he's still got plenty of years to give but as you said years of experience and nice for him to have a fresh start absolutely moved into the area uh, settled in really nicely with his family the rest of his family was there when he was capped last Friday. It was it was really nice. As he faces Douthwaite, full ball which Lloyd defends once more. Tidy start to the over from Dan Douthwaite, the all-rounder, who has spoken of his eagerness to play a bit more red ball cricket this year. Someone who's tended to play more white ball cricket for Glamorgan than county championship stuff he just seems to have been around for a few years now Dan Douthway it almost feels like you know now if you're going to make an impact make an impact here he is again final ball of the over Lloyd drives but straight to mid off to Kieran Carlson who fields so Douthwaite starts with a maiden yeah as you say Dave been around fair whiles 27 now but he kind of burst onto the scene as a hard hitting White ball, mm. Bato bowled a bit, having impressed for uh, Cardiff MCCU. Um, when he came through the Cardiff Met system, it's an excellent sport set up there, whether it's rugby, cricket, they've developed international athletes in huge amount of sports. And uh, yeah, he perhaps hasn't kicked on, maybe, having yeah. hit some huge scores early in his career at Glamorgan. Um, so yeah, still, still young in county terms a chance for him maybe to establish himself as a as a red ball all-rounder as well this year I'm going to see some spin for the first time today Mason Crane who bowled three overs for five runs last night is going to come on from the uh, the River Taff end he bowled from uh, the Cathedral Road end last night this is the end at which Alex Thompson took seven for 65 career best in the Glamorgan innings. I've just seen him and Kieran Carlson both windmilling their right arms at the same time, almost geeing each other on. I wonder how long it'll be before we see Carlson as well. Such was the dominance of Alex Thompson in terms of wickets taken, certainly. So he's ready, got the one slip. It's not as attacking a field as we saw for Alex Thompson. Be bowling to Harry Kane as a man at backward square leg, man on the mid-wicket boundary, uh, an orthodox mid-wicket, mid-on, mid-off cover. This is the first delivery is played, stepping back by Kane and pushed back to the bowler, so the cover, and there's a slightly backward point and a man on the cover boundary as well. 
for Mason Crane's first over, the mid on and mid off uh, reasonably far back. As Crane is in, balls to Kane, who waits for this one to turn into him from leg stump or just outside and then clips it down towards Zayn Al Hassan, who's at mid wicket, and they pick up a single. Kane moves to 15, 70 for one. Feels like a fairly long and brisk run up for a spinner, doesn't it? Yes. His arm comes over very quickly as well. I was thinking how quick he bowled. I've not really seen much of Mason Crane in the uh, in the flesh. He's in now, a whir of arms and legs, and Lloyd rather reaching for that one as he takes a step into the leg side and the ball turns away from him. Manages to get the toe end of the bat on it. It goes out to Sam Northeast at uh, cover, extra cover really. I'll watch the next one on the uh, on the screen, see how far he gets it to turn as he bowls. And it does turn quite a long way. Orthodox leg spin, it bounced quite nicely for Lloyd though to just uh, guide out towards Harris on the cover boundary. 71 yeah. for one, sorry. No. Sorry, no, no, like you said Dave, everything's turning a fair bit, isn't it? But just slightly too short to yes. trouble the batters at the moment. Yeah. He's in again, balls that one there. Potentially keeps a bit low for Harry Kane, who manages to get his bat down on it, pushes it out into the onside. Well, Billy Root does the fielding. And there's no run. He's a, a whir of arms and legs. Well, more arms than legs, to be fair. Mason Crane. There they go. And he bowls and came with very straight arms. Punches it out to Billy Root in the onside. And Mason Crane can see he's just a couple of runs from his first over of the day. Now we should move on to 71 for one. Came has 15, Lloyd has 55. And the deficit now 166. Yep, solid start from Derbyshire so far. It'll be interesting to see how Crane fares. Player who's played predominantly in the limited overs format. Probably hasn't got through huge long spells of bowling many times in his career certainly not in recent years in, in first class cricket so that, that'll be a different challenge for him as Douthwaite begins his run up start of a new over at the Cathedral Road end he bowls to Lloyd who lets that go outside the off stump and it's been back on still lovely and warm in Torrey Molinos <laughs> uh, unfortunately says back to reality tomorrow just topping up the town listening to the cricket I can think of nothing better well I'm not really one for lying down in the sun but it does sound quite pleasant nice Nothing. day for batting in Torremolinos I think so yes yeah. <laughs> here comes Douthwaite to Lloyd once more it's a full ball Yorker length and well he drives that to mid wicket for no run as Sam Northeast gets to work on the ball, trying to keep a shine on this Kookaburra, which isn't exactly assisting the quick bowlers that much in terms of movement, as Derbyshire's bowlers found yesterday, or at least the majority of their seam attack did. Of course, Alex Thompson performed so well, spinning the ball for career-best figures, as Douthwaite is in, another full ball, which Lloyd drives this time, and it's through the field on this occasion. He'll get... A couple of runs, taking his tally to 57 and Derbyshire's to 73 for one. Somebody running with a dog on the river. Excellent. You see a few runners and oh, there cyclists. Were there were lots of runners this morning when I was walking in. Some of them were running about as quickly as I was walking, in fairness, but... Uh, yeah, there was a lot of runners this morning. Here's Douthwaite into Lloyd. Another full ball, which Yorker length, and Lloyd did not deal with that quite so comfortably. But no harm done. Yeah, just goes toe into the bat on it. For a moment, might have thought it was going to sneak underneath. There's a sort of mullet going on with Dan Douthwaite there. There is, yes. Yeah, just a hint of a mullet. He's, he's in the early stages. Nowhere near as mullety as Sam Connors. As Douthwaite balls a short ball this time, which 
bounces a second time before reaching Chris Cook and it's signalled as a no ball. Yeah, that wasn't his finest moment. Bless him, Dan Dowdwight. They're going to show a replay of it as well, that's nice. That was uh, quite a big no ball. And uh, Lloyd watched it go past while standing on one leg. Yeah, half a foot over with his front foot there, Douthwaite. As he runs in to Lloyd, again a full ball which Lloyd drives to Carlson at mid-off. Yeah, it seems like Douthwaite is delving into his one-day box of tricks, even in the, the red ball format, a lot of full balls, a few at Yorker length, but Lloyd's dealt with it pretty comfortably so far. As Douthwaite skips into his run-up, into Lloyd on a length, and Lloyd flicks that down to third man for a single. And that's the end of the over. 29 overs gone, Derbyshire 76 for one. Well, as Douthwaite is d dipping into his one-day bowling box of tricks, that's definitely a shot that's come from one-day cricket, isn't it? The, uh, the deliberate guide down to third man because he played quite hard at it and it raced down to the fielder down there. Yeah, like you say, hard at it. Lloyd tends to play with quite hard hands, doesn't he? Yeah. Really gets through the ball. Perhaps 10 years ago, people would have had a sharp intake of breath, but you don't even bat an eyelid now. Yeah, they played it down the third man. That's what they do. Which is why it was good that there was a third man, because quite often there isn't. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, so well done to her. Well done to Sam Northeast for having a third man. Um, Mason Crane beginning another over from the River Tower End. Uh, has to reach for that one, David Lloyd. He plays it over the top of Sam Northeast and out towards the cover boundary for a couple of runs. It was in the air, it seemed, for quite some time. And then he just uses his hand to suggest he wanted to get it slightly higher than it went. But he picks up two more. Lloyd moves on to 60, 78 for one. He's certainly dominating the Derbyshire innings so far. The man out last night, having played on, was uh, Lewis Reese for naught. As Crane is in, there's a sweep shot. Big appeal for Labour before Wicked, and he's gone. He went for the sweep shot, and Mason Crane gets the breakthrough. Lloyd is out for 60. And it was a much-needed breakthrough for Glamorgan. Derbyshire 78 for one, still trailing by 159. And considering how serenely Derbyshire had progressed so far this morning, you got the impression it would take a player to rather throw away their wicket and Lloyd just there trying to sweep and play across the line where for once Crane had actually pitched it up quite a bit, pitched around middle, it was looking like it was going on to hit middle and leg, uh, quite a comfortable decision for the umpire to make, so Lloyd looks like he's quite annoyed with himself there, slapping his bat onto his pads as he trudges off to the pavilion, he looked to be in control there, 60 off 86, but his innings comes to an end. A very useful knock, a good score on his return to Glamorgan, but it looks like he'll feel he there was a century there for, for him to make. Exactly. 76 run partnership of 153 balls, just 86 of them for that uh, Lloyd innings, as you say. And he will be disappointed, but in the grand scheme of things, who knows? It looks like, it looks like Wayne Madsen coming down the, uh, down the steps. He actually gives Lloyd a little pat on the back. Madsen, one of his uh, predecessors as captain, of course, back in 2012. Uh, well, from 2012 all the way through to 2015, I think. He was certainly the captain when they got... Well, he might not have been. I'm, I'm getting into realms of stuff that I don't really know. He was certainly the captain in 2015 because Billy Goldman took over from him. Well, that's as much as I want to say on the matter. <laughs> <laughs> Before somebody sends me a message to say, what are you talking about? Uh, but he's a, he's a man who, uh, again, doesn't like to hang about too much. Yeah, and a but proper heavyweight at this level, isn't he, in terms of run making? Oh, an absolute mountain of runs so over the course of his career. It's a, it's a remarkable career, really. Wayne Madsen. He's got uh, 
14,904 first class runs at 40. With a high score of 231. So uh, I don't think there are many bowling attacks in the country that don't know about Wayne Manson and aren't warned about him on the tip sheet before the game starts. If they still have tip sheets. Probably sent emails and moving pictures on iPads these days, aren't they, rather than having something written in the changing room. But, uh, but that would give Mason Crane plenty of confidence as well. Uh, as you were saying, he hasn't, over the last couple of years, had the best of times. So to pick up a wicket early, certainly early in the in this spell, he comes in and bowls to Wayne Madsen, uh, one that's down the leg side, and Madsen's off the mark straight away, fairly comfortably. The ball goes out to... Uh, Al Hassan, at square leg, 79 for two. Yeah, getting joy from pitching the ball up, allow the ball to fly up to, to a more dangerous length, Crane, and then dragging his first one to Madsen. Quite a few of his deliveries have been dragged short, as you often see with, with leg spinners. See, this should be a really quick over, shouldn't it? Because he's a leg spinner, he's got a very short run up, and not much is happening. But I'm going to have to uh, leave it with you, go, Dave. So here comes Crane to Kame, who's on the back foot, driving through the covers, and he'll go through for a comfortable single. Harry Kane moves on to 16, Derbyshire 80 for two, with two balls left of the 30th over. As Nick Webb rejoins us, with Dave making way. Here is Crane, pitching it up this time, and... Madsen defends. Yeah, as Dave was saying, that early wicket, Crane's first for Glamorgan, will do him a world of good. One for 11 from 4.5 overs so far for the man on loan from Hampshire as he pulls on a length, just back of a length to Madsen, who looks to flick it through mid-wicket, but the ball is fielded, and that's the end of the over. Derbyshire end the 30th over 80 for 2 Yeah, it's quite a responsibility really on Mason Crane, Glamorgan looking to uh, add threat to their bowling attack this season and uh, he's the only full time signing so far, we've got uh, Mir Hamza here for 7 weeks and uh, Thereafter, you would have thought they would be uh, very much in need of replacing Mir Hamza uh, for the, the championship games, at least. I wouldn't be surprised if they went with uh, two batters for the T20, with uh, Labashain due to arrive next month, and uh, Colin Ingram already in the stable, as it were. Our... Uh, Colleagues on the network desk uh, speculating as to uh, whether Warwickshire might uh, set a new record for them of 810. Uh, appears to be their record. Can Wouldn't that have been the match where Brian Lara scored 500? That's a very good question. I would have thought so. Uh, look up the uh, the year. Uh, against Durham, Birmingham, 94. Yeah, 30 years ago. Here's Douthwaite to Kane. Prods it through onto the onside and he'll scamper through for a single. 94 would be about right for Lara, wouldn't it? Yeah. An educated guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who'd be a Durham supporter today? Getting absolutely tonked all round Hedgbiston. Well, they've got the scant consolation of a wicket today. Callum Parkinson getting his first for the county. As Douthwick continues from the Cathedral Road end to Madsen, a full ball which looks to beat Madsen outside the off stump. A decent delivery from Douthwick there. Madsen plays the shot again as he contemplates how he might face the next. First of many wickets for Glamorgan, we hope, says player Pompey on Twitter, who also draws uh, attention to a tweet from uh, Forest Green Rovers, who saw fit to remind their supporters that anti-Welsh 
language will not be tolerated ahead of their trip to Wrexham today. Here's Douthwaite to Madsen, who drives, and Douthwaite gets a hand on it to stop the ball, and Carlson finishes off the fielding. One of, one of my uh, rare visits to a football ground in a, a supporting capacity. is very amused by uh, the fact that um, the visiting uh, supporters at a Welsh ground were making the, the most of uh, Welsh propensity to um, with sheep, allegedly. Here's Douthwaite to Madsen, who... Plays a defensive stroke onto the offside, considers a single, thinks better of it. And when the home team took the lead, the chant was 1-0 to the Sheep Lovers, or something like that. Yes. Favoured by a number of Welsh clubs, especially those who play in the English pyramid. Yes, you might as well try and turn the cliché round and use it. Here's Douthwaite at the top of his mark. As he runs into Madsen, who <laughs> leaves the ball at the very last second, just outside the off stump, and that carried a bit more than, than previous deliveries. A strange old leave, wasn't it? Put almost as much effort into that as uh, he did the shot. But it actually, got his bat out of the way and gloves out of the way rather too late. Yeah, the ball did not miss his gloves by much there. bit more life in the pitch on that occasion than we've seen so far this mo morning as Douthwaite is in once more down the leg side and thumps Madsen on the pad, no run and that's the end of the over 31 overs gone and Derbyshire at 81 for 2 Yeah I've been um, relatively impressed by Douthwaite's bowling and the what I've seen of him this season he's, he's quite disciplined at Lords. it has been one of his uh, problems in the past that he's Bowl four or five decent balls and over, and then there'll be uh, something that's eminently hittable. But uh, seems to have upped his consistency. Went for fewer than three and over at uh, at Lords. Has got a, a reasonable amount of pace on him. So uh, maybe uh, he's had some valuable advice, or worked hard during the winter, or both, and uh, will be a, a more consistent. Uh, Contributor to the Glamorgan attack. As here comes Crane again, bowling to Kame, who pushes forward. And there is uh, no run. Did well in the start of the T20 last season, Douthwaite, before uh, getting injured. And was missed thereafter, as Glamorgan suffered quite a few injuries. Rather a makeshift batting lineup on occasion. And they were down to... Um, not many to choose from in terms of fit players at one point. Crane bowls to Kame, uh, who plays that one into the offside. They'll hustle through for a quick single. It's smartly fielded in the covers by Sub Gorvin, but uh, Madsen was safely home to the striker's end. You'd imagine this would be a, a bowling partnership that we might see in tandem in T20 cricket as well mm. this summer. Yes, especially if they uh, field two overseas batters. Flight from Kame, driven into the offside, half-fielded at cover by Gorvin, backed up by Carlson, but they have gone through for a quick single. And Derbyshire move on to 83 for two. Yeah, you'd imagine Douthwaite's real value would be that kind of middle, lower order batter, capable of clearing the ropes. A finisher, as they say these days. Here's Kame facing up to Crane. And he pushes forward defensively, and there is no run. Crane to Kame has got a, the possibility of being a Salter-Slater combination, which is one of my least favourite ones of recent years on commentary. It has. I've had to concentrate with this particular duel. Here comes Crane, bowls a full pitch ball that uh, came doesn't really make the most of, drives to mid-off, and there is no run. So, all quiet here at Sophia Gardens since the departure of David Lloyd. It's been a subdued and rather 
chilled crowd, I suspect, today, as uh, that's outside off stump. No shot played. Crane arms in the air. Through it goes. 83 for two Derbyshire after 32 overs. And uh, really, it's it's not surprising that uh, it's, a, it's a sparse crowd today because uh, yesterday was uh, quite... Uh, Welcome to get the chance to sit outside between commentary spells for the odd uh, 15 minutes here and there. But um, today, I think I'll be staying firmly in the warm. Absolutely. And uh, good to see Crane there. Really giving the ball some flight. Bowling at a fuller length. You can see that wicket has really lifted his confidence and he's that much more willing to, to throw the ball up and tempt the batters outside off stump as Douthwaite continues from the Cathedral Road end to Madsen, who defends another good ball on a good line and length from Douthwaite. Very tidy start to his spell so far, as you mentioned, Nick. Yes, well, he's got to uh, provide that sort of uh, consistency, really, hasn't he, if he wants to be a, a regular Red Bull contributor. Not sure if that's really the beginning of a, a mullet, though. It's a bit of a floppy fringe at the front, but um, I, I think you might be accusing him harshly there. As Douthwick continues to Madsen, again, full Madsen connects well, but the ball is fielded on the onside, no run. Certainly quite a severe shave on the sides, which... Mm. So I can see where Dave is coming from. There's definitely the uh, the start of a of a mullet there. And I should know. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Flatshow's hair is concentrated very much on his beard these days. Here's Douthwaite bounding in. Madsen the batter hits him on the pads. A strained appeal, which doesn't last long. Suspect that was likely going down the leg side as we have a look at the replay. And yes, that would have been missing leg stump by uh, some distance. But decent bit of movement off the seam from Douthwaite there, angling it in to the right handed Madsen, who's still looking to get himself settled in here. As always, a big wicket for any opposition, Wayne Madsen, as we've discussed all earlier prodigious compiler of runs for Derbyshire over the years as he faces Douthwaite over the wicket again full this time Madsen clips it off his legs and that will run away for four nicely timed by Madsen Douthwaite again angling it in a little too full and straight on this occasion and Madsen picks up his first boundary of the day just as I praised uh Southwaite's consistency, well, got a bit of movement there, but it was towards leg stump and therefore made the shot perfectly safe for Madsen to pick up his first four. And the shot of the crowd fielding that ball shows that uh, everyone really is well wrapped up today. It, it is very much early April temperatures, isn't it? Yeah, and that last ball, very similar to the previous one, angling it in middle and leg, and Madsen had the measure of it on this occasion. Again, a similar length from Douthwaite. On the stumps once more. Madsen defending solidly this time. Yeah, 237 looks a little bit inadequate. The deficit down to 150 now. The poor forecast for Monday. You wonder whether this game will rattle through in three days or not, though. As Douthwaite runs in to Madsen, another full ball, which Madsen drives for no run. The ball fielded by Mir Hamza at mid on. And that ends the 33rd over with Derbyshire 87 for two. Harry Kane on 18, Wayne Madsen on six. So, Lloyd. 60 on Derbyshire Championship debut. Crane 1 for 13 on Glamorgan competitive debut. Having uh, 
Had a, a brief wheel against the students. Picked up a, a few cheap wickets here in that uh, pre-season friendly. It was basically down to two days play. The Glamorgan almost uh, won it within that time. And uh, Crane just throwing a practice ball to mid on and continuing to bowl to Harry Kame who's forward defending Kame has now faced 87 deliveries for his 18 runs but uh, no real pressure on on the run rate suspect it's going to be a lowish scoring game as he tosses that one up Crane and Kame comes forward and defends on the offside. He has got a uh, bit of protection in terms of his field placing, Mason Crane. He's got a man on the cover boundary in front of the empty grandstand and a man at deep square on the ropes as well as uh, Kame pushes forward and is beaten by that one through to Chris Cook. And you get the feeling that Mason Crane is enjoying himself while well, just bowling a red ball in county cricket is probably enough to be uh, a step forward for Mason Crane but he's bowling very tidily at the moment as he uh, sees Kame knock one into a gap on the leg side and uh, it's such a large gap that keeper Chris Cook has to retreat towards the square leg empire and they go through for uh, a single Mason Mason Crane, a friend of uh, an Iron Donald from uh, Hampshire days, so that might be an interesting uh, battle as well. Absolutely, and you mentioned the, the run rate, and an Iron Donald is one who will naturally look to mm. up that very aggressive play when he gets going. But the third ball of Crane's over so far turned sharply, some encouragement for him there. So he bowls to Madsen, hits him on the pads, he tries to work on the leg side a shout of excitement rather than a serious appeal yeah the replays show that that pitched outside leg and no chance of LBW there even if it had turned enough to hit the stumps Crane bowls flights it and Madsen drives furiously towards mid off Carlson fields and throws at the stumps it's a good stop, really, by Carlson flinging himself to his uh, left. But uh, there was just enough time for them to go through for the single. 89 for two, then Derbyshire, finding it uh, heavy weather after the departure of David Lloyd for a brisk 60. And we have 34 overs bowled. So what have they got through? This morning, 18 overs. Hmm, it's not as fast as I thought it would be with the spinner bowling. I got that right, 16 overnight, 34 on the board now. Yeah, 18 bowled so far today. Dowthwaite will continue. He'll be bowling a fifth over from the Cathedral Road end. Right arm over to Madsen, who punches that ball on the offside at back of a length. Well stopped. No run. As you can hear what most of the fielders have to say, <laughs> with a thinner crowd in today than yesterday. There's Douthwaite bowls on a length, and Madsen chops that to point for no run. Uh, Warwickshire collapsing, five hundred and eighty-three for three. <laughs> Ed Barnard, who must have had his pads on for uh, several hours, has gone for one. Second wicket for Callum Parkinson, who has two for hundred and seventy-seven. Oh dear. As Douthwaite runs in now to Madsen. Who defends solidly again? Alex Davis went for 256, but uh, Will Rhodes is still there with a century to his name. Yeah, that bowling card makes quite harsh reading for Durham. 
Four of them with the dreaded sidecar. Here's Douthwaite running in from the Cathedral Road end. Falls on a length and Madsen rather makes a hash of that. But no harm done. No run. Yes, he seemed to uh, chop that very hard into his pad or his leg there. Ryan Madsen has uh, it did jag back and he's done well to play that actually. Chopped it down onto his pads because otherwise it would probably have clipped the uh, the top of off stump. Yeah, as you say, Nick, the movement off the pitch there from Douthwaite, who's been angling it in to Madsen consistently as he runs in once more. Fuller delivery, which Madsen drives and Douthwaite fields off his own bowling. Been quite a testing spell this so far from, from Douthwaite. He's uh, in managed to get a few plays and misses from Madsen, a couple of false shots. Yes, it's uh, very much a game almost back in the balance. Derbyshire w with the advantage, but one more wicket could put it back to even, maybe. As Douthwaite bowls, strays onto the leg side this time, and Madsen plays it backward of square for a single. And that's the end of the 35th over with Derbyshire 90 for two. Not for the first time this season at the end of that over, we saw Glamorgan posting a deepish leg slip come leg gully. Seems to be a tactic they have uh, switched to on these unresponsive with the unresponsive ball not offering too much the, the kookaburra. It's still moving a bit off the pitch for Douthwaite but uh, offering some turn for Crane but there's no uh, no huge life in this pitch in terms of uh, pace and bounce at the moment and there certainly wasn't much life in terms of anything at Lords as uh, we saw just 15 wickets taken over the, the four days and 1,300 odd runs scored. Crane may well continue towards lunch at this rate. He's uh, into his rhythm. See if Madsen makes any attempt to force the pace. As uh, that's on leg stump and knocked away comfortably by Madsen. It's a player up on the boundary at uh, wide, long off. That's, ooh, naughty. Hasn't got a bib on. He's uh, maybe waiting to come back on. Whoever it is in the far distance, as uh, Madsen knocks one away again on the leg side. And as in the previous over, there's a very comfortable single down towards the umpire this time. Mia Hamza wandering around to do the fielding from uh, fine leg. And then chugging over to the offside to a backward point position. Crane is in again to Kame, who uh, chops down on that one late. Madsen wanted a single, but there wasn't one there as it was rolling towards Hamza in that backward point position. Morgan have uh, Colin Ingram as uh, their only slip. Sam Northeast is in fairly close on the drive on the offside in terms of catching players. And that one's worked away on the offside by Kame, but straight to Gorvin, who is the other cover fielder. Yeah, Hamza will be glad that Lloyd didn't punish him too severely for dropping him last night off the bowling of Kieran Carlson. Custom 30 odd as Kame is forward, defending. Very stoically out on the uh, the offside. Yeah, chances have been hard to come by for Glamorgan. The wicket today of David Lloyd, rather an act of Lloyd's own doing, playing across the line to a full ball from Crane. It was another one, a bit of flight, and again, came is forward, defending. So just a, a single off a tight over from Mason Crane. Derbyshire are 91 for two and the run rate dropping 
since Lloyd's departure. It's now 2.53 runs per over. So Derbyshire having to work hard for their runs, but uh, you suspect that uh, totals rather than run rate are uh, particularly important today. And it looks like Douthwaite will bowl a sixth consecutive over of his spell. He'll be facing Madsen again. A decent little battle between bat and ball developing between these two. And some changes to the field. We've seen Douthwaite angling the ball in towards Madsen, extracting some movement off the seam and pitch and he's got a few more fielders on the leg side as a result. Sam Northeast in in catching position at short mid on as Douthwaite is in. A full delivery. Well Madsen drives but for no run as Douthwaite fields off his own bowling. You can almost hear the ball getting soft going onto the bat, can't you? It's not a firm crack anymore, it's a thud. Indeed, yes. Yeah, that Kookaburra ball ageing with every delivery as Kieran Carson goes to work on it, trying to get some shine on this ball to help Douthwaite out in any way he can as Douthwaite begins his run-up, bounds in to Madsen, who plays and misses outside off. That's a fine delivery from Douthwaite, where he put his back into that one. Grant Bradburn, the uh, Glamorgan coach, was very positive about the experiment of the uh, the Kookaburra, saying it'll improve bowlers and make them work harder for wickets and develop more pace, more uh, swing maybe, rather than relying on uh, UK county pitches to do that work for them. As Douthwaite continues to Madsen, pitches it up and this time Madsen connects well. That ball's racing through covers but uh, it looks like it'll be cut off by Kieran Carlson and Madsen will go through for three runs there he moves on to 12 Derbyshire 94 for two now trailing Glamorgan by 143 interesting to uh, hear whether the Kookaburra is actually behaving the same way as it does on those uh, places in the southern hemisphere where it's used more routinely and uh, used for test matches which is uh, part of the justification for this as Douthwaite continues this time to Kane who defends onto the leg side yeah the difference being that the pitches and the weather are so different mm. aren't they in Australia in Australia certainly probably uh, more similarities to uh, to New Zealand As you say, yeah, perhaps there will be some long-term benefits for younger bowlers coming through who have to work slightly harder for their wickets, particularly at this early stage of the season. As Douthwaite bustles in once more. Balls onto the leg side where Kame works it down. Backward of square for a single. Takes his tally to 20. Certainly having, haven't been any uh, benefits in, in terms of entertainment on the county scene so far from the, the Kookaburra ball. Glamorgan played two home matches with it last season, which were uh, not high on excitement, although, uh, of course, the pitch here flattening out in previous last year anyway on day three and four, and to a high degree in previous seasons, it hasn't helped. As Douthwaite runs in for his final ball of the over to Madsen, who drives nicely through the covers, and that will be four runs for Madsen and Derbyshire. Madsen moving on to 16 at the end of the 37th over. Derbyshire at 99 for two. I suspect that might be uh, the end of Dan Douthwaite then, having been uh, taken for a three and a four in that uh, last over. Dave Fletcher, BBC Radio Derby, will rejoin the commentary team as we shuffle round slightly here at Sapphire Gardens. Major reshuffle there. <laughs> Seamless though. <laughs> We've almost perfected it. 
It's a tribe on the uh, field, as well as uh, Andy Gorvin, the young uh, batter from Jersey, who's uh, in his first season on the staff. Yeah. Dropping like flies out there. It was a nice shot from Madsen, the final ball of that over, that last over. Dab's disappeared, I think he's next on to field if uh, anyone else goes down. <laughs> Well, out of the three of us. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Mason Crane begins a new over from the River Taff end. First ball is defended by Harry Kame into the on side. That's uh, Andy Gorvin in the 11 shirt. I didn't hear an announcement for Andy Gorvin. Uh, he's been on since the start yes. instead of McElroy. But it, it, it wasn't announced, was it? Which is yeah, I th from. think he might have been. Oh, OK, that one's... I, I lost interest in the announcement halfway through. That one is clipped into the leg side by... Harry came and he picks up another single. That was obviously in the uh, 17th minute of the pre-match uh, <laughs> announcement today. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I didn't. I didn't concentrate fully for the entirety of it. Let's just put it that way. It's probably the most diplomatic way of putting it. Here is Crane again. Bowls to Madsen who. Ristily flicks the ball into the leg side. Harry came sets off for a quick single. It's not there. Gorvin picks up and came is quite correctly sent back by Wayne Madsen uh, I think a, a run out at this stage would be uh, would be rather foolish <laughs> at any <laughs> stage in all honesty as uh, Madsen waits for this next delivery rather reaches for it and cuts it out forward a square into the offside for a single he moves to that oh, was Harry Kane no it was, it was Wayne Madsen he moves on to uh, 17 101 for two. Derbyshire uh, Century coming in the 38th over, 37.2. Seven hours slower than Glamorgan had been. As this next delivery from Crane is a quicker one and it came and deals with it quite nicely, just guides it out towards the cover boundary for another single. He moves to 22, 102 for two. I completely missed the uh, century, such as it was. <laughs> but I know it was cl I know it was slower. Here is Crane again. In balls to Madsen, who uh, I'm not sure what kind of shot that was. The ball ends up at mid off. He went back, looked like he was about to cut it, and played it a lot straighter than uh, perhaps he was anticipating. It was uh, straight to Kieran Carlson and fielded nicely. More comfortably at the end of the over 102 for two. Who's going to bowl now? James Harris, by the limit. Yes, looks like it. Dowthwaite starting to stray slightly in his uh, sixth over, so it is. He's going off. Who's come back on? Is it? Oh dear. It'll presumably be Tribe again, will it? Oh, no, Kieran Carlson has come back. Uh, Billy Root has come back on, so he must have gone off temporarily. <laughs> anyway, Dalthwaite's making his way very uh, reasonably slowly towards the steps at the bottom of the pavilion. It must be awful. You walk all that way because it's quite a long way even to the bottom of the steps. Then you've got the steps. Yes. Nobody needs that. To be honest, I think if I player needing to change between bowling and just general fielding boots. I might actually uh, stick my spare yeah. pair on the boundary on a day like this when just it's not about, raining. Just about enough space. As Harris is in to bowl down leg side and came makes no contact. 102 for two Derbyshire in reply to Glamorgan's 237 all out. Getting to a stage where Morgan could uh, be badly in need of a, a wicket, particularly uh, Madsen. Won't be too worried about Kame dropping anchor. He's on 22 still, as uh, he will add one to that, as there's a half stop by Gorvin in front of the umpire. And they're through for a single. Here is. Straying towards uh, a leg stump. 
was an awkward one for Gorbin. That was he's actually feeling right on the wicket ends there, and I imagine that the bounce isn't necessarily true. So he got a hand to it, did well. Still uh, smoother than the outfields that uh, many of us play no, on. No, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison to Wayne Madsen. Drives flashing through the offside. Has timed that well enough to get the boundary, I think. Uh, maybe not quite off the middle of the Madsen bat, but to be fair, it's, uh, it's a long boundary and it's just trickled over it. And it is four more runs to the Derbyshire. Former captain, Wayne Madsen, with... Harris not quite finding his radar in his first three deliveries. It made that horrible noise you described. Hmm. <laughs> the thud out to the extra cover boundary. Uh, I wish I could miss hit it that far, that's oh, all I'm yeah, saying. No, absolutely. As, uh, I've never mastered the cover drive and probably never will. Madsen moves up to 21. 107 for two as Harris bowls again, this time Manson on the defensive to a better ball and uh, fielded at cover. Wait till the ball gets under your nose. <laughs> 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 and I never really understood batting. From a practical point of view, certainly. Uh, it's hard work. Mm. It's even harder work when you reach my age. As uh, Harris bowls and Madsen defends correctly, everything behind it and pushing it back past the bowlers, Carlson at mid off. So Madsen doing his best to uh, make up for the entertainment that was offered by uh, David Lloyd in, in his rapid 60. Madsen so far. 21 off 35 deliveries as that one is uh, defended by Madsen and the over 107 for two with 25 minutes to uh, go till the luncheon interval yeah, Derbyshire if they get there without any further loss I'm sure they'll be delighted so what, but they started the day on 46 for one, so 61 runs so far today. In the first session yesterday, which was a short session, of course, half an hour shorter. Morgan got to 60 for two. So uh, about on a par, really. Just over an hour and a half played today. Sausage and mash was delivered yesterday. Mm. It, it, I think they, they peaked slightly too early. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mason Crane. He's now got a silly mid-off as that ball is left alone outside the off stump by Harry Kane. That, that is not a position I'd want to field in front of the bat. On the offside. Oh dear, he's in the firing line. There is our Billy. He's probably thoroughly enjoying being involved as Crane bowls. Not when he's guided out into the offside by Harry Ken. They hesitated momentarily, but eventually went through for the run as uh, Sam Northeast put in the tumbling stop in the covers. 108 for two. Yeah, there aren't too many youngsters in this Glamorgan side to stick under the lid and. Uh Told to get in there, sunshine. At least when when Madsen's batting, he isn't there. As Crane bowls to Madsen, dabs it square on the offside, and there's no run. But it reached now at uh, short backward square leg, shortish backward square leg. Zain Al Hassan is the youngest member of the side at 23. Kieran Carlson 25. Crane in and bowls that's swept by Madsen. He does like a sweep. Uh, Root dives over the top of it. It was never going to get there. And the youngest member of the fielding side, Al Hassan, does the fielding. Madsen goes through for another single. Moves to 22, 109 for two. Dabish is still trailed by 128. Yeah, nearly halfway to the Glamorgan total with just two wickets down. Guess Donald Dahl Thompson to come. 
Crane bowls to Kane. Pushed back with a square on the offside. It's fielded by Mir Hamza. And there is no run on this occasion. Pretty uniformly grey above, but it's bright enough. Oh, I'm glad I'm inside, not outside. As Kane turns this next ball into the onside. Where it's fielded by the substitute fielder Andy Gorvin. It's the end of the Mason Crane over. Two runs from it. Harry Kane has 24. Wayne Madsen has 22. And Derbyshire are 109 for two with 20 minutes of the session left. Yep, Crane continuing to, uh, to ask questions, but... Uh not inconvenience the, the batters hugely regularly. Glamorgan really did get a, a tangle against Thompson, weren't really sure where they were going. And the back half of the innings falling away badly. James Harris, who has uh, won for 13 in 11 overs, is into starting a new one to Madsen, who Punches off the back foot into the offside. Billy Root fails at cover, albeit with uh, those very bulky shin pads on. So that's uh, not the best in terms of scampering around. If he's wearing the correct sweater, there is Jamie McElroy on the uh, foot uh, of the stairs. I uh, didn't tell a lie. That was uh, Crane who stopped that one, doing his Billy Root impersonation. In comes the next delivery from Harris, and uh, it's played all along the ground correctly, largely defensively by Madsen to mid on. He's popping a red bib on. Uh, yes, looks, like looks, looks, looks like he won't be in action uh, quite yet. No, certainly not imminent, and no imminent return. Perhaps after luncheon. Harris. Right arm over Cathedral Road end. Bowles worked off his legs, stopped at square leg. That's where Root is, not in the covers. Gorvin is in that vicinity as well. They're uh, sandwiching the umpire effectively. Gorvin being in a leg gully, backward square leg position. Glamorgan looking to frustrate Derbyshire. Run rate back up to 2.69 as Harris bowls and Madsen gets in a right tangle there, chops it down off the inside edge, had no idea where it was going and as it uh, just uh, trickled behind him and finished up about uh, two metres away from uh, where he started as that uh, hit the inside edge and then Madsen's lower pad or boot and uh, on a bad day it might have cannoned on the wicket Harris in Madsen plays on the leg side and there's no run unless anything's over pitched or off target it looks like scoring is, is pretty tough at the moment well, there's no room on the leg side at all is it to sneak the ball through from a, a decent delivery if he bowls wide of the off stump, he might be uh, mm. susceptible to a Madsen drive. The look, of, the look of amazement on his face and is, is always impressive, though. As Harris bowls, Madsen plays slightly uncertainly on the leg side to one of that Corden Billy Root. 109 for two, it remains. Madsen 22, came 24. Lloyd LBW Crane 60 is. Uh, the only wicket to fall this morning, last night, Reese bowled by Harris without scoring. Look of amazement on for Madsen? Is he prone to uh, well, well, but that, that, the ball that um, yes. you could almost see it from here. No, I, you, you can't. I can't see his face from here without looking at the television screen. When that ball came off the inside edge and hit his boot, yes, he has a. He's very uh, expressive. How did that happen? Yeah. The, the most impressive is when he turns around and says, no, no, clearly not. If it hadn't been for you pesky kids. <laughs> uh, Emilio Gay's got a double century for North Ants, 
who are playing Glamorgan next week. Uh, Northampton's 3.95 for four against Middlesex. And Mason Crane is going to continue from the River Turf end. Blows some warmth into his right hand before delivering the ball to Harry Kame and turns it into the leg side. And there's no run. Spotted David Lloyd sitting amongst the people <laughs> down below us. To our left, the, the last group of people, you can see his knees from here and at the top of his head. Next delivery, he's uh, beaten, I think, uh, uh, Harry Kame. He did get some bat on it. It's too busy looking at David Lloyd. <laughs> and they pick up another single. 110 for two. K moves on to 25. Yeah, I see. Still a popular Hasn't man. been boo booed off or no, lynched still, as yet. Still a popular man in these parts. Crane into Madsen, who takes a step back and turns it into the leg side where Billy Root is waiting for the ball. And there's no run. After Warwickshire's mini collapse of losing two wickets in the mid 560s, they've picked it up again. 621 <laughs> for three against Durham. Oh, that's a very quiet lunch. At the Hedgebaston. Which, which might not be a bad thing as Crane is in and bowls a full delivery and it's driven Ooh. by Madsen, nicely stopped by North East, getting down one handed on a, an old playing strip or a, a practice strip as if he hadn't have got anything on that that ball might might have had the legs to get close to the rope at least as it was no run was scored and no run is scored this time as either as northeast gets down almost crawling commando like <laughs> on the floor to make sure he gets to the ball in the action and gets a uh, the encouragement from his team, which I'm sure he enjoyed. 110 for two, final ball, the 42nd over of Derbyshire's innings. is turned into the leg side by Wayne Madsen, picked up by Gorvin. And the score remains 110 for two with Madsen on 22. Came on 25, they trailed by 127. Probably a welcome break for Sam Northeast from uh, being interviewed uh, over the last <laughs> few days because uh, we interviewed him after uh, days one and two with uh, myself and uh, a couple of uh, written press guys. And I think he, he did an interview for uh, Middlesex Television as well after his ground record appeared on the uh, Kevin Howells's uh, BBC Cricket Podcast. A great accolade. Absolutely. And... Um, I think he's spoken to a, a few more magazine journalists along the way. So he's he's all talked out, I think, uh, Sam Northeast. He said at the end of day four, you don't want me to... <laughs> no, Sam, it's all right. Rest <laughs> your voice. <laughs> James Harris in to Came, who pushes it into the offside, thinks about a single. Well, Ma Madsen thought for uh, quite a long time about a single, but then they decided that it wasn't there as we... Potter fairly serenely towards lunch at the moment, just about uh, Derbyshire's session, having moved from uh, 46 for one overnight to 110 for two. We've had the den entertainment from David Lloyd, 60 on Derbyshire first class debut. Harris in to bowl two came, who allows that one to go through outside off stump, and Glamorgan have now got almost three on the drive on on leg side there are two mid wickets and uh, a man crouching in in catching mode at shortish backward square so Harris may be firing them around middle and leg and hoping to induce the mistimed drive as he runs in and bowls and uh, came drives to Carlson at mid off Harry came had 11 overnight and he's now got 25 oh, steady away steady away uh, yeah <laughs> well, well yeah, talking to a man who did once uh, score an hour long duck <laughs> 
as Harris bowls, and uh, that's noodled away on the on side. No run. While the guy at the other end got a half century. Oh, well, it was worth it then, wasn't it? Uh, it, it, I was playing in a timed match, and I say in my, uh, would put in my defence that I arrived at the wicket at 26 for four, and shortly after that it was 26 for seven. Yes. Uh, so we we did manage to save a draw. No, fair, point, fair play. Is Harris in balls and uh, pushed out on the offside, and there's no run. I'm not sure it'll ever replace entertainment. But, uh, <laughs> He's sort of playing the Zainal Hassan role, isn't he? he, he yeah. 96 deliveries for his 35 yesterday. Harry Kames faced 112 now for for 25. But it was only when he tried a really aggressive shot that he got himself out by being stumped. Yeah, it's very uncharacteristic as uh, Harris is moving away from us. And bowling hit, wraps on the pads. That's close, that's out. Came's long vigil is gone. James Harris has a second wicket. He's bowled really tightly today. Two for 13. And Derbyshire, 110 for three. And Glamorgan have their first bonus point of the game. Well, it looked out from here. And we're in by no means right behind. And uh, yeah, it looks even more out on the replay. Just a little bit of in-dip, wasn't there? Yeah. Came pushing forward, not quite getting to the pitch of it and uh, James Harris enjoying himself well, I don't think uh, Mr Bainton needed to worry too much about that particular decision 110 for 3 Harris 2 for 13 off 13 yeah, no, it, was, it looked out and uh, Harry Kane will be disappointed to, to be dismissed so close to lunch just 10 minutes to go until the interval probably not as disappointed as I imagine Brooke Guest will be as he comes out to bat. It looks like Brooke Guest. We await confirmation. Uh, Selena Tanner has been in touch, uh, enjoying yesterday's and today's cricket on the live stream with uh, teenagers on their last day off school. It's the first outdoor cricket they've seen this year, and they can't wait to get back outside after an exciting indoor season. Uh, Red, it is Brooke Guest, incidentally. Red ball is their favourite format, and they, a 17-year-old boy and 13-year-old girl, were discussing whether a women's county red ball competition will ever happen. They concluded the Tier 1 changes make it a possibility, although sadly, as she says, not at Derbyshire, in five to ten years' time. Any thoughts? Most of the women cricketers that I speak to would love to play red ball cricket, uh, but at the moment, it just isn't happening. So, But yes, the more... Uh, girls and young women who start playing the game or progress through the uh, the pathways then you would have thought it would be possible uh, and I know it's disappointing uh, that Derbyshire along with Worcestershire didn't apply for tier one status I do think the counties were rather uh, asked to, to do something that perhaps should be done by other people because they were asked to uh, bid for tier one status and finance it mm. and uh, that is the issue, I think, as far as Derbyshire and Worcestershire were concerned. Only eight are going to get Tier 1 status. So the ones who who did apply, hoping against hope that they wouldn't get Tier 1 status so they didn't have to finance it, <laughs> probably the only winners. Um, Derbyshire and Worcestershire said, look, at this moment in time, financially, it's not viable for us, but it won't stop Derbyshire trying to develop uh, women cricketers, I'm sure. Mason Crane begins a new over from the River Taffet bowling to Wayne Manson, who turns this one back at a square on the leg side. And there's no run. Well, there has been a reasonable degree of women's international cricket played at Derby, hasn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got another game at Derby. Oh, dear. I think it's against Pakistan fairly soon. As Mason Crane is on his way in again, bowls to Manson. He goes back and pushes this one very gently up towards mid-off. And there's no room. Good to hear from you, Selena. Good that you have a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old who enjoy red ball cricket mm. above all other forms, which yes. is admirable. Crane in again, bowls two. Madsen, that one's in the air for a long, long, long time into the leg side, eventually fielded by Gorvin on the bounce as he moved to his left, but... Not the shot that Wayne Madsen was looking for there, as Brooke Guest does a bit of shadow batting at the non-striker's end. 
Thursday the 23rd of May is the date you're looking for, da uh, Dave, for England-Pakistan at Derby. Women? As this next delivery is uh, guided backward of square by Madsen. It's the, the, the whole idea that uh, Derby, Northampton, Leicester have all hosted women's internationals and then, of course, the test match went to Trent Bridge Mm -hmm. as Crane is in and bowls and this one is slapped away into the offside by Madsen out towards Harris who's patrolling the boundary in the covers he picks up another single moves to 23, 111 for 3 to hear the chief executive of uh, the host club say well yes, yeah, but places like Derby and Leicester were part of the journey but uh, thanks for coming <laughs> um, during the test match was slightly disappointing just a further part of cricket trying to destroy itself by forming cliques. Brooke Guest will face his first delivery now. A couple of slips in place, short leg. Mason Crane is in and bowls to him and he's beaten. The bales are whipped off. Mason Crane can't possibly have seen whether that was a legitimate stumping or not. But from his uh, appeal, you would have thought he had the perfect view. Now, did he think that the ball at the edge of the bat, which uh, which it clearly didn't, because it spun an awful long way. It was nicely taken by Cook. Crane had a big smile on his face, <laughs> but I can't imagine he could have seen whether Brooke Guest's back foot had left the crease. We can barely see it from that, but it doesn't look like it did. Yeah, most, most of the foot is upraised, but the, the toe's still on the yeah. ground, I think. It was a good appeal from Mason. It was a good Crane. appeal. It's it's a very, good appeal. very good appeal for a stumping from a bowler. <laughs> a bowler. That's what sort of made me think he might have hit it. Yeah, it did spin a long way, though. Harris is in to bowl, and uh, Madsen plays the first ball of the new over to mid-wicket, and there's no run. Probably the delivery that spun the most sharply from uh, Mason Crane. Mm, did spin a long way. It was about this time yesterday that we saw that ball turn a long way from uh, Alex Thompson in his first over when he came on to bowl, which has sort of been the narrative of the game now, hasn't it? That we're going to see lots of turn. And we're now seeing James Harris bowling with uh, no slip and three on the drive or on the catching positions on the leg side and uh, North East makes a sprawling stop in one of those mid-wicket positions. He's uh, going to have to scrub those trousers a bit, Sam yes. Northeast. Those, uh, right the new pair. those green stains are going to be, brown stains are going to be firmly embedded around the knees by now, the amount of time he's spent in the dirt. The Glamorgan captain, who put me here? Oh, I did. 111 for three. Harris balls that's clipped firmly and beyond the diving Billy Root but uh, Morgan have Andy Gorvin sweeping on the leg side boundary so uh, Wayne Manson only picks up a single moves to 24 and uh, Brooke Guest did he take two centuries in a match off Glamorgan a couple of years ago seems to uh, I believe he did yes you're right seems to spring to mind so. and uh, also got a, a 96 and the uh, Final match here last season. He had a stellar 2023. No, 22. Faces up to James Harris, who sees it driven back past him, but only as far as Carlson at mid off, no run. And did pretty well last season after a, a, a relatively slow start to the campaign, but. Uh, I think it's asking a lot to bat as high as he does. He's dropped one. Was batting at three before the arrival of David Lloyd. Hmm. So that might help a touch. As uh, Harris is in to bowl, and that's played into the covers, and Carlson moves to his left at mid-off and fails and prevents a single. We have got one ball left of the Harris over and then one over you would have thought by uh, Mason Crane will take us to lunch uh, during which time Glamorgan would then have delivered 30 overs in the morning session Harris balls and that one has uh, moved a bit 
from somewhere. Maybe reversing. It wasn't taken cleanly by Chris Cook, which rather spoilt the uh, the effect. And we watch the replay. That has gone over the top of the stumps. Over the top of middle and off. And, uh, well, Brooke Guest can uh, wonder at that. This is a good spell from James Harris. Mm, it is. Two for 14, off 14. The ball has passed what everybody suggests is its usefulness. Mm. And he started to do things with it, which is a good effort. Mason Crane to bowl the fine low of the morning session from the River Taff end. Just as a little practice delivery to uh, Kieran Carlson. Moves the man on the leg side boundary. Zayn al Hassan. And now he's on his way into Bolt away and Madsen with two slips in place. And Madsen's beaten outside the off stump. Punches his thigh, nods his head. <laughs> well, it's a good battle, this, isn't it, between mm. bat and ball? It certainly is. Well, it's far more interesting than when there's no battle at all. That one's turned a mile. Blimey. There's Crane in again. That one's a full toss, Ooh. and uh, Madsen gets hold of it Oof. and clubs it down the ground out towards the long on boundary for four. It can happen to a leg spinner especially, uh, and it always looks horrible when it does happen, but the ball before really turned. This one wasn't given an opportunity to turn as it was a full toss. And Wayne Madsen wasn't about, even though it is the final over before lunch, wasn't about to pass that opportunity. Dave Fletcher has an opportunity to uh, address the radio listeners of the Derbyshire area, and uh, a shorter ball by... Crane is clubbed away on the leg side by Madsen, but uh, picked up by Glamorgan sweeper Zayn Ul Hassan, who, to be fair to him, uh, always gives the impression of enjoyment in the field. And uh, a guy who's worked so hard to get a professional career, it didn't come easy. But uh, he looks as though he's enjoying himself. Didn't really. Um, Get anywhere with the bat again at Lords, one of the very few to miss out, but uh, really threw himself around with immense enthusiasm in the field. Made 20 35 in this match, second top scorer for Glamorgan as Crane floats one up temptingly, and Guest is not to be tempted on the stroke of lunch. He is happy to be there to uh, fight another day I think as uh, Crane bowls, guess stretches forward gets to the pitch of the ball all good there last ball of the session Derbyshire 117 for 3 and will remain there as uh, Guest chops it down into the ground, bounces up to slip. So an intriguing session. Derbyshire resuming overnight at 46 for one with Cabe on 11, David Lloyd on 35. Lloyd dominated the early stages, took his score on to 60 off 86 balls, nine fours, before he fell LBW to Mason Crane to give the Glamorgan man his uh, maiden wicket. And then Harry came a long vigil of 113 balls without a boundary. He was pinned palpably leg before for by James Harris, who's going at one run and over at the moment. Derbyshire 117 for three at lunch here on BBC Sport Online. Dave Fletcher, David Pritchard and myself, Nick Webb, will be back to steer you through the afternoon's entertainment from 1.40. Some lunchtime scores from the other games taking place around the country in the quite talented county championship. We'll start again at the Utility Bowl. The game between Hampshire and Lancashire. Hampshire 
dismissed shortly for four intervals of 367 pounds at lunch. Lancashire in reply 12 without loss. It's lunchtime as well at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire have moved on to 662 for three. That's against Durham. Lunch as well at Northampton, where Northamptonshire are 425 for four. That's against Middlesex. It's lunchtime at Chelmsford, with Essex having declared on 530 for seven. In reply at the interval, Kent are 29 for one. It's lunch at Bristol, where Yorkshire were dismissed yesterday by Gloucestershire for 326 in your five Gloucestershire are 88 for three. It's not quite lunch though at Grace Road where in the final over before the interval Sussex are 98 for one. That's in reply to Leicestershire's first innings total of 338. It's also the final over before the interval at Trent Bridge where Nottinghamshire are 398 for nine, that's against Worcestershire. And at the Oval, it's lunch there with Surrey, 155 without loss. That's after yesterday, they dismissed Somerset for 285. The official Glamorgan website, www.glamorgancricket.com, contains details of how to purchase tickets for all forthcoming games here at Sapphire Gardens this summer. That includes the international matches here on the 28th of May when England meet Pakistan, as well as the game on the 13th of September when England play Australia. Also on the official Glamorgan website are details of the various match day hospitality packages available for all home games here at Sapphire Gardens. Including those in the T20 class as well as the 100. If you're seeking a copy of the 2024 Glamorgan yearbook, they're available for purchase. You can obtain one either from the Glamorgan Club shop or from reception. Reception on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. And that's where you can also obtain a score sheet for this match completely free of charge. Also available from reception are copies of Chris Cook's testimonial brochure. They're available for a minimum donation of five pounds. The Glamorgan Club shop run by Missouri Sports is open today. It's situated opposite gate two. So, as always, a wide range of cricket equipment and other items including replica Glamorgan kit as well as a range of recently published cricket books. Finally, as far as refreshments are concerned, a full range of food and drink can be purchased in the Pyramid Lounge, which is situated on the ground floor of the Thatcher's Pavilion. Don't forget, this is a new initiative, and that the Lewis Lounge on the top floor of the National Cricket Centre is just a viewing area for members only. You can also purchase snacks from the vending machines situated at the rear of the indoor school.
to resume the Derbyshire Shop first innings after lunch. Brooke Guest and Wayne Matson. Yes, welcome back to Sophia Gardens where Derbyshire are resuming their first innings against Glamorgan on 117 for three, trailing by 120 runs. I'm <coughs> David Pritchard and I'm joined by Dave Fletcher. We're live on the BBC Sport website as well as the Glamorgan and Derbyshire streams. And to resume the bowling for Glamorgan at the Cathedral Road end, Mia Hamza. Well, there we go, you don't need to say any more. Indeed, yeah, welcome back, Dave. Uh, <laughs> kind of finely poised, isn't it? Derby Sheets yeah. also in a strongest position on the balance of it, but that was a quite an even morning session, wasn't it? Put two onto the scoreboard, two wickets on the scoreboard, and all of a sudden it's a completely different uh, game, isn't it? Yeah, the, these two are important. Now, Donald coming in next, and as Dahl, who we know is a uh, very impressive all rounder. Alex Thompson's got first class half centuries. Zach Chappell's got one. <laughs> Blair, uh, Blair, yeah. Well, but he's, he, Zach Chappell's a sort of hit and miss kind of upper late order kind of batsman. As Mir Hamza starts his new spell from the Cathedral Road end with Wayne Madsen defending. If there is such a thing as upper late order, but um, he's certainly better than Sam Connors, who can hold a bat, but. Well, he's got three shots, I think, now. And uh, we haven't seen Blair Tickner, obviously, but he did get his high score in first-class cricket in the recent New Zealand summer, but I don't think it was 50. So uh, he's coming off that season in fairly decent form. As Hamza, left arm seam around the wicket to the right-handed Madsen. It's a full ball, which Madsen drives to Dan Douthwaite at mid-on for no run. But you're right. I mean, it, it, it was it was tough going, wasn't it? Uh, David Lloyd, 60 off 86, was has been the only one, only one of the Derbyshire batsmen who's looked particularly fluent. Even Wayne Madsen hasn't looked massively fluent yet. He's got four boundaries, but 29 off 60 is uh, probably below his usual strike rate. So I don't think it's easy out there to bat, which is no bad thing. As Hamza charges in. Ball's on a length, and Madsen comes down a, a fair distance to meet that ball for no run. Yes, the uh, the walking defensive shot. <laughs> Always good. Yeah, first sign of aggression maybe from Madsen, albeit with a defensive stroke at the end. He, his natural instinct is to be more aggressive than not. As he faces up to Pakistan's Hamza around the wicket and gasps from the bowler around the field as that one seemed to shape in something of a leading edge from Madsen, but it went safe. Well, that's two, isn't it? That the, he's, he's looked to play straight and they've gone out into the leg side, which suggests that he is just swinging the ball in to Wayne Madsen. So he's got to be careful. I mean, he is... Vastly experienced. As Hamza comes in once more, another full delivery which Madsen drives. It looked to get half a hand on it from a fielder, so the ball is slowing down as it reaches the boundary. Kieran Carlson does the fielding, and Madsen comes through for three runs, taking his tally to. 32 and Derbyshire move on to 120 for three with one ball left in this over. It was a nice shot, but again, it not timed perfectly, was it? Was it, uh, it was never going to get to the boundary, which is unusual for Madsen again. Yeah, I wonder if it's still the effect of the rain we've had yeah. in recent days. The outfield hasn't been at its quickest this week as Hamza's in to guest who allows that to drift harmlessly past his off stump and that's the end of the over 47 overs bowled in Derbyshire's first innings and they're 120 for three, trailed Glamorgan by 117 but again the, the outfield not being as fast as it, it, it possibly can be is no bad thing either, it gives everybody a chance doesn't it 
This is, this is far more interesting. It was a fascinating morning session and far more interesting than 600 play 600. So. Well, there's a surprise. Mason Crane's <laughs> going to continue. I think Mason Crane's going to have a very sore shoulder by uh, half past six this evening if it goes that long with Glamorgan out in the field. Yeah, we saw Alex Thompson being worked into the ground yesterday for Derbyshire to great effect with career best figures. But um, he's bowled a fair bit in the county championship, hasn't he? Whereas Mason Crane, he won't be used to this kind of work. No, quite. Well, Alex Thompson was Derbyshire's leading wicket taker in the county championship last season. Finished really strongly. Here's Mason Crane then, who, as uh, Dav said, hasn't uh, played much cricket. The first one spins away from Wayne Martin. He allows it to go through to Chris Cook. You just wonder, with him being a wrist spinner, I mean, it must hurt after a while because it's not a natural thing to do, really. As he bowls, and Madsen sweeps, does enjoy a sweep, but he's going to get four runs out to the mid wicket boundary as it pops off the rope and into the hands of the 12th man. First boundary of the afternoon session. If anybody is going to sweep a ball, Wayne Madsen will sweep a ball. He is a uh, conventional and reverse sweeper of some renown as he waits now and sweeps again this one's in front of square two and there's a bit of a chase around the boundary for the fielder out at mid wicket here is Zain Al Hassan they get back for a couple of runs this time didn't quite time it as well as the first one six off the last two balls and if the word in the Derbyshire changing room has been don't let Mason Crane settle into a spell He's bowled 13 overs this morning. Picked up one wicket. This one is uh, cut away off the back foot in front of square out towards Billy Root, who affects a tumbling stop. He got one for uh, 28 in his first 13 overs. So economical as well as uh, picking up that wicket. That's a slightly flatter delivery that Madsen just taps into the leg side. Picked up by, was it Asa Tribe? Yes. yes. Asa Tribe. Yes. That's a name with which I'm familiar. It sounds like a bingo call, doesn't it? Fifth, Asa Tribe, 55. <laughs> As Wayne Madsen goes up to the back foot and punches this one out into the offside. And uh, there is no. 88, Dan Dartwaite, absolutely. But perhaps that's how numbers should be. Number 10, Wayne Madsen. Um, 126 for three, <laughs> trailing by 111. And before uh, this becomes even more ridiculous than it already was. Is that why Dan Douthwick wears 88, Nick? Oh, mm, might be. <laughs> it's a factor, I think. It sounded nice. <laughs> Lesser spotted. That's a very Bingo fan in his... Mid twenties. It's a very large expanse on Dan Douthwaite's back to fill, so eighty eight fills it quite nicely, doesn't it? He's a he's a big man. He's got shoulders broad enough to fill that shirt as Hamza continues from the Cathedral Road end with a excellent ball which just leaves Guest outside the off stump, but Guest played within the line. As we see the replay there, yeah, angled in, no movement away. Big game at Newport County this afternoon. <coughs> Not a lot resting on it, I don't think. But uh, Could have been different, yeah, had Newport not lost five games in a row. They could have been in the hunt for the League Two playoff spot. Yeah, well, doesn't usually do your chances go any good. As Hamza bowls and guest defends. Yeah, Wrexham are the only club of the four Welsh clubs in the EFL with anything to play for now for the rest of this season Swansea and Cardiff mid-table kind of anonymity in the championship Newport likewise in League 2 but yeah Rex and going for back-to-back -back promotions well, the tram here had, had picked up more than one point from the last 12 on offer and that point coming from a one old draw with Colchester who are battling for their lives they might have been in with a half a shout but not to be as Hamza continues Bullish ball, which guess tries to drive through the covers, but missed times, and I'll go for no run. 
Tramway, of course, managed by the former Carnarvon town manager back in their glory days, uh, Nigel Adkins. He's good for a post-match quote, isn't he? Uh, he's, he's, he's interesting. Yeah, what did he say the other week that went viral? Is it some kind of poetry or...? Well, it was something that was said by Eleanor Roosevelt, which was subsequently used by the Kung Fu Panda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it'll come to me. Hamza to guest, who leaves that one outside the off stump. The past is history. The future's a mystery. Today is the present, which is why it's a gift. He came out with. I think that was pre-match. Um, Goodness. Yeah. So... Uh, He's, he's unmitigatingly positive, Nigel Adkins. And he was in goal for Tramway when I started watching them, or just after I started watching them, really. But he is mad. As a lot of goalkeepers are, well, supposedly. He Here's Hamza. Excuse me. There's Hamza with the ball. I'm losing my voice. Oh, no. Early in the day. That's not um, good. <laughs> Brooke Guest nudging the ball to mid-wicket for no run. Yeah, so excuse me if I'm distracted this afternoon. Not necessarily by a tram here, but by my winter employ employment. Burt and Al being away at Stevenage. Cheltenham and Port Vale playing as well, so could be pivotal. Hamza is in. Bowls down the leg side and just tries to play at it. Doesn't do so. Chris Cook collects and that's the end of the 49th over. Derbyshire, 126 for three, trailing by 111 runs. And there is a, uh, a huge game at the top of League One. And I'm not talking about Derby's game against uh, Leighton Orient. I'm talking about Portsmouth at Bolton Wanderers. Apologies, I know some people don't like us talking about football, but only another week or two. That one has huge repercussions, not only for uh, the promotion race, but for my home personal life. As there's a full toss by Mason Crane, first ball of a new over, Wayne Madsen drives it into the offside, straight to Billy Root at extra cover. Yeah, it could have dovetailed so nicely for you, Tramia, playing at Newport and you being here in Cardiff, if only it was an evening game. Or railing. This is the next <laughs> delivery is uh, one that keeps a little bit low when Madsen turns it into the leg side. It's uh, Al Hassan who does the fielding, and Madsen picks up another single, moves on to 39. I tend not to pay for an awful lot of sports, I and mean, people often say to me, how much is it to get? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I know I've been to Tramir a few times this season, but I wouldn't know anywhere else. I think it's a lot more expensive than I remember. 127 for three, Crane bowls to guest who is still to get off the mark. That was the 15th delivery he's faced as he plays it back to the bowler. I'm sure he'd like to get off the mark sooner rather than later. As he waits near the wicketkeeper batsman. And that one is pushed out square on the offside. Crane was interested in something. And straight to the fielder at point. Yes, yeah, when you're into this point, double figures, balls faced, still to get off score. You suspect the fielders will be reminding him of that fact. Oh, yes. This is the 17th ball he's faced. As Crane bowls to him and he defends it out into the offside. He can be destructive, but he generally isn't. That's, that's the impression that I've got. I mean, it might be entirely wrong, but I just feel like he's a very solid batter. There's others around him who might be. Well, there we go. He's gone for the big sweep, and the catch is taken at second slip. They've all gone up northeast with the ball in his hands, and umpire Bailey is entirely unmoved. And as a result, it means that Brooke Guest has survived. Let's have a look at the replay. I'm not sure it. Well, it didn't hit the bat, and uh, possibly pitched outside leg stump. But other than that, it was a terrific effort from the fielders and. Uh, the bowler, Rob Bailey, just shaking his head there and having a chat with Mason Crane. Everybody seems happy. 
And the end of the over, 120. Oh, not quite as happy. Mason Crane doesn't look happy, actually. 127 for three. He's got that quizzical look on his face, hasn't he, Mason Crane? As if to say, I've no idea why that's not out. But for me, it was pitching outside leg. It, would, it may have gone on to hit the stumps, but of course you can't be out. It didn't appear to be anywhere near the bat. I think the, the way the ball spat up after hitting the pad, I assume Crane thought there was a, a, an edge involved because the appeal was like one of the old Stuart Broad celeb appeals, yeah, wasn't it? They yeah, were... I was convinced. Here's Hamza to Madsen. Left arm around the wicket. Madsen works that onto the leg side for a single. Yeah, it was a funny appeal because the uh, a few of the fielders seemed to be halfway through their celebration, never mind their appeal as well. But well, Sam Northeast was convinced. He, he took the catch. It was a fairly straightforward catch. He sort of looped up into his hands. They might show us it again. They might not. <laughs> we, might be past, we might be past the moment when they can show us it again. Here's Hamza running in from the Cathedral Road end on a length leg stump and the ball just squirts away from Guest's inside edge but safely along the ground but while Mason Crane is bowling anything could happen at any moment and that has to be a good thing proper test for the batters he's turning the ball it's not easy. And then there's Mir Hamza, who's bowling very quickly. And still doing a little bit. And here he is once more, the Pakistan seamer. Bowling on a good length and guest is forward defending. When I say very quickly, he's not bowling quite as quickly as he has. He's down to 79 point something, according to the, uh, the speed gun which I didn't entirely believe in the first inning, so I'm, I'm willing to disbelieve it now. I think it would be too quick for me. I think Mason Crane would probably be too quick for me. Likewise. Tell you bowls quickly. Jack Morley, blimey. Here's Hamza to guess who is finally off the mark with a shot off his legs through the square leg, and he'll come back for a second. So patient innings from Guest so far, but he is off the mark. He's on two. Madsen's on 40. And Derbyshire move on to 130 for three. That innings, first innings deficit, inching ever smaller. It's just 107 behind Glamorgan now. So Mason, uh, not Mason Crane. Um, Jack Morley, bowl in one of the warm-up games and he absolutely gets it through for a left arm spinner Hamza balls again but Guest drives for no run of course he's not playing in this game so it's irrelevant but uh, looking forward to seeing him at some point in uh, competitive action two of the uh, upper lower order batsmen are going for a net Zach Chapel and Sam Connors, some lower lower order than others. As Hamza starts on another long run up of his and bowls just back of a length and guess nudges it onto the leg side to end the fifty first over with Derbyshire one hundred and thirty for three. I think it is Stephen who's listening in back at Derbyshire who said, no, it was too quick for me. That is true, actually. He was bowling at me with a, with a tennis ball in the nets the, 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 on the morning of the first game of the season last week. And that was too quick for me. That was Nairon Donald. Although in my defence, I was through a couple of shots too early, so he must have been a bit slow on occasion. I didn't have the first idea what I was doing. <laughs> which could be said of many of the things that I do. Mason Crane to continue from the uh, River Taff and bowls to Wayne Madsen, who uh, guides this into the offside, straight to Billy Root in the covers. And there is no room. The uh, Glamorgan 12th man has finally seen sense and he's brought himself a chair to the rope because it's a long way from the actual uh, picket fence in front of the 
Players Pavilion. That one is turned into the lakeside by Manson. So at the moment a wicket falls, he can dash on with the drinks, because you always need a drink when you've picked up a wicket in any form of cricket these days. It was a nicer day to be sat in a chair like that yesterday, wasn't it? Yes, I think it might be a bit chilly there from what David Griffin was saying, as this next ball is uh, carved into the offside by Wayne Madsen, again straight to Billy Root. And there's no run halfway through the Mason Crane over. His 16th, 1 for 35, his figures at the moment. 130 for 3, Derbyshire. And that's a sweep from Madsen. And this time it goes straight to Asa Tribe, who is on the field as a 12th man, slash 13th man. I can't see Andy Corbin, but he might be out there. As Crane balls, and that one is played by Madsen against Tribe, and again there's no run. A good accurate over from Crane hasn't been a loose delivery. Madsen always keen to get on the end of a loose delivery as he bowls, and that one is. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not sure what kind of shot it is. Slapped into the offside by Madsen. Almost uh, in a crouching position, straight to Billy Root. End of the over. Uh, Derbyshire 130 for three, trailing by 107. Yeah, a couple of balls in that crane over, staying a little low. The spinners managed to turn a few today, and bowled tidily on his Glamorgan debut. Not much in the way of. Huge danger so far since restarting after lunch. Derbyshire continuing at a fairly leisurely pace as Hamza continues on the Cathedral Road end to Guest who works onto the leg side and he's caught. Out of nothing really, Hamza angles it in to Brook Guest and he flicks it. So he's got a short square leg. And he's snaffled. Glamorgan have the breakthrough. Derbyshire, 130 for four. Well, Glamorgan have posted plenty of fielders on the leg side, both this week and last week. And it's paid off. Good take by Billy Root, having to dive forward. Wouldn't quite have carried to him in front of the umpire. And uh, Glamorgan get their reward for putting the pressure on Brook Gast, really. Didn't get off the mark till his uh, 21st delivery. Just the one scoring shot. And Mir Hamza claims his first Glamorgan wicket at home, having debuted last week with uh, one at Lord's, which was less deployed, the former Derbyshire captain. It's been the story of this innings, really, hasn't it, Nick? The wickets have come fairly spread out. Glamorgan have bowled tightly with discipline throughout. They haven't offered Derbyshire much in the way of freebies so Dabjev had to work for their runs and like you said the pressure paid off their guest having to wait to get off the mark and then perhaps they're from a straight delivery from Hamza trying to manoeuvre an opening for him that perhaps just wasn't there and as you say a good take from Billy Root diving forward to take a low catch at short square leg So, here comes young Nyland Donald. The, an occasional member of the BBC Wales commentary team during the course of the summer when his uh, other county duties have uh, permitted. But this time, like David Lloyd, looking to impress against his old county. Not too many will have uh, memories of him here, to be honest, but... Uh, one or two will. James Harris, no doubt. And uh, a tall, slim figure making his way out to the middle. And Aaron Donald on championship debut for Derbyshire. Played a couple of T20 fixtures as uh, a stand-in wicketkeeper when Brook Gast was injured. Made 30 and th not out and 13 in those matches. And... Uh, He'll be facing up to Mia Hamza.
Happens there in conversation with Douthwaite at the top of his run up. Come on, we'll hope to make inroads now. Bit of a breakthrough there with Guest. Big moment in the game as Donald looks to impress against his former county as he faces Hamza around the wicket and Donald defends. Yes, Lafferty Morgan at the tail end of the 2018 season to uh, go to Hampshire. Looking for more red ball action with his move to, uh, to Derbyshire. Good to see him come in at six as well. It's kind of natural position. He had to make do with some pretty lowly batting positions when he was at Hampshire when he got the opportunity to play as he faces Hamza and the ball flies past his outside edge. Some gasps from the field as nicely bowled by Hamza. Yes, angling it in again, using this angle around the wicket to good effect. Interesting, isn't it, that Derbyshire have uh, signed the Welshman who scored big runs against them. And Aaron Donald with his 234 at Colwyn Bay back in 2016. Equal world record at the time in terms of speed. Here comes Hamza on a length and Donald defends once more. So Donald who scored 234 against Derbyshire and Lloyd who scored 313 against Derbyshire and... Uh, they're the pair who've ended up on Derby books. Yeah, very destructive batter when he's in the groove, as he demonstrated in Colwyn Bay eight years ago. As he faces Hamza once more, and again defending. Watchful start from an Aaron Donald so far. Warwickshire spoil sports, they've declared. 698 for three. They're letting Durham back in there. Another another hour or two and they'd have uh, hit a county record, beating their previous 810. Brian well, Lara had a word. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Hamza to Donald, wide of the crease and... Some appeal from some fielders. Hamza himself didn't seem convinced. There was bat in it, but presumably some of the fielders thought it was pad first as he pushed forward with both of them together and uh, did enough, I think. Oh, no, there was uh, was pad first by the look of it. Bat was just behind the pad, and that was a, a worthwhile inquiry, I think. Sam Northeast, just having a word with the umpire, he in particular seemed to think that was a strong shout. Perhaps Hamza was doing himself mm. a disservice by not appealing as strongly as his teammates because, as you say, Nick, that did look closer on second viewing. Yes, I thought initially it was bat and pad together, but he had the bat tucked slightly behind. As Mason Crane starts new over to Wayne Madsen, who pushes forward, and there's no run. Jamie McElroy, by the way, is not expected to take the field today because of a shoulder injury suffered while diving in the field last night. So Glamorgan are a seam bowler down. Crane bowls and Madsen cuts. And there's a slight misfield at point, but not enough of one to uh, make it into a single as Hamza recovers quickly there. So no McElroy expected today. And thanks to Graham Smith for pointing out the man seen with a McElroy jersey. There's Crane bowls and Madsen sweeps and he's nailed that one fairly firmly but uh, it's picked up well by Al Hassan running around the boundary at Backward Square. Keeps them down to a single Madsen to 41. Derbyshire to 131 for four. 106 runs in arrears. So the man wearing the McElroy jer jersey earlier was uh, Henry Hurl, a young keeper batter has played for England under-19s. And as Will Smale mentioned, Glamorgan have got plenty of choice for men who can wear the gloves with uh, 
Smale, Horton and Hurl all looking for opportunities. As uh, Crane bowls, Donald pushes forward, defends out on the offside and there is no run. Doesn't look as though... Oh, well, Hurl has got an official squad number of six. But uh, maybe they haven't printed too much gear with his name on as yet. Crane bowls. Donald pushes forward, is groping for that one as Cook whips off the bales. Back foot remained at home. This is a good spell from Crane as we see the replay of that one. Yeah, pitching around middle and turning a long way. Beating the edge by some distance in the end. Crane in again to bowl to Donald who drives into the offside but won't get off the mark yet because it's straight to Billy Root at cover. So Donald remains yet to score. After facing eight deliveries, there was just the single off that over to Wayne Madsen. I think Mason Crane's going to be uh, well bowling as, as long as he's able this afternoon. And as we were discussing earlier, Nick, that will be quite a test for him considering how little red ball cricket he's played in, in recent years. But a great opportunity for him as well because people often talk about bowlers needing to find their rhythm and what better way for Crane to do that than to have a sustained spell as Hamza continues from the other end. And Madsen whips the first ball off his legs and looks to come back for a second run. And he does so comfortably. So Madsen looking to get on with things. He's on 43. As Glamorgan see their lead cut by a further two runs to 104 runs. Really is a close battle. You get the feeling that maybe even a, a difference of 30-40 in runs on first innings either way would uh, go a long way. Indeed, as Hamza goes hunting for the key wicket of Madsen, who chops on, but fortunately for the Derbyshire batter, it misses his stumps and he'll scamper through for a single. That was another nasty moment for uh, Madsen, who's played one or two off the inside edge and really didn't have any idea whether, where that one was going and ended up trickling towards a, uh, a leg slip position. And uh, that one... Went across the face of his stumps, if you like. Yeah, Hamza's been very concerted with this around the wicket, angling it in, looking for a little bit of movement off the pitch as well. And he continues with the same process for Donald, who's on the back foot, playing shot onto the offset, offside for no run. Mason Crane, by the way, has bowled uh, more first-class overs this season than last. Played twice for Hampshire, bowled 12 and a half overs, one for 48. Which tells you why he was keen to uh, get a, a move on loan. Yeah, absolutely. B burst onto the scene young years ago, getting a cap for England in, in one day cricket, but his progress has rather stalled since then. So this really is a fresh start for Kane Crane as Hamza continues from the Cathedral Road end. Donald defends. Well, Donald is a uh, man who likes to get on with it, so I wonder how long his patience will last. <coughs> on Derbyshire, red ball debut. Yeah, with Madsen well set on 44 and Donald's natural attacking instincts. You can imagine the, the game is at quite a key juncture at this stage. Could go either way as Hamza comes around the wicket, wide of the crease again. Strained appeals once again as Donald, through a combination of bat and ball, keeps the latest full delivery out. <laughs> Grin on Hamza's face. He's, uh, he's one for the Amdram Society, isn't he, if he were here a bit longer? Yeah, inside edge onto his pads from Donald there. Like all good fast bowlers, Nick, yeah. Bit of theatrical. Throwing his arms up in the air. Well, we saw a bit of uh, Shaheen Shah Fridi for Welsh Fire in the, the summer in the 100 here last year, and that really were, that was quite a spectacle, whatever your, your feelings on the 100. 
Update for BBC Radio Wales coming in a moment or two. As Hamza continues around the wicket, Donald on the back foot nudges it and will get through for his first run <laughs> of the day. That ends the 55th over with Derbyshire, 135 for four. That'll be a relief for the local and Iron Donald uh, fan club. Members of his family here today. 135 for four. Donald won. Madsen 44, which keeps Donald on strike against uh, the spin of Mason Crane. On what has been a really good day's cricket. And uh, from the outside, the scorecard would uh, make little impression, little out of the ordinary maybe. But uh, a close battle between bat and ball. Batters having to work really hard for their runs. Madsen's got going now. A Donald sweeps a pill for LBW, not out. I think that hit him on the full. Certainly flighted from uh, Mason Crane. No, it did pitch. Pitched fractionally outside leg. It would have straightened to hit, I think. As Donald looked to play a sweep shot. He will be able to pull that one through the mid-wicket area for four runs, though. And uh, he'll welcome that one. And Iron Donald just pitched shorter from Mason Crane. The bad ball and over that uh, you so often get from leg spinners. And Donald was onto it quickly and despite the spin, pulled it against the spin through mid-wicket for four. You'll feel a little better with that. Moves to 539 for four. That one's outside leg stump and swept away again. This time down to Al Hassan at backward square. Single taken. 140 for four as Donald moves to six not out. And Glamorgan post a man at shortish backwards square leg for the top edge sweep which I thought they could have done with for Donald as well but they've got one there for Madsen who goes big over mid off and has just cleared Carlson who's chasing up towards the boundary it's plugged and they'll go back for a couple of runs as the throw comes in eludes Mason Crane but is backed up by Chris Cook 142 for four Madsen moves to 46 off 85 balls, five fours so far. As uh, the next one is defended away by Madsen, no run. Radio update coming. Derbyshire are 142 for four in reply to Glamorgan's 237, so just 95 runs in arrears, but it really has been a fascinating battle between bat and ball this week after the run fest of Glamorgan's opener at Middlesex. David Lloyd, the former Glamorgan captain, led the way for his new county with 60 off uh, 86 balls before he was leg before to Mason Crane. We've also seen a very tight spell or two from James Harris, who has two for 14 off 14 overs. And since lunch, Brooke Guest caught off uh, Hamza for two, bringing another former Glamorgan player in an Iron Donalds to the crease. He's now not out six. Wayne Madsen going strongly on 47, not out one, 43 for four. Returning to bowl at the Cathedral Road and Dan Douthwaite. Yes, as you'll hear then, Dan Douthwaite, 88. Nick Webb's bingo nickname for the all-rounder. <laughs> he makes a return from the Cathedral Road end as he goes through his warm-up with Kieran Carlson at mid-off. Sense a bit of a gear change in that last over from Donald and Madsen. Looking to get on the front foot and increase this Derbyshire run rate, which is just uh, a touch over two and a half runs and over at the moment. As Douthwaite runs in to Madsen, who's on the back foot and plays the ball as if it kept low, which a couple of balls have done in the last hour or so. He's not timing the ball hugely well at the moment, uh, Wayne Madsen, for a, a guy who is reasonably well set. So showing 
Once more, the, the difficulties of scoring off the older Kookaburra ball in the county championship. There's Dalfleet hops and runs in over the wicket to Madsen, who times this one better. Through to square leg, and he'll coast through for a single to bring Aneerin Donald back on strike. Yeah, Glamorgan, without the services of uh, Jamie McElroy today, and we hope that that's no more than uh, a, a bruising sort of injury for Jamie McElroy because they're already without Tim van der Hochten and Harry Podmore for their seam stable. And, of course, uh, Craig Miles was recalled and is playing for Warwickshire, or has had his feet up for Warwickshire <laughs> until the last few minutes when Warwickshire finally declared. As we wait for a fielding change from Glamorgan, Zainal Hassan is up to backward point. No third man anymore. Quite a few fielders inside what would be the ring as Douthwaite bowls and Donald nudges that to Sam Northeast in a short mid wicket position for no run. Yes, it's uh, it's useful for reference, the ring, which of course isn't there for uh, championship cricket. have to have specific numbers of fielders within 30 metres of the bat at various times in one day in T20 games. Yeah, it's so well drummed into the players. They, it, it, You look at the pitch, it's almost like the markings are there without being there. As Douthwaite comes in over the wicket and Donald drives nicely off the back foot, but it's well fielded by Asa Tribe. Has been known to lead to the odd dispute to within uh, the depths of Division 11. You haven't got four fielders in the ring. There isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> Have to make a token nod towards it. Or agree between the captains to forget about it if you haven't got them. <laughs> As Douthwaite runs in once more. Balls on a length towards the leg side, and Donald nudges it to Sam Northeast for no run. Elsewhere in Division 2, uh, Gloucestershire recovering from early troubles. And they were 28 for 3, then 115 for 3, with Bancroft and Hammond gritting it out against uh, Yorkshire, who made 326 all out at Bristol. As Douthwaite is in to Donald, who goes back and tries to swish it through the covers, but ends up just playing it into the ground for no run. So that's the end of the 57th over with Derbyshire 144 for four. As Leicester, who were uh, Derbyshire's next opponents, Leicestershire made 338 all out, but their bowlers are labouring, with Sussex going well on... Uh, 135 for one. Tom Haynes is uh, 78 not out. The Northamptonshire innings is still continuing, and so is Emilio Gay, Glamorgan's next opponent's Northampton. They start there on uh, Friday, and Emilio Gay is on 257 not out. The uh, opening bat. I'd be surprised if that weren't a career best, as... Crane bowls, well pitched up to Madsen, who drives to deepish mid-off, but doesn't risk the single. It is indeed uh, considerably better than Gay's previous best, which was 145. So it sounds like a, a good batting strip at uh, Northampton. Where Glamorgan head next. Crane bowls, worked away. Off leg stump. By Madsen, down towards deep square. Ol Hassan in off the boundary to do the fielding. Single taken. One, four, five. For four. Madsen moves to 49 not out. 91 deliveries faced. Has not really been able to accelerate much. Crane bowls, Donald forward and then leaves it to turn past his off stick. 
through to uh, Chris Cook. Sam Northeast has now joined Colin Ingram in the in the slips. Rest a fairly conventional field. Five saving the single. As Donald goes for a big sweep, he'd got a long stride forward. A yelp of frustration from uh, the bowler, Mason Crane. Might have struck Donald on the boot, that one. Couldn't quite see from uh, behind. Watching from over fine leg as Donald pushes forward to Crane. Deflects it out towards uh, Tribe at backward point. Yeah, almost going the way of David Lloyd in that previous delivery. Going across his stumps and trying to sweep, but the ball wasn't really there to be swept through the leg side. One four five for four. Crane to Donald. Shouts of catch it as it played uh, that one rather airily through point, but it was well wide of Ace of Tribe, fielded by James Harris on the boundary. So Donald takes a single. There were two singles off the over. And Derby shot 146 for four. Donald retains the strike to face up to uh, Dan Douthwaite. Yeah, the game does feel delicately poised at this stage. Madsen on 49 looks like the player that Derbyshire will try to build this innings around now. David Lloyd giving him the early impetus for that fluent 60. But if an Aaron Donald can stick around with Madsen, you suspect Derbyshire would fancy their chances of taking the game from Glamorgan as Douthwaite continues to Donald, who defends. And then on the other hand, Glamorgan will feel if they can remove either, if not both, of these batters relatively soon, and they're right back in contention. Yes, these two wouldn't have been on the staff together. Douthwaite joined in 2019 when uh, Donald had just left for Hampshire. And here comes Douthwaite, right arm over. Onto the leg side, and Donald just pushes it to mid-wicket region for no run. Just seen the four bowlers used today, actually, with uh, Crane bowling plenty of overs. Hamza and Harris, Crane and Douthwaite. With uh, no Carlson today, no Zain Ul Hassan and McElroy injured. Here comes Douthwaite and Donald defending once more. No run there. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, Nick, this has been a, a tidy spell from Douthwaite. You can tell that he's been working at this over the winter in his interview with you. He said, didn't he, that he wanted to establish himself in the four-day format, having become quite a, an established figure for Glamorgan in the white ball game. And he's doing his prospects no harm so far. It's been a very controlled and mature bowling display from the 27-year-old so far as he runs into Donald with a leg side field. And that ball strays down the leg side. They're appealing and it's given. And Nairin Donald caught down the leg side on his return to Glamorgan. Dan Douthwaite has his first wicket. Donald goes for seven. Derbyshire 146 for five. They trail Glamorgan by 91 runs. Frustrating way to go for an Aaron Donald. Good catch by Chris Cook. Taken down leg side. You could see the deflection. Douthwaite went up straight away. Donald didn't want to look at the umpire, but had to eventually. And off he goes. Half the Derbyshire side back in the pavilion. One for six for five. Yeah, feels like quite a significant breakthrough. Madsen, of course, still very well set on 49. But Morgan will feel that if they can remove Anaj Dahl, the next man in, relatively cheaply, then they can make some inroads into this batting lineup. Dan Douthwaite getting reward for what has been a very tight spell so far, conceding only 20 runs from his 7.4 overs so far. Somewhat ironically, it was one of his looser balls down the leg side that brought him his first wicket. 
Yes, I'm not sure whether his reluctance to look at the umpire is that he generally didn't think he'd hit it or that he knew that he had hit it. As uh, Anish Dal will come in at seven, the batting to come. Alex Thompson, the hero with the ball, probably at eight, followed by Blair Tickner or Zach Chappell at nine. The other one of those at ten, and Sam Connors, in all probability, bringing up the rear. But uh, if Madsen goes now, Glamorgan will fancy their chances. 91 runs the difference between the two sides. And five wickets gone. Dahl last season, average 25 for the bat. 295 runs, took 22 wickets at 32. Respectable figures for an all-rounder. Expected to chip in in both disciplines as uh, one of the Glamorgan backroom staff is making his way onto the field is it to uh, offer some uh, medical or physical uh, treatment or just take the drinks off. Just take the drinks off, I think. There we are. Glamorgan uh, taking advantage of the fall of the wicket for... Uh, Intake of liquid, which on a chilly day today won't be uh, as uh, as desperate a need as it will be later in the summer. Running on the flasks of tea, maybe. Yes. You'd do with tea or coffee out there, couldn't you, in, in a break? With uh, temperatures probably about five or six degrees cooler than yesterday. Douthwaite has two balls left in this over. Anuj Dahl facing his first ball of the day, and it's a short one, which he allows to pass him at head height. Welcome to the game, Anuj. <laughs> yes, I think uh, Douthwaite will be glad to see the back of the, uh, the Kookaburra ball because that one was dug in but really looped through about shoulder head height he got a bit of lift out of it but uh, with no great venom three in a line catching on the leg side as Douthwaite runs in to Dahl who tickles that down the leg side and as Dahl is off the mark he'll hurry back for a second then he'll make it comfortably so Dahl off the mark with his second ball of the day he's on two Wayne Madsen Closing in on his half century, he's on 49. And Derbyshire, 148 for five, trailing by 89 runs. Yes, yeah, Dahl had to hurry back for that uh, second run as James Harris made his way around the fine leg boundary. Got a reasonably accurate throw in, but uh, Dahl was safely home. Empire. Bailey taking the sweater of Mason Crane. Thankfully, Glamorgan are one of the sides, and most of them do, who have numbers on the back of their sweaters as well as uh, their shirts, unlike Middlesex. As uh, Crane starts the new over, back on his stumps goes Madsen on 49 and remains on 49 as he pushes that one to Tribe at mid-wicket. And there's no run. Sure, good experience for young Asa Tribe, 20-year-old batter from Jersey. Being out in the middle. As uh, Madsen pushes that one to cover and uh, still has to wait for his half-century as Billy Root does the fielding. It's a relatively defensive field now for uh, Crane to Madsen. Morgan obviously wants to bowl at the, the new batters. As Crane bowls and Madsen cuts and beats the dive of point and will go through for just a single that brings up his half century. So well batted to Wayne Madsen as he acknowledges the applause around uh, Sophia Gardens. He's hit five boundaries and he's taken 94 balls to reach the landmark. So rather slower than the... Uh, one registered by David Lloyd, who hit nine boundaries and got there in 65. But uh, valuable runs for Derbyshire in this low-scoring game so far as Crane bowls and uh, Dahl 
plays that one to point, fielded by Gorvin, and there's no run. A little bit of thought of a single, but it was it was never there. Gorvin and Tribe both on as substitute fielders. McElroy, one of those being replaced as Crane bowls and still almost getting in a tangle there. Was squared up as he looked to play it on the leg side, ended up defending on the off. Square leg goes back towards the boundary, just in case Dahl gets hold of one. But he props forward defensively. Plays it back to the bowler, a single off the Mason Crane over. The run rate has now dipped below 2.5 for the the first time really in the inning since the uh, first handful of overs 149 for 5 88 runs behind it's a far cry from Clamorgan's game against Middlesex I can tell you that yes a welcome change from uh, that run fest and Middlesex are having a similar time of it at the moment aren't they against North Ants who are 496 for 5 so that's well over a thousand runs conceded in the first two first innings they've faced this season, Middlesex. Glamorgan enjoying a much more even contest between bat and ball here at Sophia Gardens against Derbyshire. Douthwaite continues from the Cathedral Road end. Still three men in catching positions on the leg side. One slightly backward of square. He'll do the fielding off the first delivery. That's Colin Ingram. It's strange, isn't it, from after years of uh, seeing county championships with uh, slips as the attacking fielders. With this uh, Kookaburra ball, we're seeing more mid-wickets or short extra covers. Short backward square as there is at the moment as the aggressive fielders. Here is Douthwick. Here's Madsen defending. Yeah, it does seem to reflect what we see at the, the top of the longer form of the game. Ben Stokes, the England Test captain, talking about preparing flatter, more batter-friendly pitches and the kind of fields we've seen him set for England's men's test team. Reflecting what you say there, Nick, about the, the players in catching positions in front of the bat or on the leg side, backward of square, but in you know, these unconventional stop spots as Douthwick continues on the leg side again and Ingram is in the game once more stopping that. Yes, we've seen, well, we're seeing quite a lot of big scores around the country in this round of uh, championship matches. And while the bowlers have to work hard, it's not particularly batter friendly at the moment, is it? Because uh, scoring is, is such a, a battle. That's probably yeah, the one key difference between that analogy with the test team. No baz balling <laughs> so far here today as Madsen drives to mid on for no run. Yeah, even David Lloyd, who reached his half century after of 65 balls, didn't kick on after that, didn't actually hit any boundaries in the next uh, 20 balls after reaching his 50, so yep, you really have to work for it. And the field gets ever more attacking with deep square coming in around 30 yards. Not quite a catching position as such, but he's in. There's Douthwick Bowl's a full delivery, which Madsen drives for no run. One ball left in this over, then I'll be required to Give an update to our listeners on Radio Cymru. There we are, on the uh, fly of the flag. Is there a helicopter somewhere overhead? Sounds like it, but uh, low clouds, so I can't actually see anything. Here is Douthwaite skipping into his run-up. Dahl facing, driving firmly, but Kieran Carlson does the fielding. No run, and that ends the 61st over with Derbyshire 150 for 5 trailing by 87 well this must be quite uh, frustrating for the batters because there's quite a lot coming off the middle of the bat but it's not coming 
very firmly off the middle of the bat because it is a softer, older ball with the kookaburra. And uh, we've got two more rounds of uh, kookaburra later in the season, but I think the bowlers will be quite happy to see the, the Dukes back next week for round three of the, the championship. Mason Crane to continue, bowled three overs last night. He's bowled a further 17 today, one for 47. The wicket of David Lloyd, a key victim given out LBW. As Crane bowls to Dahl, who drives to cover, and uh, there is no run. Lou Lloyd may see fit to argue that the ball might have turned a bit too much and be... Uh, Missing leg stump. Crane bowls. Back on his stumps goes Dahl. Nudges it away on the leg side. All Hassan in from backward square to do the fielding. Give you some scores from uh, Division 1 that we haven't mentioned, apart from the Warwickshire run feast against uh, Durham. Crane in to bowl to Dahl was beaten by that. There's a big appeal for, I think, a catch behind. And uh, Glamorgan looking nonplussed that it hasn't been given. It looked to turn too sharply, actually. Didn't uh, see much evidence of uh, it uh, deflecting off the edge there. Crane's uh, spinning it so sharply. It looks as though it's taken an edge on occasion. As uh, Dahl will get runs here. No, just the one. Hasn't hit that very hard. Into a gap on the leg side. Ul Hassan, the fielder. Dahl has three. Madsen, 50 off 100 now. At Chelmsford, Essex declared on 530 for seven with Matt Critchley, 151. Kent in reply, 73 for one. As Madsen knocks one out towards deep mid-wicket and ambles through for a single 1-5-1 one, one for 5. At Southampton, Lancashire's openers, Luke Wells, has reached a half-century. He and uh, Jennings have got the score to 84 for naught in reply to Lancashire's reply to Hampshire's 3-6-7 all-out. Worcestershire have lost a couple of early wickets at Trent Bridge in reply to 3-9-9. They're 26 for two. Worcestershire. No doubt irked by seeing their former player Joe Clark score a century against them. Extra helmet is brought on as a short leg comes in. And Dull is beaten there outside off stump as he went for a big flourishing drive. Cook took the bales off yet again. Details confirmed as we uh, gave you of uh, Wayne Madsen's century. At the Oval, Surrey are going well on 203 for two in reply to Somerset's 285 all out. Rory Burns, the skipper, made 75. Dominic Sibley is 97 not out. But uh, England test batter Ollie Pope out for just 11. Nice to see, though, quite a few of the England upper order playing in this round of matches with uh, Root and Brook playing for Yorkshire, albeit none of them making much impression this week. Brook got a turn last week as Douthwaite is in to bowl and smashed through the offside by Madsen for four runs. Laid into that one and blasted it away. 155 for five. Madsen moves on to 55 not out. And uh, Douthwaite really can't afford to offer the bat is that sort of width with uh, this low scoring nature of the game. 82 between the two teams now. Douthwaite on his way in again. Bowling to Madsen off the back foot. 
plays firmly to mid on but Hamza does the fielding and there is no run very quiet atmosphere today partly because of the chill not a great crowd in and uh, plenty of counter attractions still on the sporting front at uh, this time of year as uh, Douthwaite is in and that one is played firmly to northeast at short mid wicket by Madsen as the helicopter disappears over the city centre Welsh women rugby playing uh, uh, over in Ireland and Cork this afternoon that's uh, 4.45 on BBC television I play it, BBC Radio Wales and uh, Radio Cymru As Douthwaite is in to bowl, and that's dabbed to, uh, down to third man by Madsen. There is no slip, and it's run away for four runs. Derbyshire won 5 9 for five. England women also playing in the rugby. They're 10 0 up early on against Scotland at uh, Mini Murrayfield, a little construction next door to the main thing. So uh, plenty of European rugby on this weekend as well. The Ospreys going out in the Challenge Cup at Gloucester last night. As Douthwaite bowls and an inside edge by Madsen. How many is the inside edge today? That one runs down to fine leg for a single. Could have ended up anywhere. 160 for five. You do wonder if this has been a specific ploy by Glamorgan because... Mir Hamza coming around the wicket as a left-arm seamer has been angling it into Madsen. Douthwaite has drawn quite a few inside edges from the Derbyshire batter as well, doing similar, but albeit as a right-arm over bowler. It's almost brought the rewards, but so far Madsen lives to fight another day, and he's on to 60 now, equal with David Lloyd's higher score so far in this innings for Derbyshire. It's been difficult to get going. Lloyd managed it. Madsen in parts in this innings as Dahl defends on the offside. Fielded by Tribe at cover. No run. And it looks as though Carlson is going to have a, a whirl now. As off spin to replace leg spin, maybe? Or is, is Crane going to keep going and Carlson on this end? No, it looks like uh, Carlson will take over from Crane, who's built 21 overs, one for 49. Yes, a well-earned break for Crane after 21 overs on the spin. Carlson, not a specialist bowler in the same way as Crane, but as part-time bowlers, one who's got through his fair share of overs in the last couple of years. Strange, really. Hardly bowled at all for a few years after taking a fifer on uh, on debut on a raging turning wicket at uh, Northampton, but uh, seemed to get his confidence back taking a few in the One Day Cup and has been used more regularly since then in the Championship as well. As he goes through his warm-up routine, makes a few adjustments to the field. A yeah, different kind of challenge for... Madsen and Dahl after the ripping leg breaks <laughs> from Mason Crane, some of which turned square on occasion. Carlson, the more modest turn of a... Just wondering whether he might operate with a short leg, Kieran Carlson. Uh, just as you say that. Yes. <laughs> it looks like Billy Root is reaching for the helmet. For the newer batter, Anushtal actually is going to leg slip rather than uh, in front of the wicket. Well, we saw David Lloyd operating at leg slip for Derbyshire uh, during the Glamorgan innings off the bowling Alex Thompson, and it worked a treat with Lloyd taking one particularly sharp catch. As Carlson is in, and Dahl tickles this down the leg side. He'll consider a second, but Zainal Hassan will cut that off and <laughs> launch the ball like a torpedo at Chris Cook's head, and the wicket keeper 
wicketkeeper takes it fairly comfortably at the end. <laughs> Calm down, Zane. And Carlson will come back around the wicket to Wayne Madsen. Carlson is in. Madsen dabs that down into the kind of gully region for no run. Some cries from the fielders who are interested in the nature of Madsen's stroke there. Played it fairly late, didn't he? That could carry its risks with the ball staying low on a few occasions earlier today as Carlson rolls in again. Oh and dear. that ball is short and Madsen gets hold of it, but Zainal Hassan saves the boundary and keeps Madsen to a single. Got away with one there, rather. Kieran Carlson is a bit of a buffet ball. Two balls left in the over. Uh, then Dave Fletcher will rejoin us. As Carlson comes over the wicket to <coughs> Dahl, another short ball, but Dahl, like Madsen before him, can't quite cash in. He'll have to settle for a single. So a bit of a mixed bag in this first over from Carlson. Yeah, he should be in the groove more than this, having bowled 47 overs at Lord's. He was quite expensive at times at the end of play last night as well. So here's his final ball of the over. Madsen prods it onto the offside. He makes it way for a single. He goes on to 63. And at the end of the 64th over, Derbyshire 165 for five, trailing by 72 runs. We have got 16 overs to come before the T interval. So... Round about an hour's play. Tea will come about ten to four. Should you, dear listener, be inclined to take your uh, beverages on board at the same time as us, as Dave Fletcher is uh, back with us. Thank you, Nick. Nicely done. Yes, we've got a, a little bit more room in this commentary box than the one we uh, used previously. Yes. So it's... Uh, less likely to encumber uh, to uh, larger gentlemen trying to move <laughs> swiftly and silently between commentary positions. I don't know who you're referring to. <laughs> Thee and me. <laughs> In any order. Oh dear. Yes, I'm back for I'm back for the thick end of an hour here. That's exciting, isn't it? Dan Douthway, not for, for who, I'm not sure. Bowls to a Madsen, strikes him on the pad. Ball dribbles back towards the bowler. And there's no run. Plenty happened since I uh, I was last here. A little bit too much, really, from a Derbyshire perspective, I fancy. Only 72 runs in arrears. Yes, yeah. I'm just, I wrote down uh, any kind of lead will be very handy. I think you mentioned that before as well. Mm. I just think any kind of lead would be uh, would be more than useful. There's Douthwaite in again from the Cathedral Road and bowls to Madsen who turns it into the leg side and again there is no run. Yeah, if you start the second innings minus 40 or 50 and you're a couple of wickets down before you've uh, knocked off the deficit, a short update for BBC Radio Wales to come before the football kick-offs okay. but uh, not too immediately so cra <laughs> crack on. <laughs> I think to the top of his mark. I'm slightly alarmed. I've not heard anybody's voice like that for the entire match. Balls to Madsen, who's driven it and caught. Really good catch at the second attempt by Asa Tribe. Feeling it to extra cover. And Madsen goes, and with him, potentially goes Derbyshire's possibility of getting a first innings lead. It was a terrific catch. It did take a couple of goes to get it, but it was struck very hard by Wayne Madsen. Right out of the meat of the bat. Uh, Douthwaite getting the ball to move in the air and he leapt up did uh, Tribe and got it at the second attempt. Really good catch. Derbyshire 165 for 5 trailing by 72. I think I just said that didn't I? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think you were heard by uh, half the population of Inner Cardiff, though. No, that, yeah. is, that is true. That was a good catch, though, wasn't it, in the it end? Because uh, he, he had to leap for it. 
and then work out where it was as it came yes, down. Yeah, which is always tricky. 113 delivery, seven fours, I think, for Wayne Madsen. And that is a, that is a bitter blow. And a big blow for yes. Glamorgan, of course. Sorry, I was looking at it very one-eyed way there. This is developing into a great game, says Neil Thornycroft. Yeah, it's not one little uh, take, uh, take maybe too many headlines, but it really has been a, a close battle so far. Steve Bone on Twitter says, uh, I think Crane will be a great signing for Glamorgan. He certainly had his share of bowling to do in this game. He certainly turned the ball a long way. Um, but Derbyshire will now hope that their bowling hero, Alex Thompson, will provide some batting impetus as well. Otherwise, Derbyshire are in danger of uh, falling away. They were 110 before the third wicket fell. Now 165 for six, and they've lost four for 45. Not, not a collapse, because it's happened all quite slowly. A slow collapse. A slow collapse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. It, it doesn't feel like a collapse until you look at the scoreboard. Mm. And then it sort of feels like one. But uh, much rests on the shoulders of Alex Thompson now with uh, Zach Chappell, Blair Tickner and Sam Connor still to come. Let's say on the shoulders of Alex Thompson, also on the shoulders of Anuj Dahl, who is a very fine batter in his own right. Yeah, Glamorgan looking to keep the pressure on. And bringing in a few fielders to make uh, Thompson have to work to get going. I just realised that Alex, is, Alex Thompson's middle name is Thomas. Ale Alexander Thomas Thompson. That's unusual. It is quite unusual, yeah. Staffordshire born, of course. I see that the Lancashire bowler, Will Williams, is amusingly referred to by his social, the club's social media as squared. Oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Better than two willies, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Which is what I thought you were going to say, and I thought I might as well say it. You can't say that sort of thing on the radio, Dave. <laughs> oh, we're not on the radio, that's all right. <laughs> William Williams. That's brilliant. He's got, got a bit some Welsh that's there, brilliant. hasn't he? You'd have thought so, but he's born in New Zealand. Glamorgan's bowlers are doing rather nicely. Derbyshire, 165 for six now. 72 runs in arrears. Wayne Madsen's just gone for the top score of 63. David Lloyd, a former Glamorgan player, made 60. And Iron Donald, another former Glamorgan man, dismissed for just seven. Two wickets each for Douthwaite and Harris. One apiece for Crane and Hamza. Derbyshire, 165 for six. Nicely done. Pithier than my previous efforts. Uh, yes, I, I, I actually talked very much past the end of the bed uh, <laughs> a quarter to, which I'm not sure is allowed. <laughs> um, Dalthwaite's first delivery to Thompson was pushed to northeast. He was filling a very short, uh, well, not very short, but a short mid on. His second ball to Thompson is guided to point where it's fielded by Ol Hassan. The bed for non-radio yes. professionals referring to a musical backdrop rather than uh, any horizontal inclination on the part of Mr. Fletcher <laughs> in next door's box. That, the seat that I've got in the box next door is very low, though. I feel like I'm on the floor. Dalthwaite in again bowls to uh, Thompson, who clips this one away nicely. A couple of 50s to his name, Alex Thompson, in his career, but just the two. My television switched itself off. Uh, you need to switch it back on again. Yeah, Press yeah, a few yeah. buttons, it should happen. It's coming back. So Thompson off the mark with a single. 166 for six, the deficit. All the lead, depending from which side you, uh, you look at it, is 71. Which at the moment feels substantial. Mm. From a Glamorgan perspective. Well, Derbyshire will hope to get near, if not into the lead. Still? I think they have to get quite close because you, you can't imagine the pitch. Well, you, you you tell me that pitches on day three and four generally flatten out, but is this one going to flatten out? Well, this one's behaved unlike most <laughs> Sapphire Gardens over the last 20 I've years. I've not seen a pitch like this, I don't think, since I started covering Derbyshire. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I have to say that 
Dan Douthwaite is bowling very skillfully. He is getting the ball to move in the air. He is getting the ball to move off the pitch as well. This is a good effort. It is from Douthwaite. Let's see if uh, Carlson, after rather a rather shaky first over of the day, can keep things tighter with his off spin as the first ball is played back to him by Thompson. Carlson, a Cardiff University man, played uh, for the students on and off, but was already in the county team mostly as uh, Thompson plays out on the offside. And there is no run. Ingram is at slip. Root is at short leg. Ingram just offering a, a little suggestion as the deployment of one of the fielders. As uh, that bounces off Tribe at short leg and flicked up in the air, but there wasn't anyone to catch it on the other side of the wicket. Had Glamorgan had a, a silly point there, or a silly mid-off, he might have been in business. That one cannoning up in the air. But safely for Thompson, as he's defending the next delivery out on the leg side. Northeast trots round to do the fielding. So a satisfying group of fielders around the bat. As Carlson bowls to Thompson, who pushes forward. It only needs the addition of a silly point to give the, the square around the bat. The four fielders, one on each point of the compass, if you like, which I find peculiarly satisfying from an aesthetic point of view. As the tall Thompson is back on his stumps, the rather smaller Carlson is down on one knee, having hoped to get one through Thompson's defences, but could not do so. So that's uh, a decent comeback from Carlson. Having conceded five, and it probably should have been more in his first over of the day, bowls a maiden. It's 166 for six, 71 runs in arrears, and what Derbyshire wouldn't give for a batting point at the moment. Yes, absolutely. The um, It strikes me that if they were going to complete the, the compass, northeast mm -hmm. would have to be there somewhere, wouldn't it? <laughs> Very good. That's all I've got. <laughs> Douthwaite to begin a new over from the uh, Cathedral Road end here at Sophia Cup a dull afternoon but not dull out there in the middle as the first ball is pushed into the offside by Dahl and there is no run so it is what, uh, where is it there it is I was remaining oh, that's a tricky maths equation 14 overs to go until T which would make sense, because I think it was two hours ago since you said it was 16. Yeah, it'll be about 10 to 4 or thereabouts, yeah. around about half-time in the footy. Uh, yes. As Douthwaite is in again and balls up and is driven, but not timed by Dahl, straight up to Kieran Carlson at mid-off. Again, there's no run. I mean, at the moment, if, the new, if they survive to the new ball, which is only 13 overs away... Um, would you actually take a new ball? Because well, Derbyshire are bogged down as it is. Yeah, but not scoring particularly freely, it has to be said. 2.5 and over. As Douthwaite bowls to Dahl, and gets right behind that one and pushes it up to Carlson at mid-off once again. Yes, well, we were sort of pondering that yesterday, and then all of a sudden the uh, decision was taken out of their hands as they dismissed Glamorgan for 237. I think if they could get anywhere near 237 from here, they would be very happy indeed. Six down yesterday, Glamorgan were 201 when Chris Cook was dismissed. So they're just about 40 runs behind all the time at the moment. Derbyshire, big hitters have come and gone. And not necessarily hit particularly big. Douthwaite ball, short delivery, pulled into the leg side by Dahl and fielded well there by... Asa Tribe, who took that fine catch to dismiss Wayne Madsen a few minutes ago, the substitute fielder. I think it's a bit harsh. They won't get any credit for that whatsoever. <laughs> Although they now do actually, obviously they have done for a few years, but put the substitute's name after the word sub. Yes. So it doesn't count on their record. Does it not go into the sort of first-class records? No, it just goes down as a court oh, sub. that's a shame. Yeah. We know who he, who he is. 
but he won't get it officially as this next one is defended off the back foot this time out into the onside by Anna's Dahl. I'm fairly sure that. You, you, you yeah, you're probably yeah. right. You're probably right. Well, I'm not, that's not usually the... Uh, He'll have the satisfaction of seeing his name appear in the uh, Glamorgan yearbook in yes. capacity, and what more could a man want? Absolutely. It's been my ambition for many years, and it still hasn't happened. <laughs> to appear in the Glamorgan yearbook? Any yearbook. Any yearbook. <laughs> for anything. <laughs> Just wait. I think he wants a slight alteration to his field. He's going to have uh, leg slip, leg gully. Like gully bully root, and that means that the man down at fine leg becomes a long leg as he goes a little squarer. There is a slip in place as Douthwaite is in to bowl to uh, Dahl. That one's outside the off stump bluff, and he leaves it alone to go through to Chris Cook. He has his hand over his mouth, as though that was the thing that was the ball that was closest to the stumps he's ever bowled without hitting them. Let's have a look. It's gone a long way, but it started too far out. Yeah, and it, it, there is just that little bit of swing for them as well, isn't there, mm. which, which is fascinating, really. There shouldn't be any, but there is. And fair play to the, uh, the Glamorgan bowlers for getting that bit of swing out of this 67-over old ball. But you're right, if it's doing enough now, I don't think there's any ch need to change it, is there? Don't see any point. No. Carlson with those three fielders clustered round the bat. Bowls to Thompson, down leg side. Cook takes the bales off. There was a, uh, a hopeful yell from Asa Tri, but short leg getting carried away with the excitement of being on a first class cricket field. <laughs> Just got a bit overexcited, bless him, didn't he? 166 for 6, 71 behind. Carlson. In the bowl, that's down leg side, and Thompson will have uh, nothing to do with it. As, uh, the next delivery is on its way to Thompson, who again ignores it going down leg side. Trying to tempt him to nudge a catch to short leg or to, uh, to leg slip. As uh, that is driven out back to the bowler, and there's no run. Although he hasn't made a county debut, Asa Tribe does have an international century to his name in the uh, in a one-day match. Very good. As uh, that one clipped by Thompson up towards deepish mid on. There's a single there because. Uh, Southwaite is a long way back, 167 for six. Tribe's international century was for Jersey against Papua New Guinea in Windhoek, which I believe is in, in Namibia. Namibia, yeah. yeah. He's done more than I have. As that's pushed between the two uh, leg side short fielders by Dal. Takes a single as Ul Hassan comes round from the square leg to field two singles off the Carlson over Derbyshire 168 for six that is 69 runs behind and 12 overs till T not that Mr Fletcher and myself are salivating at the <laughs> cake based well, prospects I did miss the cakes yesterday yeah I only had um, yeah. half a slice so we'll have yeah. to be, uh, be on our off toes. the mark a bit more quickly <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. bother the radio updates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just give the score, boys. James Harris is coming back into the uh, attack for Glamorgan uh, from the Cathedral Road end. He's bowled, uh, bowled nicely today. Mm. Very nicely indeed. Possibly the most economical day he's had since uh, returning to these parts, James Harris, yeah. going at one and over. I'm looking to the TV screen for his uh, his numbers, but they're not there at the moment. So I'll have to look to on my uh, laptop, which tell which will tell me in a moment. Here is Harris then, past the umpire on bowls to Dahl, who defends the first delivery. Out into the on side here, 14 overs, eight maidens, two for 14. You take that. 
Any day of the week. Mm. Even on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps especially on a Saturday afternoon, who knows? Yes, yeah, good to see uh, Harris and Downthwaite bowling with uh, such accuracy today since uh, Morgan and a man down in the SEMA department. Yes, and I don't know what the, what the regulations are for that, if he doesn't bowl at all. Anyway, this next delivery from Harris is turning to the leg side by Dal Root Fields at Square Leg. I think once the innings is finished, that's it, isn't it? You would hope there'd be some kind of sensible... Yes, I believe so. ...arrangement. Oh, well, this is cricket. <laughs> but it's the uh, the last thing Glamorgan needs is to, to have a seamer injured, to have three senior pros injured. Goes Harris again this time. This one is down the leg side, and uh, he has a little flick at it, does... And it's dull, but it doesn't connect, and it goes through to Chris Cook. Otherwise, they really will be uh, hitting the phones. I shouldn't think they'll get Craig Miles back next week if he's in the Warwickshire 11 today. So uh, maybe uh, Mark Wallace, the director of cricket, will be having a, a ring round to the Division 1 side. Has anyone got a spare seamer they don't need next week? Anyone fancy a game? Got a mate? <laughs> We'll supply the the outfit. <laughs> this one's turned into the leg side by uh, Anuj Dahl off his pads and down to uh, long leg when he picks up a single. Yeah. 69 for six. A pair of trainers will do if you're desperate. Uh, box would be useful. All right, we'll pick him, pick him up at the roundabout by the pub. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah pick, we'll pick him up halfway there. <laughs> Brilliant. The vagaries of club cricket. Harris just wipes the uh, perspiration from his brow. Sets off a very smooth run up and bowls to Thompson, who defends out into the offside. There is no run. Yeah, years ago, uh, I was living in lodging with my brother, who uh, captained a, a Sunday team at the, the time, and it was the, the third 11 played on. Maybe it's Saturday, I can't remember. Anyway, he, he was captain of the third 11, and he, it was before the days of mobile phones, and you just dreaded the phone ringing on the morning of the match because it would never be good news. I think it was Harris again. That one is defended once more by Thompson. Yes, I just want to spend a leisurely Saturday afternoon in the pub. No, you know, you're playing cricket. <laughs> All good. <laughs> 169 for six, Derbyshire, 68 runs in arrears. And since the uh, departure of uh, Madsen, it really has been uh, slow going. David Lloyd is 60, came at uh, a recent decent rate off 86 deliveries. Wayne Madsen facing 113 for his 63, but uh, everyone else has been uh, struggling to get going. Harry came marathon 25 of 113 deliveries, and uh, Guest and Donald falling in single figures today. As uh, Dahl faces Carlson and is back on his stumps. Yes, Donald will be particularly disappointed to have been caught down the leg side in the way that he was. It, it's illegitimate. I don't go for the, oh, he's unlucky. It's just disappointing. Carlson bowls. Dahl drives. We'll take a quick single to mid on. Risky and safe as the throw from the Douthweight comes in. In the end, he uh, aimed for the the striker's stumps. I don't think there's ever any point in aiming for the stumps to which Anuj Dahl is running. OK. Because he's lightning. Whereas uh, that little doubt in the mind that there might have been a, a hesitation from Thompson. Carlson in, balls. Thompson drives back to the bowler and uh, there is no run. Just a, a modicum of breeze stirring the camera behind uh, Kieran Carlson's back. At the far end of the ground, the River Taff end. Carlson bowls, shouts a catch it as the ball lobs away on the offside, safely enough. Bit of uh, bit of breeze around, 
not many of the trees in uh, in full leaf yet. There's Carlson Bowles to Thompson, who finds the gap on the offside with a drive that may relieve a little bit of the pressure. As far as Alex Thompson is concerned, that's his first boundary into vast open space on the offside. 174 for six. Thompson has six. Beautiful shot from Alex Thompson. It was an opportunity that he took. Yeah, never any really doubt where it was going to end up once it had left the bat, really. 174 for six. The fielders settle again. And Carlson drives, sees Thompson driving. Didn't really time it to northeast on the leg side. Five off the, the Carlson over. He's not for 36 off seven. At uh, Lords, he finished with three for 147. <laughs> did, a, did a job. <laughs> a very long job. A very long job over um, whatever it was. Uh, just over two days, I think, it took to uh, dismiss Middlesex because Glamorgan declared it... Uh, Midway on the second afternoon, and Middlesex weren't bowled down until after tea on the final day. Mm. James, absolutely. James Harris from the Cathedral Road end. Balls to uh, Adalu's court. At slip, took the edge, and that was a fairly straightforward slip catch in the end. Dahl goes now. Derbyshire are in danger of conceding a uh, considerable first innings deficit I think it's fair to say he's been dismissed for eight caught by Colin Ingram at slip 174 for seven they trail by 63 an unusual dismissal for the course of the day because uh, we've seen times where Glamorgan have bowled without a slip thankfully for them they had one on that occasion and uh, Ingram clung on to it just his left around about knee high and James Harris has 3 for 15 in his 16th over. Good effort by him. Really good effort. If they can get another 30 runs, Derbyshire might feel that they're still in this, but where are they going to get those 30 runs for? Well, Zach Chappell almost certainly won't uh, hang around. And I've said that about other batters, I know. But I think that's probably his best way. Out there with Alex Thompson. Zach Chappell, the uh, almost the, the spitting image of the actor Zachary James. Yes, <laughs> isn't he just somebody I was not familiar with until uh, no. this time yesterday? <laughs> well, I wasn't familiar uh, with him until uh, a week or so ago when I saw him uh, in a musical called Hades Town while uh, at the very almost the same time as Edward Bevan was uh, watching Jesus Christ Superstar, so I reckoned we had both options yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. covered between us on that occasion. Radio Wells hedging their bets. <laughs> Up or down. <laughs> <laughs> 174 for, for seven. Um, yeah, very, uh, I was impressed. With it. it wasn't a, a musical of which I'd heard Hades Town before being no. informed that I was going to it. Sounds like a Disney type thing. Mm, definitely wasn't. No. Set in the in the underworld largely, and it was a rather nice jazzy solely sort of soundtrack. Mm, okay, very accessible. It's all kicking off in the uh, in League One. What's happening in League One, Dave? Well, Derby have taken the lead at home to Leighton Orient, whilst at third place Bolton have fallen behind to leaders Portsmouth, which would be huge for Derby County in their uh, bid for automatic promotion. At the other end, which is where I'm slightly more interested, uh, Cheltenham losing to Bristol Rovers by a goal to nil. Port Vale still drawing and uh, up to up to now, but still drawing at Stevenage. 174 for seven here, Derbyshire. Zach Chapel on strike and defends the first ball that he gets from James Harris. Back down the pitch, and there is no run. Meanwhile, at Newport, it remains goalless. <laughs> <laughs> Which for me would be uh, something of a result. Yes, the uh, the season 
slightly falling away for, for Newport as uh, five successive defeats put them out of range of anything successful. You can't have everything as uh, Harris bowls to Chapel, who defends this next one up to uh, mid on by Mir Hamza. Well, after, uh, after however it was, long it was, quarter of a century out of the league, I think anyone after from the Newport. country for a lot, for large part. Yes. Uh, playing in exile, hence uh, their nickname. Starting off Morton in Marsh. Yes. Who knew there was a football ground there? Here's Harris. Chapel on the back foot forces it up to a wide mid-off where, again, Hamza does the fielding. Yes, it was a football ground with possibly the worst landline in the United Kingdom. <laughs> and this is before the days of uh, mobile telephony. And uh, reports from uh, Newport County's match at, at more than Marsh. It might as well have been the moon for uh, the quality of the, <laughs> the lines. Here comes Harris again, bowls to Chapel. This time he pushes it a little bit squarer, sort of to the uh, the cover region. Mason Crane picks up. Wrexham have just taken the lead against Forest Green Rovers yeah. after 17 minutes. There's Derby have got a second against Orient now, so they're home and hosed. A win for Wrexham, together with a couple of other teams failing to win, would send them up today. Excellent. Into League One. As Harris bowls, that one is all oh, driven but off an edge and it's gone down a third man. He'll get four runs for it, will Zach Chapel. There are two slips in place now and it wasn't too far away from the second of those. But Chapel is off the mark with the boundary from the final ball of the Harris over. Ruining his figures, three for 19 from 16 overs now. 178 for seven, Derbyshire. Thompson on six and they trail by 59. Uh, with uh, round about nine overs, not what round about, exactly nine overs until T. So, uh, crucial nine overs, these. To be fair to Chapel, a uh, third slip would have not have been able to catch no. that. It wasn't, uh, it bounced about halfway to the slip cordon. So it would have been just a question of saving runs. In the Championship, Cardiff City, a one down at Millwall. And... Uh, Swansea City, nil-nil at home to Rotherham. Well, I have... Oh, no, I have news from Newport. Yeah, Newport County now lead. Will Evans has scored for oh. them against Tranmere. Good, good. From the really, Welsh point of view. I really do hate Saturdays. <laughs> 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 They've not been good to me over the last month or so. Right. It's like they owe me a living, but... Mason Crane will take a back over from Kieran Carlson after not too much uh, rest and respite at the River Taff end. Crane with one for 49, looking to pick up a couple of tail end victims as Thompson is uh, pushing forward and beaten by that first delivery and the draft of which Dave spoke yesterday. Well, it'd be more than a draft now because I've just looked at the flags. It's, it's blowing quite strongly, that gale out there now, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> As uh, Thompson le leaves the next delivery, Cook doesn't take it cleanly, but it matters little. The draft that is coming in via a, uh, a gap in the floor is uh, getting slightly chilly to try and get away from it. As Carlson uh, Crane tosses one up, hits Thompson on the pads. I thought it's his glove. Might have done. It may have done. As uh, made a bit of a mess of the sweep shot, Thompson. No, no it was the pad, the pad, but it pitched outside leg. Would have hit the stumps, yeah. pitches outside leg, doesn't matter. Crane. Thompson, oh, that's over, flighted no. and caught at mid on. It was a full toss, it was a filthy delivery, and Thompson somehow managed to sky it straight into the hands of Dan Douthwaite, who hardly had to move. 178 for eight. 
Sorry for the groan. That was awful, wasn't it? Just a, a, appalling. We, we, what we're saying how gripping this cricket is. That was absolutely dreadful cricket. A full toss, clothed up to uh, a deepish mid on, and a simple catch taken. The only thing that would have capped it would have would have been if Downthwaite had dropped it <laughs> to make it the worst piece of cricket you're ever likely to see in the course of a season. Uh, I think well, one thing I will say now is that we will probably see. Zach Chapel open his shoulders. Right. Although, having said that, I haven't seen um, Blair Tickner bat, of course, so uh, I'm at a slight disadvantage, but I understand uh, number 10 is about right from what I can gather from the numbers. Hmm. But it's his first... Ah, that looks like it might be Sam Connors. So that, oh, right. that, that, will, uh, that will confirm right. my suspicion. Is it Sam? Yeah, I think it is Sam Connors. I'll take your word for it as he makes his way past the... Oh, there we are. That tells you something about Blair Techner's um, uh, batting yeah, expectations, I, 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 think, I suppose. I think it does. I hope that's all it is and he's not got any kind of issue. I, I would also be surprised, rightly or wrongly, if he didn't take the new ball, unless he just doesn't like bowling with the new ball, but... Uh, he bowled with the new ball in New Zealand throughout the winter, our winter, their summer. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him bowl with the new ball. Alex Thompson said he was exhausted last night. Well, he may well be bowling again today. Yeah. So all sorts of uh, connotations. And Wheeling away, well... We may even see Glamorgan in before the, the tea interval. Yes. And uh, this game progressing fairly rapidly. I think we've probably had more wickets now than uh, any other game around the country, I think. We're about level with Bristol at uh, one stage. Gloucestershire are five down. So, uh, yes, more wickets falling here than anywhere else. As Crane is in to bowl and uh, Connors plays it back to him all along the ground. Crane two for 49. Having bowled quite a lot of fine balls, it's rather ironic that he takes one with one of his worst of the match, Crane. Yes. Yeah. As uh, that one is played by Connors to short mid wicket to shouts of catch, only because it was off the ground for about two or three metres after it's left the bat. There's <laughs> in no way a chance. 178 for eight then. Crane two for 49. Harris three for 19. Chapel, Connors and Tickner to try and uh, minimise a deficit of 59 at the moment. It would be remiss of me not to uh, tell everybody in Newport that your team is no longer leading uh, and that uh, Tremor have indeed equalised. Rodney Parade mm. in that meaningless match for some, not for everyone. 178 for eight here, and it will be James Harris to bowl to Zach Chapel. Oh, Zach Chapel wasn't quite ready because the slip cordon wasn't quite ready. It is now, and here comes Harris in and bowls to Chapel, who defends up to uh, mid on. Not sure that was in the script, but that's what he's done. Just waiting for his moment to explode into action. Derbyshire trailing by 59. Serious, in, in, in all seriousness, if they could eke out another 30 runs for the last two wickets, then mm. that would be very useful. Yep. Whereas if they suddenly try and hit the ball out of Sophia Gardens and trail by 50. Harris is in and bowls. That one is defended perfectly. Orthodox, in a perfectly orthodox manner up to uh, mid-off, where it's fielded by Kieran Carlson. There are a group of uh, supporters just next to the uh, steps down which the players enter the field. They're all almost as if they're huddling together for warmth away to our left-hand side, but I was told how cold it was outside at lunchtime as Harris bowls to Chapel, who defends it straight back to the bowler. And there is no run. So 
So yes, Derby County going really nicely at the top of the table. If, if thing then, it's a long, long way to go, clearly. But they would open up a five-point lead over Bolton, which is substantial with just a couple of matches to go. And comes Harris again. Over the wicket, bowls to Chapel, who off the back foot forces that nicely wide of the uh, mid off. They run one, they'll come back for a second. Carlson will pick up, and two is all they'll get, but Chapel moves on to six. One, 80 for eight. They trail by 57 now. Yes, come on, Stephen. I'm told that Tickner averages 65 with the bat since Derbyshire announced they were signing him, so, uh, well, they'll probably get a lead in that case. <laughs> And then again, possibly not. Here comes Harris again. Bowls to Chapel, who defends this out into the offside. And there is a no run. Well, the game has changed quite a bit in the space of uh, just a few updates I've been uh, away yes. for. Hasn't it just? Hasn't it just? Yeah. Well, the wicket of Wayne Madsen was key. You felt it was a really good catch by Asa Tribe to get rid of him for 63. And as Dahl can't do much if the ball moves a little bit and comes off you at the edge of your bat, I suppose. Nice, sharp catch by Ingram. As Harris is in, and balls to Chapel, who turns this into the leg side where Tribe is loitering at mid-wicket and does the feeling no run. 180 for eight at the end of the over. Chapel six. Connors yet to get off the mark. Alex Thompson's dismissal, however. And, and I'm, I'm not pointing fingers at, at Tomo, but it was a horrible delivery. It wasn't a great shot, and it was a fairly simple catch. Full toss clothed to a deepish mid on it wasn't the way anybody would want to go and he looked suitably crestfallen because I think he, I think bowlers always take a bit of pride in their batting don't they but I think Alex Thompson feels that uh, he should be at number eight number nine rather than down in the uh, in the bowels so uh, I know he can hit the ball a long way yeah and in some ways similar to Clamorgan, it there haven't been many ways of magic deliveries in this innings of it. It's just a kind of steady flow of pressure as Mason Crane is in to continue and Connors on the back foot defence. I think Connors will be using his hand eye coordination rather than his feet to Mason Crane. I'm not sure whether he's gonna read it out of the hand. He'll be banking on the odd Short delivery as we've seen, but that one's flighted up nicely. There's an appeal for stumping. The umpire is unmoved. He almost toppled forward. That was a, that was a decent shout by Bainton, unimpressed. But I just watched the replay after he played the shot, which was uh, slightly more aggressive than it needed to have been. He, he just topples and it just takes a step and mm. that's the moment at which the bales were removed crane is in again on a length this time yeah he gave that ball with a stumping appeal some real flight didn't he really tempted connor's forward and you just saw him slightly off balance crane has bowled well on glamorgan debut he's into his 23rd over now three for two for 49 sorry so far he flights that up again Connors drives, but it's straight to mid-off for no run. Burn Albin have lost their captain to injury. That's not good, is it? Especially when it's John Brayford making his 600th league start. John Brayford, formerly of Cardiff. Indeed, absolutely. John Brayford of Cardiff. Crane is in. Again, full delivery, and he's bowled him this time. Beautifully delivered by Crane. That accounts for Connors, who departs. For no score, and Derbyshire now 180 for nine. Glamorgan looking for a decent first innings lead here. It's an unusual bold dismissal that because he sort of played a, a short jab at the ball, and it somehow got <laughs> it somehow got through. Well, just looking at it, it, looks like it's a googly. Yeah. From Crane, we haven't seen many of those, if any, today. But as you were saying, Connor's unlikely to read him out of the hand, so he just thought. If I'm going to bowl the wrong and at anyone, it might as well be to a tailander. Well, yes, absolutely. Now then, the deficit is 57. And here comes the 60 averaging 
since he was announced as a Derbyshire player, Blair Tickner. Well, I say here he comes. There's no sign of him just yet, but I'm sure he's on his way. I don't think if, if you're the number 11 batter that you dash to the lavatory when the number 10 walks out. So you, you should always be prepared, I think. And here he comes. The uh, New Zealand international quick bowler. <laughs> Dear, this is this has gone south very quickly. But gone gone south very quickly, quite slowly. <laughs> I think if you could get that into your report, uh, Nick, that would be great. They were 117 for three at lunch, so they've lost six wickets, for 63 runs in this afternoon session, which is quite a lot. And we'll be disappointed as a result, I'm sure, Derbyshire. But here is Blair Tickner. He's a big man, as we've seen when he, uh, when he bowled. I'm sure when he hits the ball, it stays hit. But then again, Mason Crane, I don't think many of the tail enders have managed to hit the ball, have they really? <laughs> They've been slightly bamboozled by the leggy. Yeah, the hard bit is actually making contact with the ball, first, isn't it? Yeah. First, first hit your ball, as the old recipe goes. Yeah, he really hung out that mm. last delivery for, for Connors to reach out, came through the gate beautifully. Perhaps a more seasoned batter might have backed himself to to read that from the hand, but as it was, Crane really outfoxed. Connors, he has his third wicket, and he has one ball left in his 23rd over. Two slips and a short leg in for Crane, who's into Tickner. Moves on to the back foot and defends. That's the end of the over. Derbyshire, 180 for nine, trailing by 57 runs. As I'm sure instructions will have gone out so that uh, Zach Chappell knows exa exactly what he should be doing here. Uh, but now they've just dropped into the bottom four because Port Vale have taken the lead at home uh, to Exeter City. You can never rely on Exeter City, I always think. Ethan Chislett with the goal. And that is not good. So Burton would be in the bottom four with three games to go. Plenty more twists and turns, I'm sure. I don't even support them, and it's killing me. Goodness knows what it must be like supporting them. It's a horrible time of the season, isn't oh. it? That's before you start on the playoffs. Those are really nerve-wracking. Nerve yes, I think Derby County are going to avoid those playoffs. As things stand, here comes James Harris bowling to Zach Chappell. And Chappell just dabs the ball into the leg side. It's fielded there by uh, Asa Tribe and there's no run. 180 for nine. 57, the Glamorgan lead at this point. Which feels substantial. While Crane, you'd think on the bowling front would Look at a lot of the headlines as the as the debutant James Harris has bowled very nicely in this oh, innings. Absolutely, yeah, three for twenty-one. He's in his eighteenth over. Bowls to Chapel, who clips this into the leg side. It just evades the dive of Tribe, and they're going to come back for two here. I think two is all they'll get. They're going to oh, they're going to come back for a third. Well, after a little discussion, they're going to come back for a third. It was a good throw from the boundary, but they do pick up three runs. Chapel moves to nine, and Derbyshire 183 for nine now, trailing by 54. Can they eke out another 24 runs? Yeah, Harris has picked up wicket since he uh, returned to Glamorgan from Middlesex, but he has been a, a little expensive at times. Whereas in this innings, he's been very, very tight, very economical, and he'll be looking to pick up a, a fourth wicket now as Derbyshire well into the tail. Harris is in to bowl to Tickner, who <laughs> just about manages to keep that one out. Interesting uh, flourish of the bat after the ball was hit. Yeah, played it late and uh, it didn't look like it was too deliberate a ploy to be playing it that late. But uh, like you say, a bit of a flourish afterwards. 
I'm getting Tranmere taking the lead at Newport vibes from my uh, Twitter feed as in comes Harris again and Tickner defends it back to him. It's getting a little bit hazy out there, is it? Or is this window getting slightly dirtier? 183 for nine. It was around this time that the forecast was for uh, a little bit, and there's a little bit of uh, rain, and there is movement, people putting coats on in front of us outside. But that might just be because the temperature's dropped a little bit. As the next delivery from Harris is pushed into the offside by Tickner. And there is no run. Yeah, those clouds do feel heavy as well as grey. Mm -hmm. Slightly ominous look to them. Still a stiff breeze, the trees swaying in the background, the river Tav, and... It almost looks, feels like a sea fret, doesn't it? As Harris is in to complete his 18th over, Tickner digs out a full-length delivery, pushes it into the onside, where it's fielded by Tribe and... Uh, Derbyshire, uh, 183 for nine. Chapel has nine. Tickner yet to get off the mark, having faced uh, five deliveries, and they trail Orgle Morgan lead by 54. Those vibes were right for you, Dave. Yes. Tramia have taken the lead, and a big goal for David Lloyd and other Wrexham fans, yeah. because Mansfield have equalised at MK Dons, meaning that as things stand, albeit only 35 minutes in or so, Wrexham would be heading up as uh, things stand. Well, no, we like as things stand. I love an as things stand. Yeah. Those live league tables. Yeah. yeah. I don't particularly like the look of the League One live league table, but I do like live tables. <laughs> Here comes Crane to Chapel, who's back and hacking the ball back at Crane, who does the fielding off his own bowling. Hacking the perfect description. That was that was an interesting shot. I don't know who taught him it. Chapel, the kind of guy who'll go after it if he sees anything short. Oh yes. Here is Crane, and that's on a good length, and it leaves Chapel outside the off stump. Crane is into his groove today. They have been the occasional shorter balls, as you'd expect from a leg break bowler, but in the main it's been consistently dangerous. And he's got three wickets to show for it as he's in again to Chapel. That one's back of a length, and Chapel cashes in with that one. In Six. fact, it goes all the way as a punchy shot on the back foot from Chapel. And we did say those balls are likely to come from Crane as well as he has done, and Chapel takes full advantage. Yeah, he'll always have a go. I mean, again, he's a, an enormous human being, Zach Chapel. I don't think he likes the gym, but he seems to be quite good at it. You know what I mean? He's one of those. He doesn't overdo it. Here's Crane to Chapel again, who defending this time. Yeah, it wasn't much of a backlift, was it? But he, one of those kind of strong forearm, yeah, yeah, jab over mid wicket. I just wonder how much Derbyshire not having played last week will affect the uh, the team as well. Crane is in again, and Chapel just <laughs> sweeps that nicely. That will run away down to the boundary for four. So, very useful runs down the order here from Zach Chapel. And before you know it, the deficit is less than 50. Derbyshire now trail Glamorgan by only 44 runs. Just had a quick look at the ball as it came across the boundary. That looked like it was made of velvet. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look great. It didn't look like the kind of ball you'd go into a box and say, I'll bowl with that one. Crane with the final ball of the over. Chapel is back and driving for no run. So productive over for Derbyshire, that one. A six and a four to come from it as Chapel moves on to 19. And Derbyshire at the end of the 76th over. 193 for 9. Wrexham presumably, I mean, they are going to win because they're 3-0 up, aren't they? they? They win their game and that other result stays the same and it's job done. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. 
their Hollywood owners are not at the race course today, oh, no. we're told, but I'm sure they'll be there soon enough for the promotion party whenever that does happen. I imagine they'll be watching. Yeah, I saw a video of Ryan Reynolds watching on his film set the other day. Doesn't miss a game. James Harris begins a new over to Blair Tickner, who pushes this out into the offside, and there's no run. What a fairy tale. One ninety-three for nine, forty-four. The difference between the two sides in Glamorgan's favour. Bolton equaliser against Portsmouth. In comes Harris. Over the wicket and balls down the leg side. It's uh, turned nicely off a hip and off a bat by Blair Tickner for his first runs in uh, English first class cricket. It's a boundary and Derbyshire moved to 197 for nine. And the difference between the sides is now 40 runs. Oh, Port Bell have got a second. That is disastrous for Burton Albion. Unless they can win at Stevenage, which seems unlikely. Here is Harris. Over the wicket and bowls. That's defended by Tickner. Back towards the bowler. He leaves it and Kieran Carlson picks up. It's almost worse. Uh, last week I was supposed to be covering the, the cricket. I wasn't, so I went to Burton. And it was worse just watching than it is when you're commentating. Because you, you can sort of console yourself and chat with the summariser. I'm just sitting there in the press box watching this horror show unfold in front of me. Harris over the wicket and balls Tickner leaves that one alone and goes for a little walk. I'd, I'd get back behind the uh, b behind the line if I was you, Blair. He might be being told that by, <laughs> by <laughs> Zach Chappell, but he definitely went for a walk. Yeah, Chris Cook wondering if he might channel his inner Alex Carey there. Yes. Sure. Surely a Glamorgan player wouldn't do wouldn't stoop so low. Maybe booze in the members' lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Harris in and bowls and that one just pops a little bit as uh, Tickner demonstrates with his hand and it took him high up on the bat, close to the handle. And the last thing he wants is a broken finger. He's only here till midway through the T20. Yeah, it looks like Harris had a little laugh to himself when that happened as well. Perhaps amused with the way Tickner batted that one away. I'm not entirely sure that the uh, the batters out there will have been particularly amused to see Tickner being hit. As Harris is in and bowls a full delivery that's pushed into the leg side by Tickner. And there is no run. So it's 197 for nine at the end of the over. Three to go until T. Chapel has 19. Tickner has four. And Glamorgan, they lead this one by 40 at the moment. Can Dowish get 10 more runs? I wonder. Well, these two have added 17 for the 10th wicket. And Weidel, you know, still fairly modest. They are, you know... The adjective that you keep hearing at this point in the game, useful lower order runs, aren't they? And these are proving to be that indeed. Chapel scored a six and a four off Crane's most recent over, and he'll face the leg spinner again here from the river end. And he prods rather uncertainly at that one, and Cook whips off the bales. As Crane walks back to his mark and Nick Webb rejoins us in the commentary box. Here comes Crane from the river end. Tossing that one up and Chapel whips it through mid wicket for a single. Valuable runs for Derbyshire as they look to uh, cut the deficit. Shouldn't be too substantial now. And it's just a, a little bit of a. Uh, a psychological fillip to get 18 off the for last wicket, having declined before that. From, uh, well, 165 for 5. 
290 for 9. 180 for 9. Here's Crane to Tickner, who defends a <laughs> full ball and walks away. He's got the height. Well, they've both got the height, haven't they, to uh, get well forward to the spinner. Yeah, the stump's only just passing Blair Tickner's knee, <laughs> such as his height as Crane comes in again. A shorter delivery. Is that put down? The ball certainly went to Sam Northeast at second slip. Unclear if it carried. And Northeast is trying to suggest that it didn't. He's got the, the dirtiest trousers that I've seen on a first class field at the moment. A lot of sprawling in the mud in the morning session. Crane is in to Tickner, who's forward, bending the knee, getting that rangy frame down low to defend for no run. Crane in for the final ball of this over. On a length, and Tickner defends. Again, not the most convincing shot, but no damage done. And at the end of the 78th over, Derbyshire 198 for 9, trailing Glamorgan by 39. So a little uh, conference between the uh, two batters. Chapel on 20, Tickner on 4. There's a change of bowling at the and uh, Glamorgan, and Glamorgan will bring back the Pakistani test man to uh, try to uh, knock over Ten or Jack and keep preserve something of a lead for Glamorgan. 39 runs between the two sides at the moment. Chapel one of only four Derbyshire players so far to get into double figures. Harry Kane, 25. David Lloyd, 60. Wayne Madsen, 63. Chapel 20, not out. But uh, six single-figure scores on the card already. Chapel on 20. Hamza, the Pakistan test man. He's in, left arm round, bowls, and uh, that's jabbed back to him by Chapel as he uh, goes through uh, an attempted pull shot, which probably wouldn't have been justified. Aiming towards the empty grandstand. We will take tea for wicket falls now. Uh, frustratingly. <laughs> For those looking forward to tea, uh, we will bat on if a wicket doesn't f fall. There's Hamza Bowles and uh, Chapel defends that one to mid-wicket and there is no run. Some of the forecasts suggested that there might be the possibility of a, a shower around uh, this time of day. Let's see what the, uh, the Met Office is saying. Cardiff, Cardiff. No, that possibility seems to have receded. So it's just the light that uh, might prove an issue today. As that is a full length ball from Hamza, driven by Chapel on the leg side. And uh, there's no run. Something of a movement in the field for the fourth ball. And already Sam Northeast is trying to cut off the singles. It's a bit early to go for the uh, that change in strategy, but the, the field converges anyway for the fourth ball of the over. From Hamza to Chapel, who plays that one defensively to mid-wicket, and there is no run. The uh, Met Office is uh, suggesting that uh, tomorrow should be okay. We may be through the game by tomorrow, Monday. Likely to be interruptions if we're still going. 
Listening to BBC Sport Online here also via the uh, Glamorgan and Derbyshire County websites as uh, Hamza comes in to bowl to Chapel who whips the wrists on that one but uh, finds Asa Tribe at mid-wicket. Tribe earlier this afternoon taking a vital catch to dismiss Wayne Madsen who has appeared to be above head height and Tribe managed to parry it and uh, catch it on the second attempt. One of a couple of wickets for Dan Douthwaite. Three apiece for Mason Crane and James Harris. And one so far to Mir Hamza. As uh, he finds a solid defensive bat from Zach Chappell. But Glamorgan have achieved their aim. And the back half of that over of uh, keeping... Chapel on strike and getting to bowl a new over against the, the number 11 Blair Tickner, the New Zealand pace bowler on debut. So 198 for 9. The deficit remains 39 runs. So it's going to be fairly close. Useful runs for this last wicket. Between Chapel and Tickner. Tickner, the number 11 on strike. He's faced 15 deliveries for his one scoring shot boundary. Mason Crane looking for a fourth. Got three clustered round the bat as Tickner gropes forward and is beaten. So Ingram and Northeast, two of the uh, Senior statesman of this Glamorgan side, next to Chris Cook, who's another. And there is Tribe at short leg, as Tickner is back and watching that one turn away from his stumps through to Chris Cook. Tribe crouches, crane in. Bowls squirted by Tickner down towards backward point. There might have been a sharp single there, but uh, they showed no sign of risking it. As, uh, in comes Crane again from the river end. Bowls, Tickner back on his stumps. Point made by R.M. Kane on uh, X, stroke Twitter, saying the ricochet from Young Tribe's leg off uh, Carlson's bowling. Am I alone in thinking these should no longer give rise to a catch because the fielder is wearing wicket-keeping pads under his trousers? As Kane pushes for... Oh, Tickner pushes forward and he's bowled. And Crane has a fourth. Derbyshire are dismissed for 198 on the stroke of the scheduled T interval, Glamorgan got the number 11 to stay on strike. Zach Chappell is not out 20. Considerable turn on that delivery. That one was a leg break. The uh, previous one that bowled Connors was a very fine googly, which you'll find on social media. 198 all out. Crane 4 for 60, Hamza 1 for 41 at the other end. Zach Chappell is 20 not out. Update for BBC Radio Wales in uh, a moment or two. Otherwise, uh, commentary will continue at around about quarter past four here on BBC Sport Online.
For those of you who would like to keep your score sheets up to date, I'll give you the Glamorgan Bowling figures in just a moment. So Derbyshire 198 all out, with Zach Chapel unbeaten on 20 and in. The total there were three extras comprising one by and two no balls. Here are the Glamorgan bowling figures. Mayor Hamza, 16 overs, four maidens, one for 41. James Harris, 19 overs, eight maidens, three for 28. Mason Crane, 25.5 overs, four maidens, four for 60. Kieran Carlson, seven overs, one maiden, north for 36. And Dan Dankwaite, 12 overs, 3 maidens, 2 for 32. I've also got the latest scores from the other games taking place elsewhere today in the Vitality County Championship. We'll start at the Utilita Bowl where a T, Lancashire 130 for 2, still trailing Hampshire by 237 runs. At Edgbaston, Durham a 90 for 2, that's after Warwickshire declared on 698 for 3. At Northampton, Middlesex a 33 for 1, in reply to Northampton just 552 for 6. At Chelmsford, Kent a 124 for 1, trailing Essex by 405 runs. At Bristol, Gloucestershire are 218 for 6. That's in reply to Yorkshire's 326. At Grace Road in Leicester, Sussex are 206 for 3, trailing Leicestershire by 132 runs. At Trent Bridge, Worcestershire a 90 for 3 at T, still trailing Nottinghamshire by 309 runs. And finally at the Keir Oval, Surrey at 272 for 4, trailing Somerset by 13 runs.
Two open for batting in Glamorgan's second innings, Zane Ball for Sam and Billy Root. And two open the bowling for Derbyshire at the Cathedral Road end, Zach Chappell. Good afternoon and welcome back for the final session. Tea having been coincided with the change of innings and Glamorgan lead by 39 on first innings. Zach Chappell having done his best to reduce that deficit with 20 not out. will be bowling to Zain Ul Hassan in rather murky conditions. The rain has stayed away but I think the light might prevent us from getting 32 further overs. That is what is scheduled to be bowled as Chapel is in to bowl and Ul Hassan defends back down the pitch and there is no run. Nick Webb, Dave Fletcher and Dav Pritchard steering you again through the evening session such as uh, we get. I don't think it's going to get much brighter. But Derbyshire might be quite happy to um, switch to spin, I suppose, after Thompson's first innings efforts. Well, it was interesting to see the bowlers warming up, and with the bowlers warming up was Harry Kane as well. As uh, Chapel is in to Ul Hassan, who blocks it on the leg side, and there is no run. So where would Glamorgan want to be at the close, Nick, if we get the 32 hours in? Well, I suppose you. Well, they want to be without loss, obviously. Yes, yeah, so that's a, a few stupid, wickets. Stupid, uh, a stupid, I think they. Uh, stupid question to ask. I think, given the scoring rates of of this game, they might settle for having 80 runs on the board, something like that, in 32 overs. Yes, I think Derby should need four wickets minimum, possibly five. As Chapel is in to bowl, oh. and Ul Hassan edges but doesn't reach slip and it's a no ball anyway so that's another two on the Glamorgan lead sorry I'll, I'll, try, and I'll try and calm down <laughs> <laughs> I, I think from Glamorgan's point of view anything two or fewer wickets down would be okay for them this evening yeah no, I think I think they will be very much in the box they're pretty much just about getting into the box seats at the moment I'm not sure they're in them as Chapel is in to bowl to Ul Hassan, down leg side, there's an appeal for catch behind, but not a hugely convincing one. Now David Lloyd was the one who appealed most, and the ball was thrown in the air by uh, Brooke Guest, but... Yeah. It's like Chapel means business now, he's taken his sleeveless sweater off as well. As he retreats towards us at the Cathedral Road end, the Derbyshire card a rather sorry tale during the afternoon they took lunch at 117 for three they added just 81 runs for the loss of a further seven wickets as Ul Hassan defends back to chapel I'm glad you did that myself I got it hopelessly wrong before <laughs> uh, when I was on the radio in 33.5 um, overs so they need a similar session here and then they're sort of back in it. Mm. Can they get a session like that? Because it, it's not, it wasn't the top of the order necessarily, but I don't know. Good game, though. It is. As uh, Chapel is into Ul Hassan, a wide one that he carves through the offside for four ends to the point boundary. The empty grandstand away to our right. Six without loss. Morgan lead by. 45 and the uh, well there, there must be millions listening to us uh, and watching us on the stream because uh, there are a few people on the ground on this chilly <laughs> afternoon in which uh, I certainly haven't ventured outside. I spoke to David Griffin at tea very briefly mm. he, he confirmed how cold it was I think he's thinking about putting trousers on. Good heavens. Yeah. As uh, Chapel Bowls, Ul Hassan thinks about a single, comes a few metres down, so does Root. Wisely, they decide against it. Six runs there with the first over, two from a no ball, four off the bat. Glamorgan lead by 45 with all their second innings wickets standing. He also confirmed that it was getting gloomy. 
Because hmm. he has obviously has the light meter. We're going to see Alex Thompson, incidentally, open from the uh, the River Taff end. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's got the light meter on his uh, very expensive camera. And uh, he can confirm that it's dark, which can, yeah, which we, we told you anyway. We can sort of <laughs> suggest how dark it is, but he can actually scientifically em tell. Em empirically <laughs> tell us. <laughs> Yeah, he, he does a good job on that kind of thing for me, uh, undercover. Uh, when people suggest somebody's lights are better than somebody else's, he can give me chapter and verse on which are the best floodlights in the country, that kind <laughs> of thing. So, uh, say, for instance, somebody in the northeast suggested that their lights were the best in the country, I have the evidence to suggest that they're not. Right, OK. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Alex Thompson's going to bowl. <laughs> used, when Glamorgan were preparing this uh, revamped ground and uh, having floodlights in in the uh, in the noughties, so Mike Fatkin, the then secretary, during the the preparations would wax lyrical about the lux capacity or something uh, like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Got a good looks. Thompson then around the wicket to Billy Root. First ball is pushed out into the offside. They're going through for a quick single. Dahl will have a shot at the stumps and get the bales whipped off by Brooke Guest. There was a dive put in by uh, Ol Hassan. Uh, he got there because the umpire has decided he's not out. But he had to get the dive out. Always good to see the batsmen get the dive out. Make them uh, make a mess of their gloves. I would say that he's, he's odds on getting in and he's, well, he's miles in. Mm. Miles in. A foot. <laughs> yeah, a foot in. It's enough, isn't it? A foot is as good as a mile. That's a foot in length rather than a physical foot. Yes, yes, his feet were nowhere near it. No, the bat was in yes. by a foot. But it was a sharp one. I mean, a lot of players tend to take a sharp one off the mark. Exeter pulled a goal back at Port Vale. Things are turning. Mm -hmm. Things are turning. Cheltenham still losing. That is good news from a Burton Albion perspective. And their solitary shot on target means that they still lead by a goal to nil. <laughs> and long may that continue. I think I've dropped one of my pens down that hole in oh the no. floor. Oh no. I don't it think I'll get that back. Do you want another one? I've got no, I'm sorry, I've got another one. one. Got another one. We can't. Uh, we can't afford to throw pens away with yeah. Lily these days. I'll have a dig for it later when we're off air. Seven without loss. Just one ball bowled of this over. I've no idea what we're messing around at here, but we are. Short leg, couple of slips. And Thompson is in to bowl to Ul Hassan, who pushes this ball out into the offside. Tumbling stop by Anna's Dahl. And uh, Thompson has the ball back in his hands. In he comes. Balls to Ul Hassan. That one does turn, but turns away from the left hander, so we could just leave it to go through to Guest. to see David Lloyd attacking. I think he has to. As Thompson is in again, that's a flatter delivery and pushed into the offside by Ul Hassan. Yes, Ul Hassan is not necessarily an attacking batter, but I think he'll take any opportunity. I think you have to, don't you, in this turning surface. It's an absolute minefield out there. I, for one, am delighted to see it as this next delivery is defended with the full face of the bat by El Hassan through the stardust on the middle of the square, picked up by Hannah's Dahl. Seven without loss, a lead of 46. What would Derbyshire want to chase? Well, as few as possible, clearly. As Thompson bowls, that one is cut into the offside, obviously, and uh, Picked up by Harry Kame as they go through for a single. El Hassan pinches the strike, moves on to five. Root has one, eight without loss after two. Yeah, it's suggestive. A chase of around their first inning score, around the 200 mark, would prove a, an interesting game. If Glamorgan could get a 250 lead, they oh, would, I think that would fancy be themselves. Yes, I think that would be enough. Just to let... Uh, 
I'm sure the, probably most people aren't interested, but Stephen, as you've now had a man sent off. Right. Okay, it's Burton, this is a this is a remarkable afternoon. I will never be welcomed back at Burton Albion again if I ever was in the first place. <laughs> Although I will be there on Tuesday when they play Charlton. Chapel sets off for his second over to bowl to Ul Hassan, who uh, knocks it down into the gully, and uh, there's no run. You working or just watching? Yes, no um, working. Working on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my last game. My last game of football of the season. I hope. All right. I think that's the uh, that's the plan. Remarkably, I have two games of rugby union left. As uh, Chapel is in to bowl to Al Hassan, who leaves the ball go that comes back. A degree, but rather too late to disturb the timbers. My two remaining games of rugby union for the BBC, at least, will be uh, Wales against Italy, women's rugby international at the uh, Principality Stadium. I've seen the adverts for it. Her story. Absolutely. Well, they're everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. It should be a good crowd, do you think? I'd hope they they they've been a, they've got up to about six thousand next yeah. door at the Arms Park as. Chapel bowls and uh, Al Hassan defends on the offside. Hopefully they'll get into five figures. Um, hopefully they'll give loads of tickets away as well to the mm. the young folk of the neighbourhood to encourage them for the future. They're playing Scotland at tea time, aren't they? Yes, the, the Wales, it's kicking the, off in quarter an hour. Wales women, I noticed they'd sold out the ground there. Is that the small ground next to Murrayfield? Yeah, it's about 8,000 yeah. capacity, yeah. I believe. Yeah, nice little ground. As uh, Chapel into bowl, worked off his legs by Ul Hassan. He's timed that one nicely, actually. It may just be caught inside the boundary ropes. They should take a very easy three, despite the uh, the pursuit by Tickno, is that? Mm. Throwing himself at the ball. Heroically. Heroically, to save one run. Well, if this match is <laughs> won by one run or one wicket... Uh, he'll have another big one part to play over. Then they, yes, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be at the crease as well <laughs> if Derbyshire win by one wicket. Uh, you could think, well, that's the run I saved in the field at 4.29 on Saturday afternoon. Root on strike for the first time against Chapel, who carves it towards the gully, and it's well stopped by, inevitably, Anuj Dahl in the gully, where he seems to... To live, really. Yeah, natural, natural habitat for others. Derbyshire cricketing sense. 50 is the lead. And uh, for these uh, few remaining spectators, braving the cold, it really is absorbing stuff out in the middle. As Root drives through the offside and smashes that one away for four. And uh, Glamorgan move onwards to 15 without loss, a lead of 54, and Root has his first boundary. And Chapel takes his sweater with a degree of chagrin. It was interesting in the first innings, I think the opening bowlers bowled four rows each before uh, David Lloyd acted and uh, changed things around a little bit. I wonder how long it will take... Uh, Lloyd to do something similar in the second. He's, he's got no wriggle room at all at the moment. Needs wickets. Mm. Morgan off to a, a decent enough start, going along at five and over. Well, if the light uh, does get bad, I suspect he might say, right, I, I still want to blow, bowl my quicks and we'll get off. Yes, rather I, than, think, um, I, I think you're absolutely right. Risking the rather part-time spin of Kane with mm. no disrespect intended. Here is uh, Alex Thompson beginning a new over. That one turns sharply and goes about a foot past the edge of the bat. Turned too much, too short. And as a result, it was taken comfortably by Brooke Guest. No real harm to the batter, Al Hassan, who faces up now. That one keeps a little bit low, it seemed to me. Turned into the leg side. 
Fielded by Lewis Reese, single taken. Al Hassan moves on to nine. 16 without loss. And a win here would be very, very big indeed, given for, for either side, given the way the games are going elsewhere. Sussex, 300, 212 for four in reply to Leicester, she's 338. Well, that game isn't even halfway yet. It's the next delivery from Thompson beats the edge of Roots back. That was a good delivery. A little bit quicker, maybe? Yes, I thought it was quicker. And uh, the bales were taken off as well by Brooke Guest. Gloucestershire 231 for eight in reply to Yorkshire's 326. So that looks like a one innings shootout. And middle sex 49 for one, oh dear. As uh, this one's turned into the leg side by uh, Root. And they pick up a single as the ball is picked up by an Iron Donald. Who scored in League One? It's 2-2 two -two at Port Vale, is it? Oh, daff at the back there. Give that man a gold star. <laughs> 17 without loss, which also means that Burton can afford to draw now. The Stevenage are all over them by the sound of it. As Thompson bowls, that's a very wide delivery. <laughs> he does well to reach it. There's all Hassan. It's well stopped by Anuj Dahl, because mm. when he did reach it, he hit it quite hard. At the other game, incident, the Middlesex are 49 for one in reply to Northampton, just 552 for six declared. In comes Thompson again and bowls. That one is defended by Ul Hassan. Back towards the bowler. So a couple of overs from either end. Two overs of spin, two overs of Chapel, who, uh, where is he? Yes, he's removing his sweater. So I think we're going to see another over of Chapel. But at the moment, David Lloyd is in conversation with Wayne Madsen, who you would imagine would be his. Well, he certainly is the most experienced lieutenant. And Lloyd's saying, um, do you want to be in charge for uh, 20 minutes while I nip off and celebrate Wrexham's 5-0 uh, yes. uh, advantage uh, over Forest Green yeah, Rovers? Good. Yeah. Who is it that uh, Wrexham hope don't win? Uh, Barrow, one of them? Yeah. Barrow are losing 2-0. Who's the other one, Dav? MK and whoever they're MK playing. dons a 2-1 down to Mansfield. That would be it, wouldn't it? It's a David Lloyd party. And we're all in it. <laughs> Chapel is in to bowl and uh, Root plays it to point and Dahl fields and there is no run. Tremier's 2-1 lead at Newport is being horribly overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> in the championship, Swansea City... Uh, watched by Edward Bevan, 0-0 uh, at home to Rotherham. Oh, he'll be, uh, Rotherham. be morning tomorrow when he's 0-0. <laughs> <nil -nil. laughs> Cardiff City at 2-1 down at Millwall. But uh, both South Wales sides will finish mid-championship somewhere as uh, Root plays that one on the offside. And Came Fields coming round from cover point. So... Uh, the Derbyshire field at the moment, on the leg side, there is a wide mid on, and there's a man forward of square near the umpire. There's a deepish fine leg. Two slips, a gully, backward point, a billy root sort of field. You need at least four in that area, a cover and a mid off. Chapel bowls, root drives back to the bowler. Top end of the championship is something that fascinates me. They've got the three sides there. You've got Leicester City, who lost to Plymouth last night. You've got Leeds United, who lost at lunchtime at home to Blackburn Rovers, who couldn't win a game for weeks and weeks and weeks under their new manager. And then Ipswich Town, who obviously went up out of League One last season, and they're being held at home by Middlesbrough. It's like nobody, they're all thinking, oh, I don't really want to go to the, cha to the Premier League. <laughs> As uh, Chapel is in to bowl and Root tries to cut and misses as it goes through to Gast. Swansea have scored. Oh good. That will cheer Edward Have you up. heard Edward? <laughs> yes, that's how I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I can't repeat on the radio exactly what he said. <laughs> Dancing in the in the seats of the Swansea.com stadium Mr Bevan. David Lloyd will be happy about his personal score and about his football team's score, but can he be happy about his team's, cricket team's score? Not at the moment, as Root plays another ball to backward point. And uh, there is no run. Tickner warming up. 
no sign of the South East Wales League fixtures being uh, knocked back in the calendar no. as yet. I can, no, that's uh, good. I can report. So if anyone does have a spare super sopper that they'd like to lend to an impecunious Valleys club, then uh, <laughs> get in touch and they'll pass you on. Chapel is into bowl two. Root, who drives through backward point, who may have got a hand to it. Dahl, he has saved a couple of runs because that would have run away had he not done so, but they're through for two nonetheless. And... Uh, Morgan move on to 19 without loss. Al Hassan has nine. Root has eight at the end of the over. Glamorgan lead by 58 runs. I know it's football chat, but it's Saturday afternoon. It'll all stop again by five o'clock. Newport, uh, Notts County, discuss. Uh, they, they've got a positive goal difference of six. They, they haven't done as well as Wrexham, having gone up with Wrexham last season, of course. Scored 86 conceded 80 in 43 matches. Now, that's, a team, football. You, that's a team you want to go and watch <laughs> on a regular basis, isn't it? a neutral, if there are any neutrals at Meadow Lane. If your uh, blood pressure will stand it. Wow. They are remarkable. Alex Thompson to continue from the uh, River Tough end. Around the wicket, bowling to Ul Hassan, who uh, carves this out into the offside, almost catches Harry came out with the... Uh, swerve of the ball. I think we can safely say we're going to see Blair Tickner momentarily or at the end of this over at least. Oh, not the American momentarily, please. Do you not like that? I don't not mind hugely. That. I don't mind that. I'll try and remember. I don't <laughs> want to offend anybody <laughs> unless I have to. Thompson in bowls. That's uh, pushed into the offside by Root, fielded by Sam Connors. I'll do my best to... Uh Avoid an incorrect description of gulls, which I know is one of your pet hates. Yes, and I'm not a big fan of the seagull. Well, because they don't exist, but... Yeah, I know. We all have our little foibles. <laughs> that one turns away from <laughs> from Root and goes through to Brooke Guest. 20 for no wicket, which means the lead is 59 already. Seems a lot. Derbyshire are desperate for a breakthrough here. There's an umbrella gone up down below us. As this next one beats the edge of the bat and goes through to Brooke Guest. He almost <laughs> topples over as well, Billy Root. I think Brooke Guest was waiting to see if he fully toppled over before removing a bail. He didn't, fortunately for Root, but he was on the verge of falling flat on his face there for a moment. <laughs> he had to put it down his hand to steady himself <laughs> and make been, sure they that would have been very their foot was at home. Ignominious way to get out. Here comes Thompson again. That's a quick one. Strikes the pad. Big appeal for leg before wicket. Not out, says umpire Bainton. Outside the line. Uh, must have been height. Unless it hit the bat, but it seemed to hit the bat. Decent shot. Yeah, Thompson, Thompson liked it. Pitch somewhere around leg. Maybe a fraction outside. Mm. It's Thompson again. In the balls. That one is driven straight back to him by Root. All the way along the floor. Thompson stops it and goes to collect his cap off Neil Bainton because that's the end of the over. 20 without loss after six. Still 26 to go today. The lead for Glamorgan with Ul Hassan on 10 and Root on 8 is 59. As we march onwards in the gloom here in central Cardiff. Lights, uh, lights on the board, fairly prominent. I believe Tom Hamer has scored a second goal for Burton Albion. The scenes are dramatic. I only know because I'm going to give Pete, the manager, uh, doing the commentary. Can you just tidy that goal up? I think I called him Ben Hamer, who was obviously <laughs> a goalkeeper for somebody else. <laughs> I have done it in the past, but uh, bless him. Pete doesn't see them very often. It must be quite... Uh, yeah, yes. awkward. <laughs> my my admiration to people who do football commentary, it's not a... I, I've done the 30-second updates uh, when people have been desperate, but uh, never a commentary as such. No, you sort of get used to the patterns in the same way that you'd get used to the patterns in rugby. You've got a fair mm. idea who scored, haven't you? If it's a rolling ball, the hookers go oh, yeah. score. Because <laughs> they're the leading scorers in rugby union these days. Yes. And if it's somebody out wide, it's generally the winger. You, yeah. You've got an idea. 
You have indeed, but uh, <coughs> you have to uh, you have to know when to hedge your bets and when not. As Blair Tickner takes over from Zach Chaplin, his first ball is down leg side and uh, helped on its way by Al Hassan to fine leg for a single. Twenty one without loss, sixty runs in the lead. I find the trick in doing rugby for the the highlights is to, if you're not sure, just announce the team try and give the score and then have a bit of a guess at the scorer yeah, so that they can be edited off if necessary. Yeah, we've all done that in every sport that we've ever covered. Bloggs was in there, so was Smith, so was Jones, but it's a it's a team try really. <laughs> <laughs> they won't care who scored. <laughs> the one who scored it does. And I'll tell you when the public address uh, announcer has <laughs> said it. As Tickner is in to bowl, dropped on the leg side by Root, thought about a single. Al Hassan rightly was uh, not interested. Uh, back in the less professional days of uh, club rugby, of course, if you weren't doing full commentary, you could always uh, run down to the touchline and ask the, uh, the nearest kit man or, or whatever. I have been known to inquire in the dressing room at half time before now. <laughs> Don't think that sort of thing happens these days. Tickner is in to bowl to Root, who gets something on it as it goes down leg side. It'll be a run of some description. Uh, it'll be a leg by. There's Morgan move to 22 without loss. Who's listening to music? Not sure unless there's well, we are at the moment. something going on at the the hockey centre oh, behind okay, us. Yeah, they occasionally like blast out music. That's fair enough. Might be half time in a big match. There's Tickner <sighs> balls and all the sun <laughs> shoulders armed and sees it go through to uh, Guest, but not without a little excitement on the part of uh, the Derbyshire fielders and your BBC Radio Derby correspondent. That was a good leave, wasn't it? <laughs> that was a good leave. Wow. Uh, one fewer coat of varnish on St. Al Hassan's off stump as that one went through. As uh, Tickner runs away from us and bowls and Al Hassan does well to get on top of that one, shorter delivery and defend it out on the leg side. There's no run. I mean, I wouldn't fancy facing Blair Tickner in any light whatsoever, but uh, no, particularly can't. not in these rather murky conditions. My phone, it's just on the phone. It tells me this is uh, Owl City and Carly Ray Jepsen we're listening to at the moment. Wow. Shazam. No. No? Another app. Defended by Al Hassan down into the slip snow run. My phone just tells me all the time when music comes on. It's right. not Shazam. I haven't got Shazam on it. It just tells me, and I've no idea why. I don't know how to disable it. Good heavens. Uh, I think it's probably time that uh, Mr Pritchard uh, mm. had his dulcet tones heard over the airwaves. I'm disappointed that Daff hasn't told us that Exeter had now taken the lead at Port Vale, which is an absolutely remarkable turnaround. I told you you could always rely on Exeter City, I think, earlier on, didn't I? Yes. Here's Alex Thompson to begin a new over from the, uh, the River Taff end. That would be remarkable. He's on his way in now to bowl to Billy Root who defends the first ball back down the track and there is no run me telling everybody the Derbyshire score in the uh, in the five o'clock intro is going to really just kill the mood isn't it if Derby have won Burton have won next delivery cut away out into the offside by Root for a single out towards came 23 without loss 9 to Root 11 to Al Hassan the lead 62. Wow. Never in my wildest dreams. Morgan 23 without loss. In comes Thompson again and bowls to Al Hassan who just guides this down to Connors who's feeling a backward point. Got, he's got a couple to go past the edge of the bat, hasn't he, Thompson? He isn't turning it extravagantly just yet. I'm sure uh, he won't have bowled with a new ball too many times. 
in his career. It's not the norm as he's in and bowls. That one is driven out into the offside by Ul Hassan for a single. Sensible batting from Glamorgan will put them in a winning position. They don't really need to take any risks. There's still a lot of this game to go. They can bat all day tomorrow if they like. They might have an eye on the weather. But they don't have to go at 4, 5 and over. If they go along at 2.5 to 3, they will have a big enough lead. By tea time tomorrow, you would have thought. Thompson in bowling to uh, Billy Root, who pushes this up towards Tickner at mid-off. And they scamper through for a very comfortable single 25 without loss. That's the thing, yeah. Glamorgan don't need to force it from here. Bat watchfully and you, you'll get runs. It's not an easy surface to play on, but it's not exactly a, a minefield either. That's just the extravagant turn that we've seen throughout the game since just before lunch on day one. Thompson is in. Bowls wide of the off stump. Ball turns wider through to... Brooke Guest, as Al, Al Hassan just uh, lifts his bat out of the way. And at the end of eight overs, Glamorgan at 25 without loss. They lead by 64 runs now. And we were talking with the similarities to Australia and New Zealand with the Kookaburra ball and different pitches. It's more like a test match in India, this opening with a spinner, isn't it? I know, I know. But if he's played, which is the windy city? Is it is it Auckland or Wellington? One of the two down in uh, New Zealand is very windy, isn't it? So he'd be used to playing in the wind as well, I would have thought. Well, I, I, I plays for Central District, so I don't know where, where they're based. I think it's similar to, Austin, to New Zealand, isn't it? Here is Tickner to Root. Sharp delivery, which Root walks on to the leg side. Yeah, he's noticeably quicker than anyone else on display in this match, isn't he, Tickner? I think so. And the good thing is he'll, d he'll have a spell, you'd have thought, here. He won't have to bowl again until tomorrow morning, so he might be able to bowl as quickly tomorrow morning as he, as he does this evening. And he certainly puts everything into every delivery, does Tickner, as he's in again, and Root flays that through the offside. He'll pick up a single to point point is Harry Kane, which means he's going from one side of the boundary on one boundary on one side all the way to the other boundary on the other side in between overs bless him it's a long shift third goal for Derby County Sonny Bradley with his second of the game in his first game back after suspension Tickner's around the wicket to Ul Hassan who defends for no run, just running it down to one of the slip fielders. Peterborough United have imploded today. I mean, they've done it a couple of times this season, but they're losing 5-0 at Oxford. Whoever's running the drinks for Derbyshire might want to slip in a bottle of bubbly for David Lloyd because Mansfield are 3-1 up at MK Dons. Uh, it's all over. Barrow are 3-0 down at Gillingham. Wrexham are going up as Tickner is in and Ul Hassan leaves that outside the off stump. I assume he's been a Wrexham fan all his life. You'd hope so, wouldn't you? He's from the right part of the world, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're, well, over the age of 10 <laughs> or, or thereabouts, you're, you'll you have put up with enough mm. of fallow periods as Wrexham fans over the years. These are the good times as Tickner is in again and Hassan plays wildly outside the off stump we've just been saying Glamorgan don't need to force the issue but Hassan seems to think differently yes well the shot that he got out to in the first innings was uncharacteristic wasn't he, he was stumped as he went for a big shot down the ground and that was equally disappointing from a Glamorgan perspective but we'll just have given well it will, it will have hacked off I'm sure Blair Tickner, but it will have given him some encouragement as well. In what looked like a brand new pair of cricket boots as well. Tickner is into Ul Hassan, who plays more sensibly to this one, defending on the back foot, and that's the end of the ninth over. Glamorgan a 26 without loss. That gives them a lead of 65 over Derbyshire. Yes, it's uh, what they could do with a breakthrough. It's as simple as that, really, isn't it? They need a breakthrough here, Derbyshire. They need to get four wickets, I reckon, by the close of play today. 
keep themselves firmly in the hunt for their first victory of the season. Of course, everybody's looking for their first victory of the season. Yeah, but and if they are to get a breakthrough, you'd fancy it would be a, from one of the bowlers at either end now. Yes, well, they've been the pick, haven't they? Two wickets for uh, Tickner in the first innings and seven for Thompson. You would uh, you would expect them to be the the biggest threat. Sam Connors with the other wicket in the first innings, of course. Alex Thompson's going to continue from, I imagine, the poly bowl right through till the end of the day's play. Around the wicket. He comes to Billy Root, who's uh, caught in the pad uh, outside the off outside the line. Is the immediate indication from Neil Bainton. I like it when an umpire tells you what's happening. Makes it a lot easier for everybody. Yeah, no, he was going to miss off stump. That's, that's a fair enough, fair enough call. Well, there is no redress anyway, but that was a fair enough call from Mr. Bainton. As in comes. Thompson again, and that one is pushed into the onside. They're going to go, go through for a quick single. Initially, Brooke Guest looked like he might have a shot at the stumps, but in the end, he just passed it to Lewis Reese, and Root moves on to 12. Joins Ul Hassan on that score. Uncle Morgan at 27 without loss, leading by 66. Yeah, as you say, good when you hear or see the umpire explain why he wasn't given. One of the benefits of no DRS, isn't it, that they don't have to. They keep their cards close to their chest. Stephen and have scored. Thompson is in, bowls, and that one is striking on the pad, and he's been given this time, and all Hassan has gone. He doesn't like it. Thompson has the breakthrough. Derbyshire desperate for wickets. All Hassan eventually drags, him, drags himself away from the crease, and Glamorgan a 27 for one, leading by 66. I wonder why he didn't like it. I'm not sure why he didn't like it, really. It's a pretty good shout. Just above the knee roll, but he's back foot was back, it hit him on the back leg, uh, Ul Hassan stood there as the finger went up, didn't look massively keen on leaving but he has to go and Derbyshire get that first breakthrough Yeah, much needed breakthrough for Derbyshire and as you said Dave, Ul Hassan didn't look too pleased with it but in real time and on replay it looked pretty close, he was a long way back, it did hit him above the knee roll but when you take a step back that much there's not a great distance for the ball to travel between pad and stump and it looked like it would have been hitting the top of off comfortably. So Derbyshire make the breakthrough. Thompson has his eighth wicket of the match. Some performance from him so far. And Glamorgan lose their first wicket. They're 27 for one. The lead is 66. And as long as they can add to that lead before the close... Won't be too dispirited by that, but they will be mindful of the danger Thompson poses after that virtuoso performance in the first innings. Absolutely, Thompson's best bowling in in an, an innings. I'm trying to find, but uh, his best bowling for Derbyshire was five foot, as we knew. It doesn't have that in there, so I'll have to go and have a look at it somewhere else. You got you got eight against Sussex at Hove last season in a match. He's already got eight, and there are nine more available. And he's still got three more balls of this over to go as uh, Sam Northeast marches out to the middle. Made 11 in the first innings, bowled by uh, Blair Tickner first time around. Upper and Town have confirmed their place in the National North playoffs with a game to go. Excellent news for Billy Heath's side. A good cup run as well in the FA Cup this season. I wish the full time whistle would go at Stevenage, were not they? Leading, about the leading 2 1. <sighs> 27 for 1, Glamorgan. There is a slip, a leg slip, and a short leg for Sam Northeast. And as Dahl is quite close in as well at mid wicket catching, there are two men other than the slip and the uh, wicket keeper on the offside. Lewis Reese at mid off, and Zach Chappell in the covers. 
and in comes Thompson and bowls. Northeast is beaten. Has he been caught? He's been he's been bowled. He's been bowled. Has he first ball or was it a catch? Either way, it's two and two for Alex Thompson. The bails are still on, so it must have been a caught behind. And Sam Northeast goes first ball, and all of a sudden, Derbyshire are cock a hoop out there. Looking on the replay, I wasn't entirely sure it's gone. Oh, it's a leg before wicket then, because it's hit the pad on the way through. It went through the gate almost, but it's hit the pad right in front. And that's got to be leg before wicket. There we go. I got there in the end, just before the score has announced it. I knew I'd get there if I'd said every single mode of dismissal. Either way, either way, Sam Northeast has gone for naught. Two in two balls. He's on a hat trick. And that was another lovely delivery from Thompson coming around the wicket to the right handed Northeast. Bit of drift, pitched on off, straightened just enough. And that was pretty clearly out. No complaints from Northeast. He did stand his ground a moment, but more just to check that he was given out, I think, rather than to show any dissent about the decision as Kieran Carlson strides out. Glamorgan having started their innings on pretty steady footing. Just wobbling a bit here as the clouds gather and darken once more. Suddenly seems a, a less than inviting situation to come into bat in. Yes. Yes, yeah, not not pleasant. Wind blowing, as you say. Gloomy, you can tell how gloomy it is by how bright the scoreboard is. And it is very bright. Not quite as bright as that runner's top running down the River Taff pathway. Kieran Carlson, leading scorer in the first innings with 74. We'll face the hat-trick ball from Alex Thompson. If he gets the hat-trick, David Griffin will be uh, full of stats at some point. I might have to nip off. Well, I'll get to the end of the hour, but Burton is still playing. Who's got the helmet there? It's uh, Lewis Reese is going to be another close catcher. He's just been brought his helmet by Matt Lamb. So we're going to have a slip, a leg slip, a leg gully and a short leg. Uh, Alex Thompson is on a hat-trick. Kieran Carlson, the new batter. Thompson bowls. It's a full delivery that almost, almost gets underneath Carlson's bat, but he manages to get it out into the onside where it's fielded by Anuj Dahl. Of course, Thompson's now got nine in the match. <laughs> Mad. It is April, isn't it? Absolutely remarkable. Yeah, it's a tale of the spinners so far this match. Thompson in again bowls to Carlson. That one is turned into the leg side. He's off the mark with a single out towards backward square leg. Glamorgan at the end of the over, a 28 for two. Different complexion on the game. They still have a lead, though, and it's a substantial one of 67. Root has 12, and Carlson has one. Like you say, different complexion on the match, and it's amazing how differently things can seem with just a couple of wickets. Two balls have changed everything here. Glamorgan seemed to be relatively coasting in the early stages of their innings but two wickets and two balls from Alex Thompson have swung the momentum of this innings back in Derbyshire's favour they're right back in this game and they'll be looking to make further inroads before the close of play it's still gloomy overhead but it's no darker than it was towards the end of the previous session Oh, grey, overcast. A chilly breeze in the air as well. As player Tickner stands at the top of his run-up. And he runs in to bowl to Kieran Carlson, who defends on the offside for no run. Carlson comes down the pitch to do a spot of gardening. He'll be keen to stick around now, the Glamorgan batter. Top scored for the Welsh County in the first innings with a fluent 74. Now he faces the New Zealander, Tickner, who rolls a short ball down the leg side. Guest manages to 
stop it from running away for a boundary, but the two batters will get through for one bite. Grossly unfair on the keeper. It was a fair distance down the leg side, wasn't it? Should have been a wide. Morally, that was a wide. You've got the extras column and then you've got the moral <laughs> extras. <laughs> we'll make new allowances as Tickner bounces on his toes and runs in, elbows out. The ball on a length which Root plays on the back foot. A little unconvincingly, but ball lands safely. Derbyshire's fielders noticeably chirpier after those two wickets. Plenty of clapping and encouragement for Tickner as he looks to build on the good work of Alex Thompson at the other end. Here comes Tickner. Again, arms pumping. So just back of a length, a sharp delivery once more, and Root prods that into the offside for no run. It's strange, isn't it? The conventional wisdom is that uh, Kookaburra ball is soft and useless to the bowlers after uh, 20, 30 overs. In this match, uh, Glamorgan lost two wickets in the first 30 overs, but declined mostly after that. Derbyshire didn't lose their second wicket until the 30th over, but still didn't go anywhere with the bat. So the old ball is pretty difficult to score with. Here's Tickner again. And Root plays this through towards the point region for a single. One ball left in the 11th over. And is this going to be the, the light consultation, do you think? Does look like it. Umpires Bington and Paley coming together for a conversation. Pointing to different ends of the ground, perhaps reminding each other that the floodlights are not in operation for this game. I think there's going to be a, uh, a check on the lights, the light levels, or are they just... No, they're going to carry on for the time being. I thought they'd take a reading of some sort there. It doesn't seem to have deteriorated in the last hour. It's been pretty gloomy all day long as Tickner rolls to Carlson. Who plays out onto the offside, fielded in the covers for no run. That's the end of the 11th over. Glamorgan, 30 for 2, a lead of 69 runs in the early stages of their second innings. Well, that's the old rooster feather duster uh, business for Sam Northeast, isn't it? Record score at Lords in a triple century last week and uh, against 11 and naught this week. Them's the breaks. As uh, Thompson continues his uh, single-handed bid with the ball to uh, keep Derbyshire in this match and claim further wickets this evening and put the pressure back on Glamorgan. Thompson bowls, root leg glances and will get a couple of runs down towards the fine leg boundary. It's... Uh, Saved by an Iron Donald inside the ropes at this near end. And Root is back for two. 13 to Root. Thir 15 to Root. 32 for two. There's no way, surely, we're going to get through a, a further 20 overs this evening. As Thompson bowls and uh, it's driven gently by a Root up to mid off. And there's no run. If you're just joining us on BBC Sport Online, Derbyshire bowled out for 198, giving Glamorgan a first innings lead of 39, Madsen 63 and Lloyd 60. Four wickets for Crane, three for Harris, two Douthwaite and one to Hamza. Thompson bowls and Root stretches forward and defends back to the bowler. So we've seen... Thompson and Crane bowl virtually all the overs today from uh, that River Taff end. As Root is squared up by that one, squirting it off the outside edge down to uh, down to backward point, and uh, there is no run.
So uh, here's Thompson again jogging in over the wicket. Root works it on the leg side and calls for a quick single. And Al Hassan has to run around the bowler and would have been struggling if that one had been hit. And somehow Al Hassan got it in a right. Um, not Al Hassan, he's gone. Kieran Carlson got in a, a right tangle there as uh, he had to treat Alex Thompson as a roundabout. Yeah, that that led Root to hesitate halfway down the track as well. So, yeah, potential mishap avoided there for Glamorgan. Carlson on strike then. Thompson to bowl. Carlson sweeps. The shouts from the Derbyshire fielders, but he's found the boundary. And it's bounced away for four runs. It's gone quite a long way over the boundary. Difficult to pick up to see how long it was in the uh, the air for. Certainly started aerial as it flew past the short leg, but uh, nowhere near any fielder. And bounced over the ropes for four. Carlson has five. Glamorgan 37 for two, leading by 76. The ground staff are patrolling at the far end, or is that the coaches? I thought for a moment it was the ground staff getting ready for a, a hover cover, but it looks like the, uh, the traditional plod round the ground from uh, Glamorgan's coaches. Yeah, some with woolly hats. It's probably David Harrison. He's fond of a, a beanie. He's the right size for David Harrison. Tall figure making his way around the boundary rope. Stopping for a chat with some supporters as Tickner comes around the wicket to the left-handed route. There's an appeal for a leg before wicket, but you'd think that was a <laughs> bit high. I think it caught Root above the knee roll. Umpire didn't seem too interested in Umpire Bailey. Uh, Tickner looks absolutely disbelieving, as if that was the worst decision not given to him in his uh, in his career. It's doing quite a lot, that, yeah, was the uh, angle. Angled back around the wicket, and yeah, perhaps height was an issue as well. Tickner liked it. It was a, quite an animated appeal, arms outstretched, nothing doing. And the tall New Zealander makes his way back to the top of his mark. Where he bounces on the spot and comes bounding in, elbows pointing out. Short ball, effort ball with a grunt <laughs> as he makes his way through. And Carlson sees that whistle past his head. So, dancing in the streets of Wrexham then. Someone tell David Lloyd, yes. Mm. They're up to 82 points. The side in fourth... MK Dons, 74 points, so they can't be caught with Dons having two matches to go. And that, after a, a short ball from Tickner, sees the batters marching off. The umpire's giving them the nod, and it has got too gloomy in these uh, conditions to continue. And uh, I suspect that will be the close of play for today, with Glamorgan on 38 for two, leading by 77. With eight wickets still in hand, Carlson is five, Root is 17. Glamorgan have lost all Hassan leg before to Alex Thompson for 12. And Sam Northeast, who went in a similar fashion, first ball. The umpire's just checking the reading now as off they go. In fact, it's up on the screen as rain. Yeah, there's been a little bit of minor misty drizzle in the air, but I don't think it's... Uh, Anything hugely significant. Derbyshire seem reluctant to retreat. Clemorgan are, are off as quick as you can manage. Tickner in particular looks disappointed. He might not have uh, bowled that bouncer had he had his time again. Yeah, it, re it proved the point really, didn't it? You've got an international fast bowler fizzing them round the batsman's ears or doing his best to do so. Umpires uh, chatting to the groundsman, Robin Sexton. And Derbyshire <laughs> distinctly reluctant to get off the field. Uh, it's down as rain on the screen, but I can't see too many people taking uh, too much uh, cover. So an element of bad light. Yes, it's up on the <laughs> board now as bad light. Uh, so whatever. 
<laughs> the players are making their way off the field after what has been uh, to have a, a really good battle today. 198 all out Derbyshire. Little Morgan 38 for 2, leading by 77. So we will sit and observe and uh, wait to see if there is any chance of the the light uh, improving. But the hover cover is being brought on, so there'll be uh, some sort of delay, if any play were possible. Personally, I doubt it, and uh, hope for brighter weather tomorrow. And what's been a fascinating match with uh, both sides still very much in it. So... 38 for 2, we'll leave you on BBC Sport Online for the time being and we'll be back with further commentary if there is anything else to report.
Conditions have improved, so the umpires are just checking, and we should be underway once again very shortly. Well, we're back. The, uh, apparently the conditions have improved sufficiently for play to resume. Um, so we've lost around about 20 minutes there. Uh, as far as we're aware, we still have 19 overs and four balls remaining. That's certainly what it says on the scoreboard. It's uh, day two, Glamorgan against uh, Derbyshire at Sophia Gardens with uh, Nick Webb, Duffy Pritchard and Dave Fletcher on commentary duty. Uh, the players are somewhere out in the middle. It is still very... I don't think it's appreciably less gloomy than it was when uh, Blair Tickner sent down a bouncer and forced the players off because it was dangerous. I would be decidedly disgruntled were I Kieran Carlson. But they were quite keen to get back out. It was interesting. They were, they were out in the middle first, ahead of the, uh, ahead of the fielders. So, anyway... Here goes Tickner then to uh, finish his over, and Carlson is forward defending. The trouble is this, <laughs> fair enough. Tickner into bowl, and Carlson tries to uppercut that, a short ball outside off stump, tried to uh, guide it over the slips and made no contact. Yes, I'm not sure that's the shot. It was uh, one of those that you can leave alone, really. It was, but uh, Carlson, being a positive-minded sort of chap. I don't mind, well, from a Derbyshire perspective, I don't mind him having a go. In terms of the match where the lead is 77, it's probably a good idea. As Tickner is in to bowl to Carlson, who's defending that one to mid-off, and there is no run. There we are. David Lloyd will have been off the field long enough to be told that of course uh, he will, yes. his beloved Wrexham, and he is a long-standing fan and not a recent Hollywood convert. No, no, no absolutely. Um, Season ticket holder. Be told about their promotion. As uh, that one is another short pitch ball. That Carlson does well to get out of the way of. And Joel Tickner is pushing his luck there, having just got back on the field. It is now slightly lighter, I must admit. But Glamorgan 38 for two, leading by 77. And on a cold day, they've all gone. everyone's gone home. Yeah, they've well, all gone. There's three, two down here in front of us to the left. Two more. A little bit over there. Yes. Supporters. So not many. And I can't say I blame them. Spread few and far between. Saturday night, things to do, people to see. <laughs> there must be a discotheque somewhere. A discotheque? Good heavens. <laughs> Will you be strutting your stuff at I the discotheque? I, I would have thought so for one minute, no. Not with my flat feet. 
It's going to be Alex Thompson, of course it is, from the uh, River Taff end. He's in and bold. Not much left alone by Joe Root. It does turn, but too short. James Hiscox on Twitter says, Good job with uh, McElroy injured. We bowled them out in less than 80 overs. Morgan a bowler down. It didn't matter as it happened. Thompson bowls again. That one is turned up towards mid on, although Thompson goes across to do the fielding himself. Liam on X or Twitter says, Nice to see Dan Douthwaite bowl with control after going for mm. a few in the last couple of seasons. No, I thought he bowled really well. Root waits. Thompson is in again. And this one's given a bit of air and it's pushed out into the offside with the outside half of the bat and picked up by Dahl in the covers. A couple of slips for Root while Thompson is bowling. David Lloyd at second slip in the helmet. Wayne Madsen at first slip. And then comes Thompson again and bowls. And this one is driven out towards uh, Alej Dahl who does the fielding. As immaculately as Anish Dahl does the field. Mm. They're asking me things now that I can't possibly answer uh, back in the studio. <laughs> in comes Thompson again. Back onto the back foot goes Root and punches it out into the offside. Oh, blimey. Um, there is no run. Do you have to retreat to address radio listeners? I do, I'm afraid. That okay. You know what it's like after football. Oh, we've done the manager, so I know I know who we can go to. Yeah. Come for a chat, Dave, that for the next 20 doing minutes. Nothing. <laughs> Dave Fletcher exits again. As uh, David Pritchard is trying to rescue the mess that I've made of the online report. And Thompson continues to bowl, and Carlson down the wicket and squirts it away. Got a bat on it, late down towards backward point. They'll run through for two runs. So for a moment that he'd missed it as Madsen chased it back from slip area. Uh, Wales women's rugby, well, terrible start or terrible first half in their game against Ireland. They're 21-0 down, which is a surprise with uh, Ireland the... Uh, the whipping, whipping girls, that doesn't sound right, of uh, the Six Nations last season. Glamorgan 41 for two, as there are further consultations going on between umpire Bailey and the players. Derbyshire seem to be querying something. And it's difficult to tell what from uh, this range unless they're being told that they have to bowl spin to stay on after a bit of rapid stuff from Tickner. To bowl at the cathedral yep. That must have been the message then after uh, a couple of short pitch balls in the over from Blair Tickner that although they came back on um, it was only light enough to continue if they were to bowl spin. Seems that way. Tickner seemed to have a, a smile on his face, so he saw the funny side of it. There Did you go. manage to get a picture into the match report online? Oh, well done. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> of the advantage of a considerably more tech-savvy BBC Wales colleague this weekend. Yeah, so we'll have spin at both ends again. We saw a bit of Harry Kame in the first Glamorgan innings. Less accomplished and experienced a spinner than Alex Thompson, but a useful option for the away side nonetheless. It's a considerably more defensive field for Kame as he comes around the wicket to Root. It's a full ball to start with and Root prods it back to the bowler for no run. came once again around the wicket to the left-handed route who's forward defensively again for no run not very often Harry Kane will have bowled the 15th over of an innings I suspect no quite as he twirls the ball in his hand and comes in again and tries to drive at that but it's quite an ungainly hack in the end and the ball kind of just bobbles up no run 
tidy start for Kane so far. Pushing the ball up and bowling a full length. As Root stands and waits and plays this one on the back foot. Uh, pushes it through to point for a leisurely single to bring Kieran Carlson on strike. Yeah, Good Morgan had a, a tricky spell before they went off for, for bad light owing to that double strike from Alex Thompson. Two wickets in two balls accounting for Zainal Hassan and Sam Northeast. little consultation between uh, Lloyd and Kame who suggests one of the fielders on the offside should uh, go a little bit deeper to an odd sort of betwixt and between cover position. Yeah, short mid wicket, but also a mid wicket rather. A right -hander. As Kane comes around the wicket to Carlson, who nudges it onto the offside where the gap had just been formed by <laughs> point going back. So good manipulation of the field there by Carlson. Yes, quite an in and out field for Kane. Understandable for a part-time spinner as opposed to Thompson who they can afford to attack fully and came tries a slow Yorker which Root digs out and that ends Kame's first over comes at the cost of two runs Glamorgan a 43 for two leading by 82 runs as Glamorgan coach Grant Bradburn is uh, wandering up the stands I suspect to have a, a watch from straight in line which is uh, Something he's uh, looked want to do. He was in the practice game. He's in the press box. The wicket in line with the press box and accompanied by uh, Toby Bailey, who's a, a temporary addition to the coaching staff uh, from Cricket Scotland, the former North Ants batter keeper, who's uh, aiding with batting and fielding at the moment for Glamorgan. As uh, Delmish in no hurry, they're, they're over eight is plus one and light conditions have improved somewhat here at Sapphire Gardens. So while Wales women are struggling in the rugby, England duly dispatched Scotland by 46 points to nil earlier in in Edinburgh. As Thompson bowls, turned away by Carlson. Oh, there's chaos in the middle as uh, they're initially Root thought there was a run, Carlson didn't, and then the ball eluded Sam Connors, and Root won the argument in the end, and completed his run, and Carlson had plenty of time to, to set off rather late. Thrill of the day in rugby terms, sounds like the Champions Cup match in which Harlequins won 42-41 in Bordeaux. As uh, Root is forward, defending on the offside, and there is no run. So having suggested, dear listener, that uh, we're unlikely to get more play today, we could yet see another hour, which I think, again, will be unlikely. As Root drives into the offside, and there is no, there's a single taken. Root moves to 20, total to 45 for two. And the lead to 84. Root was out for 17 in the first innings. At Lords he made 67 and 11. As uh, Carlson faces up to a short leg and a leg slip. No conventional slip. And Carlson sweeps towards short fine leg. It was slightly in the air. And again, Connors couldn't take it cleanly, suggesting that... Uh, Maybe there's uh, a little bit of difficulty with visibility for the fielders now. And it cannoned way off Connors and they went through for a single. But uh, Carlson willing to take on the, the sweep despite having two men lurking behind him. Left-handed Root is now on strike with a leg slip and two slips. And Root drives into the offside and will take a single. He moves to 21, Glamorgan 47 for two, leading by 86. Yeah, there were a couple of moments yesterday evening of fielders not quite picking up the ball as the light diminished towards the end of the day. Talking to Mia Hamza, were you? 
who <laughs> dropped that catch. As uh, Thompson bowls, Carlson pushes forward, gets a thick edge down towards backward point. Madsen does the fielding. Batting does not look easy out there, does it? No, there was that Hamza drop, but mm. I think it was also Zainal Hassan who oh stood yes. around square leg and just put his arms up underneath. Give us a shout, which way should I run? Yeah. It's tough when you when you just can't pick it up in this kind of light. Yeah, I think uh, blaming the light would have been charitable for Hamza because that was chest height. Still could, should have taken it, shouldn't he? But yeah, didn't prove too costly. Lloyd only adding 30 or so runs to that score from that point. Harry Kane will continue from the Cathedral Road end. Joe Billy Root is on the back foot, punching onto the off drive. Here is Kane, shirt billowing in the wind, just back of a length and Root slashes that through the covers. But there's a man covering in the deep. We'll reduce that and just keep it to one run. Yeah, Joe Root might get a knock this evening as well. The Yorkshire 20 without loss in their second innings, having uh, led Gloucestershire by 63 on first. Here comes Kane around the wicket to Carlson, who plays it through to the point region for a single. Morgan nudged their score on to 49 for two. The lead is now 88. Yeah, that Yorkshire game is the only other game in Division 1 or 2 where both teams have been dismissed in their first innings other than this one in Cardiff where Kane bowls a full delivery again to Root who digs it out no run yeah this is very much the outlier in terms of uh, low scores 2-3-7 plays one nine eight here here comes Kane to Root plays another defensive stroke for no run yeah, came doing what's been asked of him so far, holding up an end, not giving much away. Here's the final ball of his second over, which is full again. Root drives this through the covers for a single. So Kane's second over ends the Morgan score, now up to 50. A very light smattering of applause from the few hardy souls who've stuck with this game in the crowd. Yeah, probably be a few people uh, just checking the score at home who are uh, surprised to see that we're back in action. I mean, uh, I was as well. But we'll be with you till the end of uh, whatever occurs. Glamorgan's lead is 89. Update for BBC Radio Wales coming fairly shortly as uh, Alex Thompson will continue. Left-handed route is on strike. Thompson bowling right arm around the wicket and uh, Root gets a single. 51 for two. Glamorgan are doing fairly well at the moment. They are 51 for two in their second innings. That's a lead of 90 over Derbyshire. This the exception to this round of games with ball dominating bat. Derbyshire were bowled out for 198 with Wayne Madsen making 63 and David Lloyd 60. Four wickets for Mason Crane, three for James Harris. In reply, Glamorgan lost Ul Hassan for 12 and Sam Northeast first ball. We're back on after bad light and we could have another 45 minutes or so of play tonight. Carlson 11, Root 24, Glamorgan 51 for two, lead by 90. Make that 51 for three as Kieran Carlson has gone a third wicket for Alex Thompson. Carlson has gone for 11 and Derbyshire back in the game. As uh, he came down the wicket there, Carlson, and difficult to tell from behind whether he was stumped or bowled. Giving him the charge. I think the ball just flicked Carlson's pad on the way through and went on to the length stump. Yeah, I think it was an inside edge at was first. It? 
Came down the pitch. It looks like there might be an inside edge onto the pad mm. and then onto the stumps. An unfortunate dismissal, but even if it hadn't hit the stumps, you'd have think it would have been a routine stumping for Brooke Guest. So Carlson looking to counter-attack at what was quite a tricky time for Glamorgan. He's come unstuck, bowled by Thompson. And that's ten wickets in the match now for Alex Thompson. What a superb display from the Derbyshire spinner. Absolutely. Uh, imagine the first time he'll have had ten in a match. Eight last year in Hove. He was uh, celebrating his entrance entry in Cricketers Who's Who. So uh, Alex Thompson, who will probably have enjoyed uh, his student years in Cardiff, is enjoying some... Uh, cricketing days in Cardiff as well and uh, 10 wickets in the bag in, in the first match of the season well that'll put him high up among uh, English spinners you would have thought 31 wickets last season but a flying start certainly to uh, this season's campaign Colin Ingram comes to the crease as Derbyshire look to make further inroads this evening and, uh, well, interesting tactics from uh, Carlson in the end. But they were the end of him. Colin Ingram, second, uh, third top scorer in the first innings with 30. And at the moment, uh, Glamorgan, well, they'd probably take a lead of 200 if you offered it to them at the moment. They lead by 90 with seven wickets in hand. And uh, I suspected that any resumption would be to Derbyshire's uh, advantage. And it looks likely to be that way as Ingram settles and is beaten by the first ball from Alex Thompson. Brooke Guest whips off the bales. Ingram pushed forward, didn't get the pitch of it. And uh, this is remarkable stuff from Thompson who's accepting the responsibility upon him as uh, Ingram plays that one off the back foot to Connors at backward point. No run. Yeah, Colin Ingram watching that first ball go past his outside edge and then looking to Billy Root for a reassurance and Root just shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> yeah, You're on good, your own, mate. Good luck, Carl. Here's Thompson then to finish this successful over and Ingram drives it into the offside. Connors makes a sliding attempt to stop the ball but it uh, rolls out towards the cover sweeper they go through for a single Ingram as off the mark Glamorgan 52 for 3 lead by 91 and you guess the the 100 lead is the next psychological uh, mark for Glamorgan as they look to build it up towards a 200 lead yes and although it never looks good when you're dismissed in, in any way but especially when you come down the track you can understand why Kieran Carson felt like he needed to put the foot on the pedal because sometimes in these situations you are better off counter-attacking because if you sit back and defend and prod to someone like Alex Thompson in this form you're as likely to get out that way so Carson's not the kind of player who wants to die wandering so he goes out with positive intentions as frustrating the dismissal as that will be for him Ingram Another player who's naturally a, an attacking player but played a very watchful, cautious innings yesterday. He faces the part-time spin of Harry Kame coming around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram who plays safely with his first shot for no run. Yeah, Ingram wouldn't want to miss out on any scoring opportunities against Kame who is uh, very much the more occasional of these two bowlers. Here he is once again around the wicket to Ingram. Again, it's a fuller ball. Seems to be Kame's stock delivery in this spell. Really digging it into the block hole, making it difficult for batters to get him away as he pulls another in the same area, which Ingram is content to block. Well, it looks likely we'll be through this match one way or the other by tomorrow and any rain on Monday might not matter. 
as Kane rolls in once more and Ingram is happy to leave this one outside the off stump. Some groans from the Derbyshire fielders. They were interested. Ingram felt nearly comfortable watching that one through as Kane comes in once more. More expansive shot from Ingram this time, driving it nicely through the covers, but it'll only be for one run as there's a covering fielder there. So Ingram moves on to two, and Glamorgan a 53 for three, a lead of 92. The other left-hander on strike now, Billy Root. And drives to more or less exactly the same spot as Ingram did the previous ball. So Root adds a single to his tally. He moves on to 25 at the end of the 19th over. Glamorgan a 54 for three, a lead of 93. So Thompson continuing to weave his spell over this game. Seven for 65 and three for 26. So 10 wickets at a personal cost of 91 runs in this game he wouldn't have been expecting that when uh, Derbyshire rocked up yesterday morning but this game has gone on a pace in terms of the fall of wickets not necessarily in terms of the scoring of runs 13 possible overs remain this evening if the uh, light doesn't dip again and Thompson with ball in hand. Opened up at the River Taff end. And has bowled non-stop there since. Into his tenth over. First ball defended by Root. To Dahl at cover. There's no run. Two slips and a leg slip. So there should be some scoring opportunities. Uh, for Billy Root. Who's on 25 not out. On the leg side. If he will play against the spin. As he... Which is that one, a hard defensive shot into the covers. It's well cut off by Dalm running round to his right. Yeah, the main thing for both these sides is that a result either way looks likely after so many draws for both these teams last year. As <coughs> knocks another one into the offside. This time it will escape Dal, and uh, it's a single out towards the sweeper on the cover boundary. 55 for three, Glamorgan. Leading by 94. As the close catchers crouch again and Ingram goes for the uh, a sweep slog there and misses. Yeah, he was through his shot by the time the ball was passing him. There's a fair degree of expansive greenery on the leg side with just the backward square leg and on the boundary and a man at mid on. As Ingram's beaten by that one, struggling at the moment early in his innings is uh, Colin Ingram, uncharacteristically really. Well, I guess those two balls kind of prove what we were saying earlier, doesn't it? That you're going to miss the ball with the ball turning like this even if you're playing defensively so maybe there's an argument for going attacking anyway as Ingram pushes forward defends ball rolls about halfway down the pitch and uh, everyone wanders round for uh, the next over from Harry came still 12 overs to come this evening if uh, if the light permits well, it looks like Sam Connors is oh. getting ready to bowl here. Clearly the umpires think the light has improved sufficiently for... Mm. Well, he's not as quick as Tickner, but are the umpires going to distinguish between one faster bowler and another? You wouldn't have thought so. I think you can bowl you you faster man or you can't. Well, are they really going to say, well, Connors isn't as quick as Tickner, so he'll be safe, but Tickner wouldn't be? Connors. <laughs> Connors might be rather miffed, as Dave points out. Well, there's just a, a hint of blue skies 
Really? The River Taff, <laughs> under the grey clouds. <laughs> yeah, that's over about Newport, though. <laughs> uh, th that wasn't even there half an hour ago, so I can only think that the umpires think that the light has improved just a smidge. Derbyshire committee meeting. Drinks are on David Lloyd, celebrating Wrexham tonight. And uh, Connors, really, who was... Uh, Underperformed a bit in the first innings, one for 51 and 15. We'll uh, try to add to Glamorgan's general weariness. This game having flowed Glamorgan's way in the afternoon session, now going back to Derbyshire or towards Derbyshire in the evening. So here comes Connors charging in around the wicket to the left handed route to defend the first ball. Connors makes his way to the top of his run-up for another quick chat with Zach Chappell and Lewis Rees. And now he begins his run-up towards Root. Ball on a length and Root defends onto the leg side. Where are we? The 21st over of the innings. So getting into the period where the Kookaburra ball... Uh, loses its initial hardness. Glamorgan did get a bit of uh, what appeared to be reverse swing late on in the Dar later on in the Derbyshire innings before bowling them out before needing to take a second new ball. Here comes Connors down the leg side as an appeal, but umpire Bailey is unmoved. Root seemed fairly unconcerned. Yes, I'm not sure if the Derbyshire appeal lasted long enough for them to have been convinced by it. The replay shows that, uh, well, the ball did appear to move a bit. Yeah, it might have brushed the, the thigh pad, perhaps. It certainly seemed to be some sort of deviation as Connors runs in once more. Full ball, which Root drives, but it's well fielded in the covers by Anaj Dahl. So four dot balls to begin with from Sam Connors, who, as you said, Nick, strayed with line and length at times in Glamorgan's first innings, was occasionally expensive, but it's been a, an accurate start from the pace bowler, who's at the top of his mark once more and now begins his run up around the wicket from the Cathedral Road end and it's a full ball which Root works down the leg side for a single. Root now on 27, Glamorgan 56 for three with one ball left in this 21st over. Things going from bad to worse for uh, Wales women rugby players. 31 nil down in Ireland, that's, uh, that's a shock. Yeah, having lost their opening two games as well. Championship to forget for them so far as Connors is in. Ingram drives on the leg side for no run, and that's the end of the over. Glamorgan 56 for three, a lead of 95 over Derbyshire. Situation elsewhere in Division 2. They're off for bad light in Bristol, where Yorkshire 30 without loss in their second innings, a lead of 93 over Gloucestershire. So that looks a reasonably significant advantage. At uh, Grace Road, Sussex are 261 for five against Leicestershire. 77 runs behind at the moment. A century for Tom Haynes there. Leicestershire are Derbyshire's next opponents. And uh, Glamorgan will be travelling to Northampton on, uh, well, to start on Friday. Northampton's rattled up 552 for six declared. Emilio Gay was eventually run out for 261 of them. Middlesex in reply. Then the runs as they were against Glamorgan, 125 for one. Middlesex. 
56 for three, Glamorgan. Thompson bowls. Root defends it past an Aaron Donald at silly point to Anuj Dahl at cover. Division one, Durham replying reasonably well to Warwickshire's 698 for three. They're 172 for three at Durham at uh, Edgbaston. Alex Lee's 93 not out. As Root is forward, defending again. Surrey taking a decent advantage over Somerset at the Oval. 354 for six. Lead of 69 already. Sibley got exactly 100. As uh, Thompson bowls, Root is forward defensively. Worcestershire struggling rather 197 for six at Trent Bridge. Still 202 runs adrift of Nottinghamshire's first innings tally. As Donald goes round to Silly Point to try and get in Billy Root's eye line. And Alex Thompson waits, trying to put further pressure on Glamorgan. Balls as Root is forward defensive, pushed it down into the grounds and he needed to do so because it was just wide of Silly Point. Close play at Chelmsford. Sentries unbeaten for uh, Ben Compton and Daniel Bell Drummond. Kent 245 for one in reply to Essex's 530 for seven. As uh, Root goes to the sweep, big appeal. Root had got a good stride in there and may well have been his outside off stump as he looked to lap it away. Yeah, Billy Root repeating the stroke just for emphasis sake. But oh, it's miles out. It's miles off. And and it, it turned the wrong way, really. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, that one wouldn't have hit sixth stump, I don't think. 56 for three as mid-off retreats uh, a few metres in case Root tries to hit over the top. But he doesn't. He chops it through the offside for a single. He will retain the strike. The light, I think, has dipped again a little bit. 57 for three. Ingram two. Root 28. The umpires are going to come together. Are they going to get the light metre out? Messrs. Bainton and Bailey... As uh, Dave Fletcher will come in to give a few thoughts anyway, alongside uh, David Pritchard. And it looks as though we're going to continue for the time being. BBC Sport, Dave Fletcher and David Pritchard. Well, a slight change again, yes. Spin back at the Cathedral Road end after one over of Sam Connors' seam bowling. Harry Kamen is off spin will be making a return so we'll have spin at both ends as Derbyshire look to make the most of what light and time there is left in this evening session not much of either really is there <laughs> no. it doesn't feel like we'll find out it is miserable though isn't it yeah, we were excited about the uh, long overdue arrival of spring yesterday, but this is a slightly more chilly. This is what it should be like. Effect. Yes. <laughs> it's an improvement on a couple of years ago when I covered a game, Glamorgan Durham, opening round, and the snow stopped play. Mm. So it's an improvement on that. Came uh -huh. is in around the wicket, and Root is defending for no run. Which ball is going to prevent? Alex Thompson for probably getting old 10. <laughs> Here comes Kane. Root drives off the back foot for a single to bring Colin Ingram on strike. Yeah, if he picks up 10 in this inning, it'll be Jim Laker territory. Yeah. That blue sky, you can still see it, can't you, over Newport? Yeah, <laughs> it's miles, <laughs> miles away. <laughs> yeah, the uh, big grey, dark grey clouds above head are rather foreboding as Kame comes around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram who drives expansively through the covers and that's a well-timed 
shot, a boundary for Ingram. Uh, first time in a while that Glamorgan have found the ropes. They're 62 for three, and that takes the lead past 100. They lead Derbyshire by 101. I thought you'd gone Dylan Thomas Light there. Grey, dark, grey, grey. And it's not quite Dylan Thomas, but... Here comes Gay. <laughs> As Ingram leaves the ball alone. Yeah, maybe my uh, literary prowess sits somewhere in between Dylan Thomas and Fifty Shades. Okay. It's quite a range. <laughs> read the match report tonight. Ingram looks to sweep game this time. Yeah, but no run. Some strained half appeals from the Derbyshire fielders. It's one of them was from uh, mid wicket. Not sure what David Lloyd was appealing for, really. Here comes Kane to Ingram. Slightly leading edge, but safe. And the ball is in the grasp of the fielder in the gully region. That's the end of the over. Morgan 62 for three, a lead of 101. I think it's getting lighter. Just an observation. I don't think it's going to get much lighter than this, though, for the remainder of the day, really, is it? Well, we've got nine overs to go. We'll do well to get to the end of nine overs between now and uh, now and then. Alex Thompson is going to continue, of course, which would be uh, it would be foolish to take him off, you would suggest. Well, 11 overs, three for 28 so far. Bold unchanged from the River Taff end. We're down to counting spectators on one hand, I think, now. As in comes Thompson and bowls to Root, who turns this one into the leg side. Donald goes around to do the fielding. Three wickets to four. Al Hassan for 12. Northeast without scoring and Carlson for 11 as Thompson is in and bowls. That one is driven but straight to and is dull by Billy Root. And again, there is no run. Yeah, time is no issue for Glamorgan here. You do wonder if they start thinking at what point does a target become competitive for Derbyshire on this pitch? A little bit far off. In comes Thompson again and bowls, gives that one a bit more a bit more air possibly and it's pushed into the offside back towards the bowler really by Billy Root. Thompson picks up, marches back to his mark. Well, Sam Connors must wonder what he's done wrong. Just get the one over. Next delivery is driven. It wasn't too far away from Benara and Donald. It goes out to Harry Kame and Billy Root picks up another single. Moves on to 30, 63 for three. Nice boost for the ego in a way for Sam Connors. Sorry, Sam, you're too quick. Yeah, well... Have a breather. You're not, you're not too quick to uh, initially force the players from the field, but you are too quick now. Blair Tickler with his hands deep in his pockets at uh, mid-off. Quietly seething that he isn't bowling at the moment. And Aaron Donald just uh, takes a step to the right at Silly Midoff. A couple of slips in there as well as Thompson comes in to bowl to Colin Ingram. He sweeps, and that'll be four. Out to the mid wicket boundary. Nice shot. Probably the best shot Ingram has played in this inning so far. He moves to 10, 67 for three. Yeah, he attempted a similar shot earlier, but with his eye not quite in, he reached for it and played and missed whereas on that occasion he got to the pitch of the ball body in the right position and uh, hit it firmly along the ground for four Thompson around the wicket to Ingram bowls and Ingram goes back into his crease and pushes this one square on the offside where Connors does the fielding it's the end of Thompson's 12th over 3 for 33 his figures in this innings, and I'm now going to attempt maths on the radio, which means 10 for 98 in the match, I think, which is uh, which is decent. Puts him very much near the top of the uh, second division averages, and it has got sufficiently light for the uh, the next 
pace up Sam Connors' back. This is almost farcical, isn't it, really? Yeah, I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me, but I couldn't pick up a discernible change in light quality. Uh, not from the previous over. But I'll bow to the uh, superior knowledge of the umpires as Connors comes around the wicket to Root, who's on the back foot and working onto the leg side to look for a second run here. And they scamper back to, indeed, make it two runs. Root moves on to 32, and Morgan's total is now 69 for three, a lead of 108. It does seem slightly absurd. David McArdle tweeted a long time ago. First time he tuned in this season and I couldn't even give him a hat trick. I did try. Here comes Connors to root again. Oh, and he's clean bowled him. Fine delivery from Connors who wheels away in celebration. And just as Billy Root was starting to look like he'd settled into his innings, Derbyshire strike again. Sam Connors has his first. Glamorgan a 69 for four, leading by 108. Both of Sam Connors' wickets have been clean bowled. One in the first innings and this one in the second. Just keep chipping away, chipping away. And they need to, they need to chip away slightly quicker at Derbyshire, but their lead is 108, as Daph said. And... Uh, so 108 for four, effectively. And Derbyshire will still think they're very much in this one. I'd be surprised if Wayne Madsen said anything to the contrary when we speak to him at the close of play after his half-century earlier today. And just looking at the replay there, it looked like Joe Root rather played around that ball. Didn't seem to move a great deal, if at all. Straight ball hit the top of middle. And Root rather played around it. So for a... Man who was on 32 and seemed pretty well set. He'll be quite disappointed to, to be dismissed in that manner. Connors went off on his uh, Imran Tahir celebration. Ended up somewhere near the point boundary. <laughs> it certainly went a long way. A night watchman? Yeah. Mason Crane. Interesting. Nice guy out there. Yes, the one of the quicks is on. You'd be all right. No, honestly, you'd be all right. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, dear, oh dear. So, yeah, we'll have a maximum of 7.4 overs between now and the close. So Mason Crane has come out to join Colin Ingram. Are we expecting a night watchman or a night hawk, as uh, England's baseballers like to call them now? Mm. I'd like to see the uh, the baseballers on this pitch. Me too. <laughs> Ball turning square and them just wielding the bat around their heads, willy nilly. Yes, I'm not a huge fan of the. Uh, of the phrase, if I'm honest, or the concept, really. I mean, it didn't really work in India, did it? Although they'll claim it as a success, I'm sure, and blame the county championship for the lack of a series win. Well, this is the kind of preparation you need. Come down to Cardiff if you want practice on turning <laughs> pitch. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Sapphire Gardens, Eden Gardens. Nice. We were oh. thinking I ne we needed a, a nickname to rival Ciderabad, but there's nothing quite like it for Cardiff yet. But you're on to something with the gardens as Connors charges in over the wicket to S Mason Crane's first delivery, which he defends solidly. Plenty of shouting going on out there. That's quite impressive. Empire Bailey has a look at the clouds above us. That's where the weather's coming from. There is blue sky up above, though. Look at that. Beautiful. That's Not certain. much, but there is some. Some brightness. Mm. Yeah, I think there are more fielders in the ground than spectators at this stage as Connors comes in. And Crane el elaborately leaves the ball outside, well outside off stump. Yes, there has to be an Indian cricket ground. I'll be racking my brains for some tenuous pun 
I've this gone, evening. I've gone straight to uh, Google. It's the future. Here comes Connors to Crane, who defends once more on the offside. I think we have our answer from these first few deliveries. It's going to be more conventional night watchman than any swashbuckling night hawk business from Mason Crane. Well, there's 28 international stadiums in India. Of course, there are. Uh, I can't see anything that would turn into a, a pond on Sapphire Gardens, which is disappointing. And of course, there are another uh, 52 that aren't used anymore, so there's a big long list. We'll get there. There's a short leg in now for... Sam Connors who runs in and bowls to Crane who gets a single into the offside this time so Mason Crane is off the mark and Glamorgan a 70 for 4 at the end of the 25th over they lead Derbyshire by 109 runs That's an inspiring list of cricket grounds Yes, 7 to go so Connors can still bowl another Three, another four for Thompson. He'll be absolutely shattered when they get back on the uh, on the bus to go north. No matter what the result of this match. Bold 26 overs in the first innings, another 12 in this. I know wickets keep you uh, wanting to bowl more, but I said earlier, this is Dabish's first game of the season, effectively, because they didn't play last week, of course. And I don't think anything quite prepares you for uh, proper competitive cricket, being out in the field for hours and hours. Yeah, it's a unique sport in that respect, cricket as well, because you ache in the strangest places, don't oh. you, after a day's play, especially if you're a bowler. Well, I do, and I'm only watching. Um, something's going on here. They want another helmet from somewhere. Harry Kane needs another helmet. Oh, it's been thrown down. It's a terrific catch by uh, Jack Morley. He's tossed the helmet to Harry Kane. For some reason, an Iron Donald had got one. Ah, so it's a relay. Now an Iron Donald has the helmet. Whose helmet is it? Lewis Reese's. He has been helmeted whilst fielding. There he is. It's gone into his hands now. And Sam Connors is uh, jogging... From where he was at backward square leg, and he's gone in to mid off, presumably where Lewis Reese was. Reese's uh, leg gully, there's a leg slip, there's a short leg, and we've got the old 7 2 field on again. Just the two men in the offside, Zach Chappell and Sam Connors, everybody else on the leg side. We saw this in the first innings. And in comes. Alex Thompson to bowl to Mason Crane, who defends the first ball rather anticlimactically. Dribbles it back down the pitch. Yeah, come on, you had the whole offside to play to there, Mason. Could have hit it anywhere. Well, from Zach Chappell, who's extra cover, there is nobody on the offside. That one is defended. Back to Thompson by Crane. No spinner wants to get out to another spinner, of course. Another completely different types of spinner. Mason Crane will have a huge part to play in the outcome of this match as Thompson bowls through and it's defended again by Crane. Donald picks up a short leg. Wayne Madsen's in at that uh, short straight mid on. And as Dahl at mid wicket. Tickner at mid on and Harry came out on the mid wicket boundary. As Thompson comes in and bowls and that Squirts off an edge down towards third man. Lloyd gives chase. They're going to come back for two. Mason Crane moves on to three. 72 for four. The lead 111. If only I was superstitious. So yeah. the, the man at... The man at... Uh, Cover has now moved to backward point, Zach Chappell. 
just to cover that entire expanse on the offside. Thompson bowls oh, and that's gone through everything. Absolutely everything. I've no idea how it hasn't bowled him. And they go through for a couple of by leg buys. So there was a, a vague appeal for leg before wicket. So it didn't quite go through everything. It's hit the leg on the way through, but my word, that kind of missed the stumps by much. Yeah, certainly straightened quite sharply, didn't it, that delivery? As you say, for a second I thought he'd been bold. I did. And then I thought there was an appeal for leg before. Thompson around the wicket, bowls to Crane, gets the uh, bat on that one. Two more to the total, 74 for four, and that's the end of the over, so we've got six to go. Ingram has ten, Crane has three, the night watchman. And Glamorgan's lead is up to 113. That's 74 for four. That's a beautiful shot of Sapphire Gardens. Those clouds look brooding. They do. On the, uh, on the stream. Let's see how many spectators you can count on there. Then I think that's. I think there's four. Possibly five. And the umpires are having a word with each other. Did Derbyshire want to uh, mix it up a bit? And uh, I think they're telling them that if you bowl Sam Connors, we're going to take you off. David Lloyd has a decision to make now. And David Lloyd's decision is... What? Well, somebody make a decision. <laughs> that would be quite nice. If anybody, I'm not bothered if it's you, David Lloyd, or not. But guests coming to join in the discussion. Lewis Reese and Wayne Madsen are there speaking to David Lloyd. Around comes guest. He's ushered away. And Harry Kane removes his sweater. So it's too dark for Connors. And Harry Kane is going to bowl. Makes you wonder what the purpose of that discussion was. It was whether, should we carry on, boys, or should we get off? I suppose. Do they? Do you think they just think that you just get through this over in order to have an, another over of Thompson? Is that the thing? Yeah, yeah. But he can still bowl three more, can't he, Alex Thompson? Six to go. So uh, Harry Kane's bowled four overs for 12, which is perfectly acceptable. He's bowled, what did I say, 48 deliveries in his career before this match. Daft dropped off next to me. You were in a daze. You were just looking, staring out into the horizon. Apologies, yeah. No. Came is in again. <laughs> Ingram tries a sweep. I don't know what came over me now. There's the. I think it was the inertia of that discussion <laughs> between the players. It was, it was, well, it was madness, contagious. Wasn't it? We know. We know what the what the question is. Yeah, in a complete daze, Came <laughs> comes around the wicket to Ingram, who. Prods defensively onto the offside for no run. I don't want to steal one of your overs. That was it. I'm thinking, should I, should I say something? I don't know. We've all been there. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Here's came once again. Again, Ingram is content to defend. He's been tidy, hasn't he, Came? He has. He's done well, yeah. He bowled a bit in the pre-season games, presumably for this actual reason, not today but just so he could hold one end up that's a good deal shorter but Ingram misses out it kept low you know, tried to chop it but missed it and uh, Brooke uh, struggled to take it as well because that did keep very low here comes Kane the final ball of his fifth over it's tossed up and Ingram drives but it's expertly fielded by an Aaron Donald Diving to his right. That ends the over. Glamorgan 74 for four. A lead of 113. Yeah, one or two games still going on. They're still playing at uh, Hampshire. Lancashire at 227 for four. The umpires are having a meeting again now. I think they're taking them off now. Yeah, there we go. I think that will definitely be it. Because we've reached, what, 26 minutes past six. I can't imagine that they're going to hang around for the five overs that we have left. I'm not sure whether we get those five overs back or not, though. Uh, there's some complicated arrangement where some overs you can have back, 
some you can't, but bad light forces them off at 74 for four. It's a lead. Hall Glamorgan of 113. Colin Ingram has 10. And uh, Mason Crane will have done his job as night watchman. He has three. The Derbyshire players are uh, sort of congratulating each other in a manner that would suggest that they're not going to come back anytime soon. Uh, as Bad Light stops play for the second time with five overs still to go. And as I say, I can't imagine. I, can you have to see, see us coming back now? Well, the grounds, the head groundsman's coming out. Considering how reluctant Derbyshire seemed to be to press ahead even with that Harry came over, you would think that both sides would be happy to call it a day there. The fact that Derbyshire's players are applauding Alex Thompson off the field, that's had a degree of finality to it, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it, really? We just wait to see if the stumps are removed from the uh, ground. I think they're going to be fairly shortly. There was a signal from the head groundsman to uh, the rest of his team, I think, to suggest that that might be it. And the umpires march off as well. Uh, feel free to hang around and continue to listen. But I can't imagine that we'll be back describing any more cricket until 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, when hopefully uh, these clouds will have passed. Yeah, stumps removed. Uh, that is the end of the day's play. It hasn't been announced by the scorer yet, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. Glamorgan, second innings, 74 for four. Ingram, 10. Crane, three. Five overs remain. We're not going to get those. And their lead is 113. This game is beautifully poised. I would urge you to join us again tomorrow morning, just before 11 o'clock. With the light having deteriorated, that is the close of play for tonight. Many thanks, everyone, for your company today. As you shortly prepare to leave Sophia Gardens, please remember to take all of your belongings with you and to make them hurry and safe departure from the stadium. A reminder play is scheduled to resume at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. We look forward to seeing you there. If you can't be with us, we hope you have a safe on your journey. Once again, Jocelyn Barney, thank you very much for your support. Good evening. Nosoi Frank.